meteorologist, sensing analyst, surveyor, town planner, and so on and so forth. This conference has been organized for the student of geography, researcher, and especially young geographer to enable them to gain fresh insight and information that would in turn help them in the being more effective in their professional practices and pursuit. Each subject for this discussion and debate in this course of the two days event was chosen, keeping in mind the interest of the youth. Through this conference, we hope to give each young mind of a platform to evaluate scope for the improvement and gain a better understanding of the subject, focus on its essential and most relevant aspect and identity and create opportunities for themselves and other in our rapidly evolving world. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am grateful to all the honorable resource persons, panelists, chairpersons, participants, and paper presenter from various parts of the country and abroad who have made it to the conference. I sincerely hope that the ensuing discussion would enlighten all of us present here on the importance of geography and its relevance in the present situation. I am confident that the fresh insight gathered from the perspective of the speakers will both enrich us intellectually and boost our professional efficiency. Again, on behalf of conference organizing committee, I welcome all our honorable guests, speaker, panelists, all the participants, president, and member of the governing body, the faculty, the non-teaching staff, and all those who have helped us in organizing today event. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all again. Yes, 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 you are audible. Yes, audible. Yes, yes, yes. Stop it. Stop it. Satro, echoing, echoing. Satro, echoing. Echoing. Ismail, Ismail, you please mute your audio. Your internet connection is very slow. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello, Shadruba, ma'am. Hmm. Uh, it is the echoing. We cannot uh, listen any word from you. Hello, uh, ma'am. Offline, how is it? So, you yeah. can start. Korin. Oh, may, may I start? Uh, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm really happy uh, to get the invitation in your webinar. And I'm grateful to the Department of Geography, Gon Abdul Ghani College. When I come to know the uh, title of the webinar, I was really overwhelmed because this is very relevant uh, in the present context. Am, am, am I audible? Am I audible? 
So I am really uh, happy uh, by taking part in this webinar, where the so many participants they have registered themselves. So, someone is talking in between. Yeah. Please mute your audio. So. Uh, I like to share my experiences. And please, some, someone is talking in between. Please uh, mute your uh, audio. Hello? Hello? Sorry, anyway. sir, sorry, sorry. Please continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, then. Uh, this is a floor where we can share our knowledges and experiences. Time, space, geography. Yeah. Then uh, now I switch over to my PPT, no? Okay. Camera top. Or camera top. Camera top. Camera top. Now, the opportunities and challenges within geography. The art system is a very dynamic process, which could be explained only through geographical approach. The art system comes up with various consequences, both on the physical and socioeconomic attributes. These all could be answered with geographical insight. Now, within this insight of geographical approach, a newer concept has come up, and that could be designated to be the answer of the trending opportunities and challenges. This is the neo deterministic approach propounded by Griffith Taylor. An American geographer, actually, he's an environmental philosopher, and in his proposition, he mentioned that the stop and go. Stop for a while, then you think what you have done, whether that is right or wrong, whether that is sustainable or not, then you proceed for your further. Someone is talking in between now that sir after audio to unmute colour or connect colour or audio connect cut to have a audio to phone a yet china. I'm a audio sona jain at the con. Participant, the request for Chapna, please unmute Korea, mute Korea. Yes, mute Korea. Jokonke presenter Kothabolch on mute Korea. When I mean Barbar mute Korchi, you unmute Korea. Unmute Korea. Participant. Yes, sir. 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 Then I come to that point, that is the Griffith Taylor. I was talking on about Griffith Taylor. He was an American geographer, and uh, he propounded the theory, that is the neo-determinism, that is the stop and go. And stop for a while, and you think whether you are right or wrong. Your advancement, whether it is in the right track, or it creates some new problems for the future generation. So this is a challenge for a geographer, and geography is the subject who can see and understand and handle these problems or the outcome of this part. Now, uh, I would like to take some examples from my experience. I like to show some slides. And there, 
where the geography lies and the role of geography or knowledge of geography, how it can be uh, controlled that part that I'm talking about. You see, uh, from the term desert, we can imagine the vast stretches of sand. But these arid parts of the earth there's a very vital role in system dynamism. But the economist, the planner, the agro-scientist uh, ignored this and started to convert these vast stretches into irrigable land. Uh, I got it from Sahara Desert. On the peripheral part of Sahara Desert, uh, we are going to start the agriculture and we converted the land from desert land to agricultural land. For that, we divert the Nile River through canals and we initiate some sprinkler irrigation and we invest huge money to provide irrigation in those lands. But being a geographer, I was not satisfied or not happy with this approach. Because the, every desert has its a great role in the total earth system dynamism. If we convert the desert into agricultural land, if we paint the yellow desert into green color, then the future will be, uh, the, in the future we will have uh, some new problems because we are uh, very much eager to change the entire environmental setup. And similarly, uh, the vast salty marshes of Ran of Kutch is a very well known of being the very vital geographical component, as well as home to a wide varieties of migratory birds and its own biotic components, mentionably the wild asses. <laughs> and you see that uh, Thousands of thousands of tourists are coming to enjoy this environment, the wide open flat land. From uh, the entire flat land is vineyard with a salt crust, and from there we are getting the natural salt. We are preparing natural salt. This is a natural endowment, and the, this salt has a very good market, potential market in the rest of the world. Uh, but in recent year, in recent year, uh, there has been an enormous encroachment of settlements within these salty muds in the name of the land reclamation. What I noticed, I was there with the team. Uh, what I noticed there, the mudsy land is reclaimed and gradually encroaching the mudsy land, and we are going to set up some rural areas. And what is the result? Not only this, the demand for electrification, the high voltage electric poles are being installed to meet the ever increasing demand. This have been done without understanding this region's dynamism, what I am talking about, the system dynamism, and ignoring the region importance. And you see that uh, this is the what am I? this is the this is the home of a huge varieties of migratory birds. Huge varieties of migratory bird. And these migratory birds generally follow a particular path during their migration. But as we set up a number of the electric pole, as a result, that those electric poles kill the hundreds of birds, those are the flamingos, the migratory birds. So my question is that the before setting up this electric high tension electric pole, we must consider the geo-environmental situation of that part by ignoring this we are killing the hundreds and thousands of migratory birds. The, it should be a new deterministic approach with which the upcoming challenges should be determined 
before taking the further steps. Next is that is Asana Kama. Oh, sorry, that is not operating. Mm. Mm. Next is that is the sinking of RLC. You see, the I visited that, visited that part uh, last year. What I noticed, the RLC with an area of 68,000 square kilometer, the sweet water sea. RLC is not the saline water sea. This is the reservoir of the sweet water. And this 68,000 square kilometer area is gradually turns into desert. In 1940s, just 60, 80 years back, uh, the, the Stalin constructed irrigation canals that begins on a large scale irrigation. And he wanted to divert the water from the Amudurya and Siddurya for the adjacent agricultural fields to produce the cotton. And as a result, the RLC is not going to get water from Amudurya, Siddurya, and the sea, the entire sea is gradually started to sinking. And the countries like the Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and other countries, and there is a great tussle between the position of that uh, RLC. And then later, uh, in the year 2014, they declared the RLC dries up and becomes now that is known as the Aralkum Desert. You see the photographs of three consecutive uh, decades. That is a uh, 2000 extreme left hand side. You see the real photo, a uh, real map of the RLC in 2000. And after 2007, the RLC is gradually sinking. And 2014, the a, a small strip of water was there. And when I went there in the year 2019, I never saw, I would not see any water strip within this RLC part. So, uh, with the people, with our ignorance, we just convert a, a sea uh, to a desert. So there is a question and there is the challenges for a geographer. And the same is true in the case of the Chath Lake, which was 23,000 square kilometer in 1960s, about 60 years back. Now only 1,400 kilometers square kilometers remaining and enter part and total Chath Lake is dried out because in the upper catchment area, we construct a number of dams uh, which restrict the water to flow into this Chath Lake. Now, this is the new deterministic approach on irrigation and channel diversion. You see, this is the Moira River in the central part. And to supply water in other parts of agricultural fields of Birbhum particularly, and we divert the water through canals. And as a result, we see at present, the lower part of that barrage, the Tilpara barrage, the lower part of Moiraki is turns into a desert, that is a strip of desert. And one of my scholars, she did her PhD on this issue, and she came to know by interacting with the farmers that the farmers are now very much interested to irrigate their agricultural fields with the help of the shallow tubel and deep tubel, they never take like to take any water from the canals because canals uh, are not getting water because the uh, water is diverting and evaporating and leaking in upper catchment area. That's why. So this is another problem that uh, we are going to uh, uh, start a program without considering the geographical components and environment of that particular area. So this is a challenge for a geographer and try to establish the knowledge of geography and the field of geography uh, in those planning process. Now, you see, the, I'd like to quote the statement of great Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. In the year 1907, he delivered in his lecture that uh, he said, the, let the river flows. Uh, don't use up all its water for your bathing, drinking, and growing your autumnal rice. That means you don't 
used up the water. Let the river flow, though it has no uh, sign great significance uh, from the point of view of the economic gain, but it has a significance in maintaining its flow. You see that uh, 2000, in the first of this century, that uh, one word is uh, getting in our one uh, getting its position in environmental studies. That is the e flow. E flow means environmental flow. Just imagine, uh, 100 years back, he was talking on this issue that the let the river flow, though it has no significance for, or getting any profit from the economic point of view but it has a great significance in maintaining its flow. That means e-flow is an environmental flow. And moreover, the Tagore was terribly against the putting up the big dams. And this, in, during that time, he wrote uh, so many articles, poems, and even one drama that is Mukta Dhara. And that was totally against the big dam. And you see that 2004, there was a world summit on against the big dam. And in that summit, we took several you know, resolutions to decommission the major dams of the earth. And fortunately, in the year uh, 2007, 2008, uh, so many uh, big dams were decommissioned. And still today, the thousands of thousands of big dams are under decommission process. Now, you see, I come to this point that is the unclose. Recently, in the search of the resources, man has a, a man has started acquiring the deep sea basins as well. In this context, there have been several geographical issues that has resulted in the formation of UNCLOS. UNCLOS means the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The countries, those who are in and around the North Sea, they notice that the North Sea is full of resources. And the countries like the United States, Canada, uh, Russia, the northern uh, countries of Europe, that is the Denmark, Norway, Sweden, all they were, they tried to grab the more resources from the North Sea. And that's why they enter into the North Sea and they started to collect the resources from the sea bottom. And the rest of the world, we noticed that. And then we, the Indian and other countries, we wrote to UNO, United Nations, they arranged a meeting in the year 1972. Later in the 1982, and uh, there is a convention initiated by UN, United Nations, uh, that is, there must be some restriction uh, for uh, taking resources from the ocean floor of the North Sea. And in that part, the UN invited the geographers and geologists because uh, we know from our knowledge, from the geographical knowledge and geological knowledge, that this North Sea is comprises or uh, characterized with the 18 plates, the continental plates, 18 plates. And out of these 18 plates, uh, eight belonging to Russia and four for Canada and Denmark, USA, Norway, Finland, uh, one plate each for each country. And according to the position, they can share the resources. And resources that is from the coast to 200 nautical miles inside the sea. And beyond that, the central part, which is uh, in this map, you can see, uh, that is for the rest of the world. Nobody can acquire any resource from that particular area. So therefore, here are the challenges of a geographer and the geography can, uh, geographers can say for this. Now come to the opportunities. Uh, keeping in mind the geographical approach, the present day challenge is very much associated with water crisis. And uh, this water crisis has become a, uh, from the injudicious utilization of the river. The, in purview of neo-deterministic approach, being a geographer, it has been an opportunity 
to find out the source point of a river and acknowledge the importance of such a dynamic system on our dear earth. And this landscape is a landscape of a Bihar village and it has no attraction for the tourist or any other point. But when you come to know that this area is a source area of a river named the Ajoy, then it gets its importance from the point of view of geography, from the point of view of uh, tourism, from the point of view of the economic upliftment and all this. So this is the point. And uh, I took some geographers and under my supervision, a group of geographers went there and we find out the spot and we install a marker stone there, and that is this is the marker stone. Uh, we installed in that village, the Salwa village, and you see that this marker stone attracts the people and uh, from in and around villages. And in that marker stone, we wrote that in recognition of man-nature attachment, this stone is placed at Salwa village as a source point or source area of river Ojak. And ultimately, uh, the people of the local areas, they used to come and see, and this turns into a tourist spot. And recently, we made a survey, and now we get information that the people from well away from uh, nearby urban centers, and even from abroad, they are coming and enjoying this point. As a source, this is the opportunities for a geographer, and this uh, marker stone is recognized by the BBC Art, and that is the uh, point because you see that I got this idea when I went there in uh, Southern Star, one village um, of uh, England. There is a source of River Thames, and there, uh, from there, I got this idea, and I started this program with my uh, colleagues and friends and students, I set up the five river, five such marker stones in five rivers of Bengal, Jharkhand or Bihar, that is Ajoy, Kunur, uh, Kopai, Kumari and Karola. And you see that uh, one statement made by a villager, it is quoted in uh, BBC Art, that is the uh, one villager told me now that you have placed this marker stone, maybe one day lots of tourists from far away places will come to my village. My children will see them, then they will be inspired to go out and see the world. You just imagine, this is a statement of a old woman of that village, of the Sarwa village. So this is the opportunity or the untouched uh, you know, areas for geography. So we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, create the new job opportunities. We can initiate or uh, find out some new tourist spots. And by this way, this is the geography. And this is my last part. That is, it would uh, like to conclude that this ever increasing demand in the modern day is resulting towards the several challenges. From the viewpoint of geography, there are several opportunities still left to reorient human demand, just like UNCLOSE. The United Nations must come to the front, forefront in making convention on the law of the demand, which could come as the UNCLOSE, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Demand. No? Uh, that means, uh, just for example, uh, if we take Bangladesh as an example, uh, we can, with the geographer or the environmental scientist, we can estimate how much water that country, that nation has uh, by analyzing its water, under, underground water, river flow, atmospheric water. So we can estimate the total uh, water available in that country. Now, if we divide the total population of that country, then we can find out the per capita, uh, you know, uh, water, one man can utilize this much of water of that country. If he wants to utilize more water, then he is crossing the limit, crossing the threshold. And that brings the new, you know, problems or hazards in the environment.
And this is only possible through inclusion of the geographical knowledge in resource orientation. The per capita natural resource, if we estimate, and then we can control the demand of the nation. And the entire lifestyle outline within and defined available natural resources. So at the last, I would like to say that it would be an appeal to the present day scientist to use such geographical approach earth system dynamics. If we understand the earth system dynamics, then we can restrict our activities, we can channelize, we can make our activities more scientific, more environmental friendly. Okay, thank you all. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Next speaker, our Professor RBC. Yes. Yes. Uh, we would now like to uh, welcome Professor RB Singh to deliver the keynote address. Dr. Singh is a professor of geography at the Delhi School of Economics. Uh, he has also served as UGC research scientist and is presently chair, Research Council of Central Food Technological Research Institute of Mysore. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Sir, please uh, uh, unmute yourself. Okay, sir. Hello. Hello. Hi, yes, sir. You audible? Sir, again unmute, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Well, thank you, Dr. Ismail, for this very important meeting you are organizing. Geography is a discipline and challenges and opportunity. And you are able to bring so many people, these people, Professor Malay Mukhopadhyay, Professor Chahid Palimiya, Professor Asis Sen, I could recognize here, Professor Ranjan Basu, Professor Din Siddiqui, Professor Ayar Siddiqui, Professor Atiku Rahman, Professor Nayak, different colleagues from the college age, and a student. First important achievement I would like to give you and we heard a very important lecture by Professor Malay Mukhopadhyay about the several type of exploration. Is it possible to share my Me yes, sir, you can share your uh, presentation. Are you able to see? Yes, Are you yes, able sir. to see? Okay. So I just 
uh, you can see my title geography igu and indian geography you know as you we heard from professor mukopadhyay about the various type of exploration discovery and he traditional several type of approaches he mentioned in this context i prefers you knowledge for sir please sir please yeah, open your ppt sir please open your ppt just click the middle ha ha sir your internet connection is very poor that's why your ppt is not sharing very well oh are you able to hear me yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so uh through the concept of a space time and space and a spacing time Now, and deterministic approach on the higher. It's an association of the two. He talked. In the title of the talk was geography as human ecology, and he mentioned about the time and space, particularly in the urban urban context. So, and centric perspective on the transformation of rural ecology. Urban landscape at a variety of levels, from local, regional to the national level. Broadly, you know, I would like to introduce that our focus includes a spatial temporal analysis of the key challenges. What key challenges? I would like to put the word global. Key challenges: food, energy, water, biodiversity, mega cities, health, development, and security. And in context, we used to bring the several type of approaches like. A space informatics or geospatial technology. We are promising prospects and making the geography more market oriented. That is very very important. Could be the ansia for India's development, and also for the uh, developing country. You know, on fourth to seventh, we are. all geographical society of india presenting their you know view organized by the geographical society and we have also international geographical union a type of umbrella organization at international level non governmental professional organization and devoted to the development of discipline of geography and generally we promote geography through initiating and coordinating research teaching in countries of the world every two years we have regional conferences and every four years we have the international conferences Actually, this we use to facilitate the participation of geographers in the global community of scientists through its formal affiliation as a member union of International Science Council. So, first important aspects I would like to highlight: the geography used to 
highlight the national challenges for the society. And in this context, first I would like to start with the few important initiatives taken at the global level. Fifteen global community sign disaster risk reduction, what it is called the Sendai framework of disaster risk reduction. On the fifth December 2015, we signed four development goals. So that is why now geography has emerged, geography as a source as a sustainability science. In December 2015, India and other countries also signed the Paris Climate Action. And for, you know, under the umbrella of IGV, we discussed and tried to interact with India. So, our Indian geographer also identified interactive areas. Like in IU, we have General Assembly, Security Committee, Commission, and Study Groups. We have 41 Commission and Study Groups and three task forces related to the different field of geography and event changing areas. Uh, opportunity engaged for geographers, Indian geographers to participate. They write to the chairman of the different commission. And they no, I do not have any or any key for that. Only who works through the national or in case of India, you know, Indian National Science Academy or member. But other anyone can join the member without any key. See the uh, member countries. What I will say in this whole IU activity, we have not much uh, uh, adequate participation from South, uh, Asian developing countries, like American developing countries. And I would a very important strategy, particularly for covering the challenges and opportunity. What it is called the IGU strategy or political strategy to participate in the coordination of research, structure of their results, and collaboration of major international documents on global and regional problems of sustainable development. So this is a very, very important challenge. Thank <laughs> you. 
इंटीग्रेशन टेक्निकल जोग्राफी इन एन इंटरनेशनल गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड द नेशनल लेवल कंट्रीब्यूट टू इट्स बेटर विजिबिलिटी फॉर डिसीजन मेकर्स एंड बिजनेस कम्युनिटी इन सोसाइटी एट लार्ज सो IGU should play a leading role in territorial and environmental research, and so the, like our Indian Geographical Society, we should promote geography in its better integrative and international media space. And geography is that. We can promote resilient science applications. How we promote, you know, capacity building, creating awareness about our different global and national changes, and in this context, the geographical education and response. I don't actual development of geography. Geography is a multidisciplinary science. We explore how we might emerge by natural processes. How the people like huge and environments. Uh, several examples you have seen, Professor Mukhopadhyay. How society, you know, themselves are influenced by the environment in which they are located. The heritage, very important concept brought before us by Richard, the aerial differences. हेलो सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर हेलो सर 
शरीर प्रॉब्लम हेलो सॉरी टू से आई थिंक ड्यू टू द नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम प्रोफेसर आरबी सिंह इज नॉट अवेलेबल सो आई रिक्वेस्ट टू नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटर और आवर स्पेशल गेस्ट डॉक्टर आशीष कुमार सेन Uh, founder of founder and head of the department of geography at the aliya university will be deliver the special uh, lecture in this session please sir warm welcome you to sir please sir ashish sir uh, good morning everybody honorable teacher in charge am i audible am i audible uh yes sir yes sir yes sir. Okay. thank you thank you uh, good morning honorable teacher in charge professor shaila limia of divan abdul gani college respected patron in chief professor molay mukhopadhyay department of geography vishwabharati shantiniketan respected keynote speaker professor rv singh of delhi school of economics distinguished delegates geographers and other interdisciplinary guests and virtual and allied sciences it's a great pleasure and opportunity for me to express my view as a special guest on this two days online conference in geography with the thrust area on the opportunities and challenges of geography as a discipline and in fact actually no word is sufficient no word is sufficient enough to acknowledge the let me share the uh, powerpoint just uh, One second. Are you able to? Hello. 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 Are you able to hear me? Uh, let, let me. Let me. Are share. you able to hear me? Hello, I can hear you. You know, uh, I was just reading about this. Uh, uh, I cannot hear. Hello. Hello. Are you able to see? Actually, I cannot share the uh, slides. That's the problem. I cannot share your slides. Oh, okay. Sir, simply open the. But you are the... able to hear? Okay. Now I can. I can. Uh, uh, I cannot share the slides. Anyway, let me. Let me try. 
Okay. But you are, are you able to hear? Yes. Okay. So, you know, uh, I would like to go to six stage and three important book I would like to refer. The of, you know, Club of Rome was a very specific idea. And they told that the, you know, population is increasing a very faster road, urbanization is increasing, technological development is taking place. And now we have the problem of survival. But it was a very overreaction. Then the second important group of people and and mankind and the turning point. It was a more optimistic idea and they mentioned that we have still and hello and so that is why geography aims to study both nature on a space, places, and region, addressing and questioning both short-term and long-term processes and a resulting pattern. So, you know, what you are getting here that Contribution of geography to knowledge is in focus on a space and environment and in principal notion for a study. That is the important notion. Since a space is a basic dimension, Hello. 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 Uh, can I uh, present now? Yeah. You are he hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So can I start now? Yes. yes. So the uh, my topic is uh, the geomorphic concepts challenges and opportunities in teaching and research. Now, this is the, uh, within a very short uh, time, uh, it is not possible for me to uh, cover all the uh, aspects. So I have been uh, concentrating on the geomorphic aspects and uh, through a long uninterrupted years of teaching for almost uh, five decades, it's actually more than 46 years, an attempt has been made by the author, by me to unfold the major challenging issues in teaching and research as encountered time to time. And the subject is so vast that I've been concentrating in the field of geomorphology. Next, we all know that geomorphology is a study of landforms and it belongs very much to the uh, branch of art science. And here I have selected some of the uh, important uh, challenges that uh, a teacher and a researcher uh, uh, may face uh, while teaching and uh, doing research in geography. One, one such challenge is that of the application of linear programming in uh, geomorphology. Now, linear programming, uh, let, let me cite a very simple example that there are, suppose there are two perennial rivers, R1 and R2, and they are connected with reservoirs X1 and X2. And while we are going to find out the, the discharges uh, during the different season, for that uh, we have selected 
three uh, distinct uh, periods um, of the year. One is the monsoon month, uh, the, the period of monsoon month. The second uh, season is that of uh, post monsoon month, and the third is the pre monsoon month. And there we find some variations. And let that be uh, correlated with the example. How can I share it? That is the problem. Just please wait. Can you can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Fine, 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 fine. And uh, now th these are the uh, uh, constraints of. Uh, the equations of the two reservoirs x1 and x2 uh, is equal to 40 cubics, x1 and 2x2 is equal to 80 cubics, 2x1 and x2 is equal to 20 cubics, and x1 and x2 are non negative constraints. Now, while considering these values, when we uh, intend to draw uh, straight lines and intend to plot it on the graphs, we find that this, this will be the result that is coming out uh, in, uh, in graphical plotting. And here we see that uh, this is the A point, B point, C point, D point. A, B, C, D is a region which can be considered as a feasible region. And within this feasible region, A, D is the line where which is considered to be the optimal line optimal solution so this is the graphical plotting uh, of uh, uh, with the help of linear programming and apart from this graphical plotting uh, we can go for uh, uh, the problem of maximization we can go for problem of minimization and we, may, uh, we can also solve the problems of optimal development uh, through the linear programming next i uh, come to the consideration of the application of Bayes theorem of geomorphology, which is uh, considered to be another challenge uh, to the geographers. And for that, I have selected a very, very simple exercise uh, that the let R1, R2, R3, and R4 are two uh, for four rivers that experience seven flood and 15 non flood. 8 flood and 23 non flood and 16 flood and 41 non flood and 5 flood and 11 non flood years. So this time the flood has occurred in this main river. Now, uh, how can we solve the problem that which river is more susceptible to flood so that we can um, uh, make some proper planning and management with respect to flood uh, control and flood management. Now, this is the value uh, which has been calculated uh, from the uh, uh, application of Bayes theorem. And here we see that R1 and R4, these are the two uh, rivers uh, which has got the uh, highest value of 0 0.27 and 0 0.27. So these two rivers should be given the first priority of planning and management, followed by R2 and R3. Now, the third trust area that uh, I'm concentrating as the geomorphological challenges is the factor analysis in geomorphology. In fact, factor analysis represents the multivariate analysis in uh, geomorphology and uh, for that uh, there are um, different uh, uh, terms and due to shortage of time it is not possible for me to cover up all this but uh, i'm showing you the variables of vulnerability of flood that is 
the variable one, let that be socioeconomic, variable two, climatic, variable three, agricultural, variable four, occupational, variable five, infrastructural, and so on. So, and these are the districts of West Bengal. So, when we are uh, plotting the um, uh, drawing the analysis of factor uh, um, or centroid method of factor analysis, the step two is the production of correlation matrix, which uh, is, uh, has been shown by this slide. Then followed by step three is that of the computation of the summation of rows or summation of columns in the form of T and then the root over T representing the uh, centroid uh, to obtain to, to find out the centroid loading. And this is the final, uh, this is the table where we find that this is the total uh, uh, summation that is uh, 10.464 and the, the root over 10, uh, root over uh, T is uh, 3.235. And on the basis of this value, uh, we can obtain, we can find out the first centroid factor. Accordingly, we can find out the second centroid factor, third centroid factor, and so on, till we get the uh, maximum uh, possible correlation up to the extent of 99.9%. Uh, uh, so this is these are the steps. Now. The next very important point is that of how we can uh, map these uh, factor analysis. Actually, you know that there are a number of softwares you know, which are already available nowadays, such as SPSS, Excel Stat, etc. But in these two uh, different softwares, we cannot make some proper uh, mapping of the um, values. And for that, for this purpose, some method of uh, standard score matrix is to be prepared, and the total uh, values of standard score matrix multiplied by the eigen vectors, eigen values will give you the will give us the values, uh, and on the basis of that, we can make some possible groupings and so on. So these these are the uh, different methods of the, the different steps of factor analysis analysis and here we come very close to the other two methods that is the principal component analysis and uh, maximum likelihood method of analysis which uh, should require proper uh, consideration uh, depending entirely on the basis of uh, nature of data. Now next trust area that uh, should be uh, highlighted is that of the emerging concepts in geomorphology. Would you also have more call? Hello. Si sir, after ki hoye gaye Asi sir. Ek tu, ek tu, baaki chilo. Kinu. Your lecture. Hello, sir. The picture is the, the, not getting the images. Ah, yeah, no, the ek, uh, uh, Should I make the comparison the, of, of uh, geographical area of with COVID 19 confirmed case of Gujarat? Are the title of the title? No, a screen. Ah, ah, so the histogram is histogram is not a title. All the participants, please uh, uh, silent your uh, microphone. Please silent your microphone. Otherwise, the uh, program huh? arises. Please, 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 please all of you silent your microphone. Who is that? Who is Can I continue or not? Yes, sir. Start. Yes, sir. Start. Yes, sir. Start. Now, re regarding the uh, communication, uh, regarding the. Let, let,
So uh, regarding the uh, co communicating geomorphology, we find that uh, the geographer, geomorphologists, geographers, they should concentrate on national education policy and where there is every opportunity to abolish. Sir, one minute, please. Sir, I, yes, sir, but I like to request all the candidates, please mute your speaker, mic. Otherwise, sir, can't tell you. Hello? I continue? Yes, sir. Okay. Anurazul Islam, sir, please mute your. So now, through this commission, several opinions and views have emerged and ultimately we shall have to link it up with our own discipline of geography. The problem is unlike subjects like economics, sociology, geology, geography is a school subject. And we must remember that, that we need not be confined to any specialized area when you are talking about geography in general. <laughs> Say, the new structure, what has been offered to the academia, that is five years in primary level, three years in high school level, then four years combining secondary and higher secondary education, and ultimately four years of undergraduate teaching and postgraduate teaching may be reduced to only one year. So the challenge to the geographers is that how we can cope with such a situation and such a given structure. And in my opinion, I have observed that national planners are more interested in structural change in our time. So when we were students in way back in the 60s of the last century, it was 11 of high secondary, and that is this first examination of school level followed by three years of honors course, followed by postgraduate course of two years. No MPhil, only PhD. And this year, again, MPhil has already been abolished or proposed to be abolished. So the question is, what would be the content in the primary level, in high school level, in secondary and higher secondary, MARS level, and then four years of undergraduate teaching and one year of postgraduate teaching. That is the most challenge to the Indian geographers. Now the question is, if we start from the very philosophy which was initiated by the legendary geographers like Professor Shottesh Chandra Chakravarti, Professor Shunil Kumar Munshi, they advocated and ultimately accepted in general by NCRT and SCERT who are concerned with educational research and planning that we must start in the primary level from known to unknown and from near to far. If we go through the old books of primary level, that was started with universe, which was a mismatch. Until and unless he start from the regional level, start from his own surroundings, it is impossible. So it would be ideal for the textbook writers and curriculum designers in the primary level to start from local to regional to national to global and then to universe. That should be the idea for developing a concept on man and nature relationship, which is the pivotal point for the geographers. In the secondary level, they should be given a concept of location on space along with regions of India. That is my opinion. Location of space and regions of India. In the next level, secondary and higher secondary, March level of four years of final education in the school, they, the students, budding students, they will offer a kind of regionalization, global impact, or uh, other global aspects from national, regional to national, to other continents. This knowledge of physical geography identifying its different disciplines. In the undergraduate level, that is a different outset. And nowadays we are also going through a very typical question 
this year the first boy in higher secondary year scored 100 marks in history and almost 100 marks in all other uh, subjects 99 was minimum marks he secured question if that much high score is given who is really good who is mediocre and who is bad that is very difficult so it becomes a problem for the college level administrators whom to are actually facing a uh, very easy task just taking all our multiple no. question answer no. time and the no, question no, no, no. is what, what is the fate of writing skill no. so no. in the preliminary no. level it can we no. can offer that it should be mcq in the next level some other analytical question for developing research aptitude and aptitude of teaching that needs to be tested we are all emphasizing on lecture delivery method. In lieu of delivery method, we can opt for learner oriented teaching, more demonstration. You deliver something, then you take feedback, and then you proceed. And only then that stop and go which was proposed originally by Professor Mola Mukhopadha, that can be actually an application we can accept. And there are four types of questions we must remember. Knowledge type, understanding type, application type, and skill development type. And in the end of the question, questions on knowledge, question on understanding, question on application, and questions on skill, all needs to be taken care of. Otherwise, they will be simply uh, uh, go by their memories and nothing they will learn ultimately. And ultimately, in the postgraduate level, there is a question that if it is four years on our course and after on our course, if they can get direct entry into PhD level after abolition of MPL course, then what would be the fate of postgraduate level? The very burning question is in the postgraduate level, we can emphasize on research methodology, we can emphasize on specialized branches of geography that may be offered on the students. Other be very difficult for the teachers to wrap up within one year postgraduate level. So these are the I think for my opinion, these are the issues which have become challenged not only to the geographer but teachers and faculty members of all disciplines starting from primary level to postgraduate level who are imparting education. Regarding research, so many theses we receive which are very descriptive in nature. The question is when economics, when sociology, when some other disciplines also in social science or in physical terms, physical sciences. In physical sciences, it is essential because geography has two dimensions. One dimension is physical geography, other is human geography. If they, the students are willing to continue physical geography in higher education, science background is essential in my opinion. They should have statistics or mathematics or, or, or say um, any bioscience, they can take combination. If they are interested in human geography, they can select additional subjects or combination as economics or sociology or like that. Otherwise, they'd be misfit in higher education. So this type of specialized knowledge of other branches that will help them to score in geography. Otherwise, they will fail to apply their knowledge in research level. But the question is, what, are, what would be the areas? How would be the approach? In my opinion, there would be a balance in quantitative approach and qualitative approach. If it is quantitative, it should be a deductive one. If it is qualitative, it should be an inductive one. 
so that is necessary and the researchers new recent generation researchers they would be interested in raising research question either you go by hypothesis formulation and testing or you raise relevant research or with little bit of description you can enter into the analytical area if you don't emphasize on analysis it would be very difficult for other disciplines to encompass geographers in their domain of interdisciplinary research so i think to become eligible to be relevant for other disciplines let us not be confined as cartographers or map makers only we should establish our discipline with problem oriented research like biodiversity conservation like climate change issues and other issues like physical hazard management social hazard management and in the times of covid the social hazard management that is very crucial i think so this type of problem oriented approach to be taken up by the geographers and so that they can interact with other disciplines otherwise we should lose our opportunity to interact with other discipline and to be relevant either as part of national planning body or to be taken seriously given by the state government for regional planning in the state level so i think the geographers the faculty members they should be proactive from now that what would be the curriculum design what would be the uh, guidelines for the textbook writers what will be the guideline for the new research level after abolition of infill totally and even after abolition of in near future if it is really happens like abolition of national okay. planning commission if ugc if ugc is abolished if eict is abolished and only single uh, apex body is formed we must have certain academic preparation to address this type of problem and i uh, 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 like economics like sociology like geology like any other uh, physical uh, branches of knowledge we should cope with this education policy and to be fit in if it comes at all because we know the babotas dotto commission ashok mitra commission they have submitted their report but nothing has been uh, no action has been taken so one is the theoretical part other is application part then how can we cope with the given situation i think these are the burning issues to the geographers in near future so i think all of you in the distinguished audience or viewers they should be proactive to take the challenge and to open vistas of opportunities for the geographers otherwise like uh, like other yesterday years we should miss us or progress and i should come to the conclusion of the issue board into a uh, bus public bus or a mini bus in 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 kolkata or any metro city the helper and conductor will ask you you please go to the rear side of the bus the question is if you always prefer the rear side who will be the front liner so we must board a bus who will move fast towards front and we must be frontliners as thinker as geographer and to be relevant to other discipline too at least to national planners and for regional planning to grab the opportunity for the geographers so that was my humble submission to this august audience thanks to all of you for listening to me or viewing to me and i of course thank the chairman professor mukhopadhyay and the organizers of course for taking taking this uh, uh, to organizing this kind of webinar which is very relevant for the and in particular and for academicians in general thank you uh, thank you professor ranjan basu for your beautiful uh, deliberation on the syllabus orientation and the duration of the ug and pg and especially the example you have put at the end 
by a uh, border of a bus as an excellent that one. And this is a very good contribution, I think, to this in panel uh, Now, you see that uh, uh, in our mind, that uh, after deliberation of five uh, uh, experts' uh, uh, lecture or deliberation, um, any queries or uh, supplementation in relation to any uh, presentation. So, I'd like to switch over to the next speaker. Uh, professor he is Professor Giyasuddin Siddiqui. Uh, he is actually from the <laughs> He will deliver his idea or his uh, uh, geography the yeah, present situation significance and relevance. Uh, and Professor Shid Gyasuddin Siddhi, uh, just my brother, brother in geography. Now, I request Sir Gyasuddin Siddhi to uh, deliver your lecture and 20 minutes allotted for you. If you get him at the end, then we go for any uh, interaction or supplementation. Okay. Yes, within Siddiqui, please. <coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, at the very outset, I must convey my gratitude to the organizer who organized this dinner and uh, it is a marvelous one in the sense of international reading. At the very beginning, I will again <coughs> address the of this webinar, Professor Mushri from Vishwabharati, uh, <coughs> Professor R. B. Singh, City. Professor Ranjan Basu, my teacher, and all the, the speakers present in this particular time at their abodes. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I will. Uh, some of <laughs> some of the outlines of geography, and it's my so some of it is my outlining. That nobody uh, will think that I am talking about the line of the geographical thought, but it's my. Uh, <coughs> Effort in bridging philosophy of geography or application of the philosophy of geography into the works of the research, which is very much needed in this time of crisis. Crisis in the sense of the climatic crisis. The water crisis and even crisis in the urbanization also, but not the least, the economic crisis now being felt by thousands and millions of the workers who have lost their jobs from different sectors which are purely related with the geographical spaces. So that's why. At at the very beginning, I will just India. share some of the slides. So sets. Is it visible to everybody? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You audible. But not, not visible. He, he wants to 
uh, show some PPT in this uh, in his lecture. Please sir, actually, please, actually, please, actually please, sir, sir, uh, 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 camera is off. Oh, then, sir, uh, please open your uh, camera, sir. Please, uh, Professor Siddiqui, please uh, open yeah. your camera. No, okay. Problem, no, Come on. Hmm. Can't Can't Must be solved. Yes. Is it now visible? Am I visible? Hello. Doctor Ismail, am I visible? No, 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 not, not yet, sir. Not yet. And now? No, no. Uh, Muhammad Ismail, you please uh, help him. So who is actually handling the technical part, please request him to assist him. Sir, you want to share PPT? Yes. Hello. I want to share the PPT. It is very important. So there is an option share content. Just click on that. On the share content, yes. Just click on that, and after that, you have an option on screen one. Screen one. Okay. Yes. And okay. there is an option in blue button share. Share. Okay. Share. Just click on that and wait for some time. Oh. Yes. Good. Sir, your internet connection is very poor. I think that's why you couldn't share your video. <clears throat> so, let us... Uh... So, <clears throat> I think I'm only at least, though, though not visible. So geography as a discipline, we can discuss it as a, it's a plane of interaction between the sciences and the society. I am talking about that the geography is, a, is like a plane which interacts between the sciences and the society. And number two is that all the geographers, each and every geographer must have some epistemology. And you think that this epistemology may differ from a geographer to geographer and from situation to situation. And the next one is that geographers use a set of methodologies. So the solution of the problems may vary along with the results of the application of the methodologies and the choice of the methodologies. With this context, geography can be told is an all-encompassing discipline that seeks an understanding of art and its human and natural complexities, not only mere where objects are, but also how they have changed and come to be. In that sense, geography is the bridge between the human and the physical sciences. So with this very much information, we must add that the scientific geography, geography has a philosophical foundation which started in the 18th centuries. With very beginning of the Immanuel, evening of the, uh, uh, I mean, Immanuel, views of the Immanuel Kant, that earth as a home of man. He viewed that earth is a home of man. So earth and man, one is physical and other is purely social or biological identity. Not only natural processes, but but the races of man as agent of change, which was also, which was also supported by the then Russian famous 
geographer M. V. Lomonov. And then we are passing to Alexander von Humboldt. I mean, he also gave some uh, ideas regarding number one, which is the held the idea of unity of human race. You just remember that this very speaking, I mean this very utterance, idea of the unity of human race, which we are seeing some or observing some of the cracks in this idea. Number two, that no race is necessarily inferior to other. So there is a belief of the great geographers that no race is necessarily inferior to the our. Mind it that von Humboldt being a German where in the next time there was a great disturbance in the name of the Nazism which was forecasted before that Nazism by Humboldt which is I think to some extent very little known to many of us, many of geographers like us that he was pro people not only a physical geographer. He was also in that sense a real biogeographer who included human being as one of the element of the nature. And the third utterance was unity of nature presumed a causal interaction of all the individual features in nature. Causal interaction, interrelations of all the individual features in nature. So these features may be biological, may be physical, may be climatological, anything but they have interrelations, causal interrelations of all these features. So nothing, no research can be launched individually with just one aspect that I am, I am busy with solving this type of problem, but you know that all the problem, all the, every problem must have some branches of the, I mean, it's called the sub problems, which are to be addressed or adjudicated rationally. And the last one which was Humboldt, uh, which stressed upon by Humboldt, the interdependence of aerial phenomena. And we are at the present time very much busy with the aerial phenomena that whenever there is amphan, when well, there is a forest fire, there is a problem in Mexico, there is deforestation in Amazon, we are thinking about these are the piecemeal and I think these are the beginning of the problems, not the solution of the problems. So that's why the interdependence of the aerial phenomena has to some extent been forgotten and we are to, I, we are to re-adjudicate all these things. Now comes in the domain of geography that is Darwinism and which is a new scientific geography. How? The idea, the idea of, I mean, evolution was the change through time. And we know that. And the famous geomorphologist, I mean, W. M. Davis was indebted to Darwin. I must say that indebted to Darwin because of the application of the biological concepts in the geological, uh, I mean, stages. So the idea of organization and ecology, it was a very new, was it was very new outlooked by Darwin that every area or space and the phenomena must have some organization and this organization is very much, very much connotes to ecology. So the sense of ecology, I mean ecology considers all the biologic, I mean the abiotic and the biotic forces, abiotic and biotic phenomena in a single frame. So this very single frame was also uttered by the older geographers in the older time and which was looked anew by, as in the term of ecology, by Charles Darwin. So that's why we should relook that the natural selection and the struggle, the two processes which was highlighted by Charles Darwin and his disciples was passed on to the geography, to geography, philosophy of geography, the natural selection is nothing but the scientific determinism because scientific determinism, the deterministic angle says that 
that nothing is automatically done and nothing and not uh, nothing could be done by force because nature has a role in the changes or the organization of any type of solution and that the struggle i mean struggle for existence was just passed on to the idea of possibilism so if you struggle you may survive if your struggle is successful so the possibilism is the way out of finding out the possible ways to survive of the human being and the solution of the problems <coughs> So now, after Charles Darwin, we 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 must be uh, concerned with. In most cases, we forget about the Vienna Circle, which was, I think, the scientific organization of the world phenomena, where both the physical sciences, social sciences, I mean, historical sciences and biological sciences. were taken together by some of the famous scientists sociologists come philosophers who molded all the sciences into a single frame which had some of the phases from 1907 to 12 1918 to 1924 please my colleagues and my friends you remember that from 1912 to 1918 it was the period of the first world war so this circle had to i can i, I think stop all their activities for this war and ultimately from 1924 to 1938 i again make you remember that 30 1939 was the beginning of the second world war so this is the mid time of the first and the second world war there was so many development of the sciences of which geography had a special domain and a very successful research out of geography and that was logical empiricism from where we came to the logical positivism and ultimately neo positivism and that is unified science but i can pause i can i will keep take you to a pause that with this development we got as a result that is austro fascism so the austro fascism from austria who broke all the all the i mean efforts of the scientific uh, uh, scientific discharges and the scientific discovery scientific formulation it was very much i mean unfortunate that this type of uh, i mean activities were followed by different followed in different parts of the world just 100 years ago which is i think being again recapitulated in different parts of the world both in the west and the east and the south that we should have to remember that this type of i mean thinking can again come can create attack in the scientific evolution and revolution of all the research workers that's why this was the disintegration of the vienna circle it was internationalized and ultimately we got moritz slick we know that he was murdered in 1938 because of that austro fascism and then otto nevath karl popper all the geographer all the i mean the last one who had many contribution to the geography and then we must not forget about the participation of the world war 2 from 1939 to 1945 you know that we the people of geography i am not i i am not talking that i am a teacher of geography i am also a student of geography but we every time forget to include in our syllabus that is decolonization it was the result of the second world war and gaining of the freedoms of different nations throughout the world particularly in africa and asia so the post colonial regional issues and demands were there which changed or the direction of the researches in geography and particularly the necessities the demands the very quick solutions by the geographers with definite issues definite demarcation of the demands that is called the who gets what and where and how 
that who gets what. I will come to just after two minutes the divisions, the construction, etc. made a new synthesis in geography, which we are now looking as it is the new geographies of the local areas, the spatial science where the space is fragmented, space is different physically, biologically, and even in the, I mean, <coughs> color of the vegetation, color of the soil, and color of the people also. So all these differences came into the formation of the dilemma, which is still now being faced by the third world, that is the third world dilemma. And with this dilemma, we had a very, very good and fruitful <coughs> research in geography and it turned over, it was the, I mean the <coughs> uh, Darwin in 1859 made a turning point in the geosciences and again in the 1960s, another turning point we faced, particularly in geography, that is critical revolution. And it is anti-positivist. That is critical. And it resulted some of the new dimensions in geography, that is humanistic geography, human ecology, welfare geography, and ultimately radical geography. And this radical geography has gave us the ideas regarding the environmental justice and social justice. Again, we can formulate that environmental justice speaks about the nature, I mean ecology, I mean the habitat of all the creatures or all the life. And social justice is another justice which is to be given, which is to be done to the people who are different uh, segmented, I mean the people living in a particular fertile area must not be equated with the demands of the people living in the marginal areas. I will come just to the two ecologies <coughs> that in the present situation, the situation must not include only the local areas. The present situation takes about the global, regional, national, local, and the effects, all the effects of, I mean, they are all gaining the effects of all the phenomena which the present situation is passing through. That is climate change, the pandemic, unemployment and loss of jobs in mass, and the ever widening gap of inequality. And ultimately, we are we are hunting some of the problems which of which the most prominent is food crisis for which the whole Africa and most of the countries of Southeast Asia, even including some parts of India is also suffering, that is food insecurity and ultimately that is food crisis. So my humble question to all my colleagues and my co-workers or the students of geography that do the planners consider environmental and social justice while working with natural capitals? These natural capitals are nothing but land, water and forests on which the life of all, life of everything, I mean, <coughs> depends, every life depends upon it. So I will give you two examples just relevant. There are so many problems and there are so many facets of discussion, but I have I have accepted only two problems of West Bengal and similar types of problems we can find throughout India also. But I will just give in the two juxtaposition of the two areas. I mean for West Bengal in the eastern, southeastern part that is lying the Sundarban area which is periodically flooded by severe cyclones and the other part that is the western part of West Bengal which is dominated by a particular group of people. I mean most of where the, domi the dominance is the scheduled tribes. I mean the indigenous tribal people who are suffering from the very advent of the present, I mean wetland agricultural civilization. 
who are suffering with the destruction of the forests, that destruction not done by them, but the sufferers of, of these people. So if there is a reforestation, for whom? Which type of forest that we are giving them? Can it result the benefit to those people? And do we have any separate plan for those particular people who are not, who do not look like us, who are not, uh, not habituated, we are the dresses like us, but they are the most oldest, most indigenous and more very simple people all over the India. But I think and you know that the very verdict which are passed by the present Supreme Court and the working is and the work is going very, very intelligently that that, that, the, that they are forests, they are land, and they are they may have been ousted to give room to the industries, to the different type of agricultural production system and in different parts of India, this process is going with the political advocacy that where will they go if they have to be ousted or evicted from their lands, where will they go? We don't know, but it is our duty. The geography, as I have told at the very outset by von Humboldt, that human race should not be deferred from different classes. And the second one, that is the southeastern part of West Bengal, I mean the ocean confronting islands of Sundarban area, there another people are living there who are also have a different identity. I mean most of them, more than 60% of the total population in those islands are the scheduled caste people. Those who have different demand, and they are the marginal people living in the marginally productive land area where productivity of land is less, where there is a regular flood, where there is deforestation also, where there is water pollution, where there is decay and decomposition and all those things. And what are the different type of, I mean, application of the philosophical views? We have so many possibilities. That is told within geography and it is clear that it has been mentioned that if it is ecology, there shall be some different type of ecosystems and ecology is made up of the mosaics of different ecosystems. So these different ecosystems and that is called the estuarine ecosystem is a very unique and different ecosystem which is very much fragile and periodically and I mean annually devastated by the devastating floods and we have seen Amphan, we have seen Ayala, what there are so many names, I, I, I think there is no need to name any more but in every time they depends upon the reliefs which will be given by both the government and the non-government organization, is it the solution? I think every ecosystem must have some uniqueness and it has own productivity, it has own energy system, it has own energy flow. If we do not extract the excess from that energy flow to the other areas and do not export the excess or the benefit to the other areas like the cities, I think they should have, they should be self-reliant self-dependence and this is the very time we have to think I mean otherwise that all these areas where, where there is unique type of I mean landform unique type of people dependent upon unique type of uh, productivity and unique type of ecosystem because they are the ecosystem people let them be there you just do not disturb them and you if you have that type of knowledge, if you have that type of voices, you can extend your knowledges. But we must believe that the knowledges which have, they have gained on their ecosystems are far better than the ecosystems. We are just reading out from the different books because they are the people who are the who are dependent and who knows better what to be done. So their geography should, geography should 
advocate the bridging the knowledge of the knowledge we are taking from the sciences and the knowledge from the indigenous people for which we are going to uh, to solve all these problems or going to formulate the plans so this is my uh, <coughs> last speaking thank you very much uh, thank you thank professor you, uh, uh, yashuddin yes, siddiqui yes, Thank you for your beautiful and sensitive and thought-provoking deliberation. And really, all we are benefited with your deliberation, and we must think of our subject, that is geography, in this way. Sir, sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Now, now, now it is okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Professor, Professor uh, Giyasuddin Siddiqui, thank you for your very good deliberation and very sensitive. Uh, your deliberation is uh, uh, give some new ways of thinking in the field of geography. Uh, thank you. you. Uh, you covered the unity of nature and as well as you covered the determinism and possibilism and how the geographies developed during the first world war and in between first world war and second world war phase and excellent that one no and particularly you have taken the two examples that is one from sundarban area and one from the western west bengal that is uh, uh, inhabited by the tribal people excellent we we must think in that way no then only we get the uh, new avenue in geography uh, we will survive in the academic world and in the practical field also okay now time is we are running a little late not that much off uh, that's why i am uh, requesting the next daily uh, speaker uh, professor uh, vasil choski and nicolet and uh, he is a is a uh, social studies lecturer sino canadian program china and he will deliver she will deliver lecture on the aspects of teaching and learning of geoeconomics in the uh, meaningful context now uh, i request professor vasilovsky uh, nikolet to deliver his lecture the 20 minutes allotted for you sir please uh, hello yeah yeah can you hear me N not yet no Madam, you please on your camera. My camera is on. Then, please help her. Those who are handling the technical part, please assist yes, her. Ma your camera is uh, working fine and your voice is... Hello. Hello. But she's not in the screen. Hello. Hello. Oh, my camera. Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. Okay, ma'am. Now it's. Is there wrong? Ha, it's okay. Ah, this sir, my camera on. Okay, off. Okay, audio on. Hello. Now it is visible. Okay. Yes, but my microphone, my microphone is not working. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay, perfect. I'll try. I'll try to share my screen so you can see it. Let me see if it will work. Share contact. Okay, I cannot share my screen. I don't know why. Ma'am, just click on share content. Yeah, I'm trying to sh to share my content. On screen. pressing screen, it says 
it says we can display your shared content. Make sure that you are allowed to share your content and try again. Okay, let's, uh, I'll not share the content. We're speaking in an interdisciplinary context. And uh, why that? Because we see that uh, nowadays, especially uh, after the First World War, after the Second World War, after the Cold War, countries are trying to find more resources and also to share their economic interests. And this created interconnections and also interconnections between different disciplines from the social studies context. We speak about geography and economics here. And those interconnections between countries and the, between different actors trying to have an important role at the global context also transformed the world creating demand for labor force and for the labor force flexibility as well. So workers therefore nowadays are migrating, are studying to adapt at this evolving system. So actually what is my paper uh, trying to do here? My paper is trying to see uh, what are the steps that a professor, a teacher, a lecturer in class will have to follow in order to teach and and have its students have its students learning in an interdisciplinary context, um, a subject like geoeconomics is a difficult subject for students. Many of them cannot, for example, be uh, familiar with this subject. Uh, so therefore, I consider very important when we teach something to teach it in a meaningful context. And I saw here we have different students with, with questions, asking questions. So, so maybe we have also today the chance to discuss with them because actually working in a collaborative context, we actually can have an exchange of ideas, a brainstorming that can change different ways of uh, of understanding our disciplines. So it's very important to learn and teach in a meaningful context. And this paper also includes an analysis of the process of this mini meaningful teaching in, in this context and the problems that, that students can, uh, can find when trying to learn interdisciplinary subjects within the social sciences. And additionally, this paper also contains several authentic activities that can be used in the process of teaching and learning of a subject of social studies. Uh, and here I speak about geoeconomics. And more broadly, uh, this paper tries to evaluate the, the needs of the students and the role of the lecturer in the process of teaching. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Perfect. Because I usually now have... you can share your content. Perfect. I'll try to do it again. No, it says make sure that you are allowed to share your content and then try again. At shared content. Okay. Is, that, is that necessary to share content? Uh, I think it's necessary for the students that are listening to us. But if you want, I just go like that. And then if they have questions, I'll maybe try to send it here on the chat. Uh, window and then they can say it. I think it's easier for students to follow when they have a PowerPoint because um, uh, like the other professor that spoke, he had a wonderful voice so we all could follow him. But sometimes some people like myself, for example, they speak too fast and sometimes, you know, uh, verban volant, how they say in Latin that uh, uh, the words are uh, flying too fast. Okay. Anyway, we go to the first part. With the, which is the learning problem that can be solved through a meaningful teaching and learning of geoeconomics. So what is actually this meaningful learning supposing to do? It's supposed to play a central role during the teaching process. Uh, I teach internationally. I am a, I'm from Romania. I teach for a Canadian school. Uh, it's a Canadian international uh, 
program in China. So my students uh, are Chinese students that are going to live abroad. And uh, so uh, they have different ages, 18, 19 years old, 17 years old. So they can be from high schools or they can be in international programs getting ready to, to study abroad. So they, they, they are studying also uh, economics as an option here. Um, so concerning teaching internationally, meaningful learning is very important when teaching different subject, big subjects, right? Because a subject like geoeconomics uh, can have some students that are not familiar with it. So what is this geoeconomics? You know, you have different different uh, definitions about it. It is not actually a discipline that is uh, uh, totally accepted as how it is presented. Uh, there are many opinions. Sometimes you'll find the title geoeconomics separated because geography and economics. Sometimes you find it together. Uh, but... Um, a general definition that was found by Soylen, he, he was a researcher, he's a researcher from Europe that studied and did his research in, uh, in China, actually, and presents geoeconomics as a discipline that is related to the study of special cultural and strategic aspects of resources with the aim of gaining sustainable competitive advantage. So here we speak about resources, from the geographic point of view. And here, if you want, you can see also the changes that are in this fight for finding resources, changes before the First World War, changes after the First World War, changes before the Second World War, after the Second World War, changes during the Cold War, changes after Cold War, changes before the crisis of 2007, 2008, the economic crisis, changes after that, changes before the pandemics, changes during pandemics, and we will see what changes are after this period of pandemics as well. So we have here studying geoeconomics for students. Uh, they first will try to see, okay, what is the difference between geography and economics here and how they are connected and what is the difference? They'll go at the difference to try to find the difference between the geoeconomics and geopolitics. And when they try to do that, they have to find the main actors interested in it. Because here, when we speak about geoeconomics, we'll see geoeconomics as a little child of, of uh, geopolitics. And actually, this is how it started, right? Uh, generally, both geoeconomics and geopolitics follow the same general goal. So both of them uh, will study the power. We speak about the power uh, that comes from different natural resources, and we speak about the general, so we speak about the management of those natural resources as well. So if we go uh, farther here, we try to identify what is actually a learning problem that the students, the learners can have when studying both a subject like this. So I identified the learning problem uh, the, which I consider a meaningful learning problem in this context related to the ability to understand the multiple dimensions of this area and its impact on both sides, on economic side and the geographic side. And here is very important uh, to find this problem, this learning problem. Why? Because when doing research, you have students that have to do their own research. Firstly, when doing research, many students uh, can find difficult to, uh, uh, to present the, uh, the main sources for their information. You will have many students running to Wikipedia or anywhere uh, online on Google, trying to find something, copy paste, and then they finish their research. Or that's not what we want for our classes. We want people to try to use their critical thinking skills. We want people to try to be independent when, when researching for something. So then we want to find out why this problem that can be related to the lack lack of information or the difficulty to find a, a relevant information can affect our students. Firstly, because learners usually will have learners usually they will know one side. They will know or economic they will know economics or they will know geography. They will not 
really specialize in both disciplines, right? So a concept like geoeconomics that combines the two disciplines uh, can have similarities and differences with geopolitics. How I said uh, previously, starting from geopolitics, geoeconomics goes with the same interest of finding about the main actors and their interest for power. But what is another aspect of this uh, discipline? I call it a discipline. Maybe you agree or disagree with me because it's always a discipline that is building itself. And I agree with that because with the changes, we see changes for all disciplines of the social studies. And social studies is uh, not a rigid area, is not an area where we put a formula and that's how it works. That formula can work nowadays, but can change after the pandemic period. So when speaking about geoeconomics and the perspective of our students, we have to teach them to actually understand the importance of this discipline that can be a discipline for the future or can transform itself as well in the future. And also to try to find the relevant information about this discipline. So the main means, 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 uh, misconception here that can be, be found when the students uh, try to learn about this discipline is that they have impression, okay, it's like, a hist like history, let's try to memorize something and then I'll know for my class, I'll pass the exams, I memorize the text and that's done. But what actually we as lecturers, we, we have to try to do, actually we have to try to help them to understand that what they are learning, it's important to be connected with their lives, with the past, with the present, and also with the future. And this can be challenging both for students and also for the, 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 the lecturer. So here I just present an idea in order to teach and learn a new subject, uh, what I see very important for both sides, it is to have that class, that lesson in uh, built in a constructive approach. And about that, one researcher who analyzed the role of constructive, of, uh, constructive approach for the improvement of skills in social studies concluded that uh, learning is building up on students prior knowledge and learning constructs meaning from experience. And this is from uh, McRae. Um, he described this process. So, for example, we have our students, they try to do research, right? We will say, okay, they have some prior knowledge about geography and economics. Okay, they have some, some, some prior knowledge about the geoeconomics. But the problem is, the problem that we have to see here is that Many students do not receive any authentic learning concerning the history or aspects of geoeconomics before learning the subject in a multidisciplinary context. So in this multidisciplinary context, they can have time to research. They have to research. They have to reflect on the main aspects that they need to learn. Uh, so, for example, I, I already... Uh, specify this, students may find concepts that relate to the geography or economic, economy, the changes after the first, second and the Cold War or the present pandemic. And then goes a uh, question, what is the solution? Okay, we speak about the learning problem, we speak about the meaningful learning context, we speak about its importance, but what is the solution that we need here? So what I actually try to identify as a solution I try to see it in a context of, of students coming from different cultures. And we had also the previous teach, uh, professor discussing about uh, a different ethnic group with their traditions, with their different uh, lifestyle. They have also different languages. They have also different food. They have also different ways to dress, right? So we have a word a world that is packed with people from different cultures. And when we speak, for example, about uh, uh, Canada, we speak uh, about a multiculturalism, a multicultural system that is actually politically promoted in the country. So it's a multicultural uh, country. So students from other cultures, they can have this problem. And in order to avoid it, 
to avoid this problem when they ha they can, for example, have a, 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 they come from a different ethnic group and, for example, they can be shy on expressing themselves. Uh, I think it's very important in order to avoid to 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 have students uh, losing face or to have students uh, not be able to ask questions. I think it's important to avoid some such circumstances when we 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 teach. And it's necessary to adjust the teaching methods to the students' needs. So how we do that, we can give them, for example, the chance to write questions that will not force them to, uh, to face the critical audience of their peers, for example, or will also allow them to have more time to reflect when they write the questions. Or also, because the technology sometimes or the time will not allow them to, 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 to ask those questions directly, writing them will give them more time to reflect. So gradually students can start asking questions and at the end of a lesson and even present different opinions in front of their peers. So we have here students asking questions, being more confident. So we build confidence for our students because it's actually, this is our role as professors, as teachers, as lecturers. We want to create people able to judge for themselves, to share their ideas, to learn from others, and also to learn how they protect their environment also, how they, they respect their countries and also different different other cultures. So, other part of this paper, if do I still have time? I will go to the second part of my paper for the uh, role yeah. of authentic activities. Okay. Uh, five, five, five to the seven minutes, no? no, no? Perfect. perfect, perfect. Okay, I'll not speak more than that. Um, so, we'll go to the second part, which is, uh, the role of the authentic activities when teaching a subject like geoeconomics, for example. And, uh, and here I'll speak about the modern technology in the process of teaching and learning, especially because we moved from face-to-face -face learning and teaching to the online learning and teaching, uh, teaching. And this presents a lot of challenges. So the authentic activities that may work in an actual teaching context that combine online and face-to-face -face teaching are related directly with this use of the modern technology. For my classes, because I told you that my, my classes are organized for students uh, that are mainly in a, in like a, in a high school uh, platform. So for my classes, I use a platform that is called Schoology. So on this Schoology platform, the students can find information before, uh, during, and after classes. Uh, also, they can upload the uh, projects, and also their parents can check their marks. And also, um, they can share, for example, questions. They can ask questions directly there as well, and I can answer directly uh, using this platform. Uh, and also, it's very, uh, very helpful because uh, uh, you can archive all the documents there. So you can have it also for the next year. So you are not going to use it in a, in a USB or uh, in another platform, there, in another um, uh, in a computer and lose it later. So it's important to, to have a platform that also archive uh, your materials. So... Regarding this process of using technology when teaching a social studies discipline, uh, some authors said, okay, this process is a little bit criticized because you need to directly interact with the learner. Uh, but there are also uh, some positive aspects about this. And here uh, in 2018, like two, two years ago, uh, Jenks presents the way that can be used to deliver a history course, for example, face-to-face -face and online. And especially online, he insists, uh, this author insists on uh, online deliver delivering of your classes by knowing how to adapt the online methods. Uh, and uh, this author says that even we, if we have for online classes, there is uh, reduced the uh, impact of the, the, the lecturer on the other side, we have the students able to be face to face with, to face to face the material to read it and get familiar directly. 
so we have also a more direct relationship with the course material that, uh, that the students can have when we teach online. Why? Because they are there uh, and they have the, the course and then uh, so they go with the organizing their time and also they, they can gain time when they have to study the material. So I went here on describing why it's important nowadays to consider the importance of teaching and learning in a meaningful interdisciplinary context. And I also um, organized this description here based on, uh, on some international research made by Repco and all in, uh, three years ago, uh, showing that in order to get ready to make a change in our society and also to be that active role player that we want our students to be in the future and ourselves as well, to transform ourselves and adjust at the needs of our societies and at the international changes. Uh, then uh, Repco et al, they uh, found out that we need to develop skills uh, in our students, um, enabling them to make connections, to solve uh, complex problems, to be future leaders, so they develop leadership skills to engage in strategic thinking. And here we speak about the connection between geoeconomics and geopolitics, the strategic thinking, to communicate effectively, practice and analytical thinking as well, and also to work in collaboration with others. It's very important also to criticize or to be criticized, but to use a constructive approach when you criticize, for example, an idea. You criticize the idea, but not the person. Because even if we know something or we don't know, we all are human beings that are trying to learn and change and challenge ourselves as well. So for my subjects, the role, the main role of the subjects I teach, and I teach social studies, I teach geoeconomics, economics, history, uh, for my subject is to give students the chance to study in a meaningful context and to discover their role in the society, to change and adapt their attitudes, to develop strong and successful beliefs, and also to uh, uh, try to use what they learned in the society. For example, after classes, many of the students, they have different clubs uh, where they, for example, can do activities to help their community to help uh, their, the community of their grandparents or also to help the old people that live close to them, to help to clean around the school, to help to clean the classroom as well. Every two weeks they learn to, to clean their classroom or uh, where they study around the building there. So they learn also to protect the environment, knowing that organizing ourselves uh, is not just to benefit ourselves, but is to benefit the society in general. And then the skills that the students can receive after successfully completing the classes uh, for my classes, I consider this very important, is that capacity to connect what they learn in class with what they know from their experience, because this is how they will remember. And then also the ability to find similarities and differences between, for example, different countries around the world and also different areas, geographic areas. And here we come back to the to, to geography and then we'll see how those relationships are shaped between the countries and we go to economic interests here. Uh, for example, what I do in my for my courses, uh, students are invited to do research, to read more materials in order to better understand and develop their critical thinking abilities and to improve their skills. Uh, related to uh, how to apply what they learn, to how to analyze an event, how to evaluate it. And very important, I also want them to use their creativity. And for example, we use a lot of, uh, of educational uh, movies uh, that they create, educational movies that they create. For example, from their history class, they created an educational movie about, about the First World War and its impact for uh, its end and impact for different countries around the world. Colonial impact and not, not just that. Uh, so 
Another aspect, and I think I still have two minutes, it is the cooperative learning that I also find it important and I include it as an instructional objective for my teaching. Uh, this cooperative learning uh, allows students to uh, have the chance to work in small groups and also uh, to uh, be more confident uh, in working with their peers and also to share ideas. You will say, oh, but sometimes in a groups, you know, one student will work more and the others, they will not. Uh, maybe, yes, but that student that will work more will learn also that the others also have their roles in the group and will learn also that is not always necessary for yourself to do all the work because you have also a team and you have, you learn to share, to oh, yeah. share also responsibilities. Uh, and then also in a group, they can go to how to find problems, how to identify problems and how to solve problems as well. And I'll conclude with that. So uh, teaching a subject uh, that may be difficult at the beginning for our students like geoeconomics or other subjects from the social studies area. Uh, we need to have students before, during and after classes uh, to be able to be ready for the classes, to have the material provided to them, to develop critical skills for thinking and rethinking what they learned about history, about geography or about economics, uh, to use arguments and debate as well, and also to use the technology. And uh, not just them, but also the, the lecturer uh, can be able to use the technology. Um, we also use other, other technological tools for our classes, for example. For our meetings, uh, we have also uh, different online platforms that we can use. We also use phones where when we have online classes, students can have groups where they can write about, the, for example, problems when they lose their internet connection. They can, they can uh, present uh, uh, this problem there on, uh, on the group. Where they or they can ask questions if they lost the connection uh, during uh, during the class if it's online classes. Um, and to generally conclude, I think it's very important when we teach a new subject and a difficult subject for us and also for our learners uh, is to teach it in a collaborative approach and also to give the learners the chance to be themselves uh, the teacher in a class. Uh, because when they present the results of their research is also very important for them to be active learners. So uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Th thank you, madam. And you see that uh, from your lecture, <clears throat> we get so many uh, lights or angles and, uh, how we handle the students in their classroom and outside the classroom. And I think uh, we have a, uh, some questions, but uh, as we have no time at present, those who want to uh, ask any questions, uh, uh, he or she can contact her on mail later on. Because in your lecture, you have uh, used so, some beautiful terminology which is very related with this that is the critical thinking and there's a learning construction from experience and you mentioned that this the face-to-face -face or online class that reduce the actual facts and actual situations excellent excellent these parts are really excellent and uh, all the time you are concerning about the geoeconomic is an interdisciplinary approach and very difficult to clubbing these uh, two subjects into one net. And there also you mentioned that the resource, is a, its definition is uh, value, its uh, importance changes. Changes during the First World War, during the Second World War. The, so it's really, really the resource definition or resource, uh, you know, uh, perception it is changing in many ways. So therefore, uh, if someone, you have the participants, you have any questions or any interaction, you can please contact her later on. And her lecture is really thought provoking and she has enlightened us 
the the way of, of what will be the right way for interacting with the students, so-called the poor students or remote part of our earth. Okay, thank you again, madam. Now I'd like to call the next speaker, uh, Professor Atikur Rahman. And he's from Jamia Milia Islamia, New Delhi. But at yet I have not get your topics. You just uh, say to the participants and then you start your deliberation. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Am I audible? Please, sir, you are audible. You start. You start. Please start. Yeah. Uh, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Sir, can you change your headphone, please, sir? Actually, is echoing. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, your mic is not. Hello? It, it sounds like surrounding. So, can you change your headphone or something? Is this better now? Yeah. It was easy. Very good afternoon to all of you. Honorable Professor R.P. Singh, Secretary General and Professor R.P. Professor Malaya Makhapadya, Chair of this session. Professor Ranjan Basu, Professor Yasuddin Siddiqui, Professor Maya and other distinguished participants. Uh, I'm very happy to be with all of you this afternoon. Uh, I'm very thankful to Dr. Andrew Smile, who is a commander of this conference, for having invited me to share some of the idea uh, in this very important platform. Uh, I must congratulate uh, Smile and Kumani uh, Islam, Arvind Secretary and commander of this conference, who has chosen very important key geography as a discipline. Opportunities and challenges. So, uh, uh, since morning, uh, I could listen to some of the lecture, very important lecture by Nicole and other uh, Professor Gazatin uh, uh, when I took out time from my uh, regular classes, which we are taking online. So, uh, let me uh, a little bit uh, move ahead uh, from theoretical and philosophical aspect to the applied aspect. Since uh, this issue is, uh, you are talking about uh, geography, opportunity is challenging. So I will be uh, some of my slides. Professor, Professor uh, Rahman, yes, I yes. am not uh, hearing properly, you know, some uh, echoing is coming. Uh, the technician, technician, those who are handling this, please help him. Sir, I will suggest please change your headphone. Uh, your headphone mic is not good, so that's why it's echoing. Okay, okay let me see. Some some howling is coming, no? Yeah, properly we can we cannot hear properly. Yes, sir. Hmm. Hello. Hello. Now, now, now it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine now. I'm sorry for the So, uh, as I was saying that, uh, let me shift uh, from the philosophical and political aspect of this uh, theme of the conference. Uh, I shared my uh, uh, lecture today uh, to address my uh, and the topic which I am going to talk about the three special technologies of the students. So let me share my you know, uh, PPT, uh, that will be good. Uh, can you see my slides, please? Sir, can you see? Yes, sir, your yeah, yeah, PPT yeah, is okay. showing. PPT is okay. Okay, fine. So uh, what I was saying that uh, uh, the uh, issue which I am going to talk about is the geographical, uh, geospatial technology in geographical studies. Uh, uh, let me uh, start with the, with the slide, which is very uh, basic and simple, stylish to uh, the office school. Uh, I'm showing you the two room uh, uh, grid of, uh, of a topo sheet. One topo sheet is at the scale of 1 like 25,000, and another is 1 like 50,000. Uh, this topo sheet is a part of uh, Delhi. So, what I'm trying to show you is that. Since my topic, what I'm talking about, geospatial technology, is geographical studies. 
So, as a student of geography, the uh, researcher, I told you to uh, have this topo sheet and we were using this topo sheet as uh, the only base map for any kind of study, be it a human or natural or any phenomena, be it a rural or an agricultural phenomena. Now, the important issue is that uh, if you want to do mapping at another scale, you do not have that base map. Uh, we have a, a, a topo sheet at a scale of one to like 2005 like and 2020. But beyond that, or in between, if you want to do any analysis, any studies, any mapping, you do not have. So, in that context, the, the, the challenges and opportunity, rather it's an opportunity, uh, which I would say that uh, it has given a new direction, uh, it's a paradigm shift in the geography of studies uh, for a student as well as for a researcher or as a teacher. So, what we see, there is a large paradigm uh, shift or large scale shift. Between the geography uh, studies uh, from the olden times, studies and later on. So when I talk about uh, geospatial technology, we all know what let me you know put it in the domain of my discussion and my talk is that uh, there are uh, four aspects of uh, geospatial technology. One is geospatial, second is remote sensing where we have the active and passive both. Within the remote sensing, we have the data the optical remote sensing, thermal remote sensing. Micro remote sensing as well as the hyper spectral remote sensing. And then the third is GPS, global information system, which we all are using in our day to day life. You know? And the fourth is GIS. So, first three is a data aggregation system, science. And the fourth is the analysis tool, where we integrate the data from the area photography, from remote sensing, and from GPS, and do the analysis and do the research tool. To find a solution of any special problem, which is common. Now, the fifth one I have highlighted is cartography. All this science is based on the sound principle of cartography. Because if you do not have cartography, there is no GIS, there is no EPS, there is no remote sensing. So, therefore, the role of geography in geospatial technology is very important in cartography. Now, if you talk about the real photography, which we started way back in the uh, 58 years, the first aerial photograph that was taken by, you know, uh, uh, using the balloon, and it was Gas Felix uh, uh, Tushan. He took this photograph, aerial photography of Paris, and then later on, people thought the scientists always look forward, and they use the pigeon and put the aerial photograph in the middle of the camera and try to get the photograph, and that one fine photograph is the post at Felix and Francisco that was taken in 1906. Now, later on, when the science developed, then people thought of the how far we keep on you know, flying the moon and uh, and then with the advent of the edit, uh, this, uh, what do you call it, cameras and uh, uh, aircraft at the right to this in So, what we did is we did a uh, uh, low altitude flying uh, these aeroplanes, and by using the aeroplanes, they fitted the camera and then. I'm not giving the science of this, but I'm trying to give you the data attention because I've showed in the topo sheet and then what other database data and what data what we are using or what we have. So I'm giving a glimpse of little bit historical account of uh, the special data. So they used to take the photograph. So I one click they moved to this was a very small part area. And by using these photographs, what we used to do is and when I started my research, we used to have this two because this one aerial photograph here, another aerial photograph, we put it with the uh, mirror stereoscope and we do the interpretation, what we used to do uh, by using the paper sheets. Now, uh, since it comes a very small area, so for that we used to have a mosaic. And when we took the aerial photograph, there was an overlap, 60% and 40%. Uh, and then we used to have an aerial mosaic like this. So to prepare our base map, uh, of a small area, we used to have several hundreds of areas of yeah, and then we used to have this area of that. You see a small, small grid. That small, small grid makes this area of that in this area. Now, uh, this was a time when the remote sensing started, say, uh, sometime in 1950s uh, and 40s and all, and before that. But it was in 1960s, somewhat around, there was a very uh, US level officer. She coined the term remote sensing. This is another uh, important uh, data acquisition tool. And uh, then uh, the development of remote sensing, when they started developing the computer sensor and space technology advancement that we had, then what we had, we had uh, developed the various sensors. So in geographical studies, uh, we used to have uh, the selection of sensor and parameter. These are the four. 
parameter on which any job is called and uh, any job can be studied and such depends on the four issue. One is the special regulation, second is the special regulation, and third is the regulation, and fourth is the regulation. I don't want to go into detail, but uh, I'll uh, show you some of the details that will uh, speak on uh, that will cover the uh, these four aspects. The special regulation is a special distance which separates from one object, object to another object. So, say for example, there is a line chart 5 which has a 30 meter division. This is 30 meter by 30 meter. Right? So, if you want to map an area of you know, larger area, then you have to have a data of line chart 5, and then I can go and spot another. The spectral division that is, uh, you see, the spectral data in which the data is in size. And then the radiometric division, where how much great data is, that is the higher the radiometric division, the values, better the data. And for the temporary resolution, you know, as I said, that this proportion which I showed you, that was surveyed, say, for example, in 1971, maybe 1960s and uh, 1980. After that, we do not have any data. So, if you want to see what all changes has taken place, what is the present situation now, we do not have any data uh, that is a proportion sheet or anything because it is very tough and very time consuming to reproduce uh, another topo sheet. And in this, in the lack of that, the even photograph, whether an in photograph or not, uh, supports very uh, nicely. As I said, the special resolution is a 10 meter resolution where we can see the finer details of an area, the same area which is map or at a size at a 30 meter resolution. This look like this, and if you go at 80 meter, it looks blurry. So that means if you want to do any studies of a smaller area, then you have to have a data of a 10 meter or even smaller. And if you want to go for regional area, then you have to have 80 meter or even more than that. Uh, I'll escape this uh, uh, quantization that is 1 bit data that is not very clear, but if you want 8 bit data, 10 bit data, or 16 bit data, then not 10 bit data. To study any aspect of human or natural phenomena, uh, this 8 bit data is better. Now, if we see the little bit history of the emerging system of India, so the very first remote sensing satellite that was launched was Master 1 and Master 2, then we have a sensor that is really called ISNET, that was launched in 1979 and 21, and then we keep going as 1A, 1B was launched in 1989, I believe, and 91. And then similarly with the development of sensor and remote sensing uh, technology, we keep going. And in 1991, we launched uh, the India launch uh, ocean satellite for ocean studies. Then we are P5, Cartoset 1, for the fiction, And keep on going. And then we have the Cartoset 1 that was launched in 2005 and Cartoset 2. Uh, which has 80 centimeter resolution uh, that was in 2007. Now, when we see some of the you know characteristics to which sensor we supply data, I need to have for a particular study in you know, coffee or after the rain. So, this is a sensor resolution, as I said, band set IRS 1A that was launched in 1998 and 1B in 1991. There are two payload that is called a sensor, this one and this two. Which has a special resolution of 72 meter, and this too has a much improved resolution that is 36 meters, just half of this. And SWAT, SWAT is the area in one passes. How much area is covered when the satellite, is, satellite passes from one port to another port? These satellites are polar orbiting satellites, we all know. I don't want to go into the aspect. So, polar orbiting satellite. In one pass, it covers 148 meter area. Uh, 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 and there are four spectral bands, which I talked about, spectral division, which starts from 0 0.45 to 0.86 micrometer. Okay. Now, if you see the, some other resource set, uh, one, six, which was a very really good uh, satellite, which has a three, you know, uh, sensor. One is called, earlier we have this one, this two, now we have the list three, which has, if you see the special resolution, it was 72 meter and 36 meter, now it has 23 meter. It has a better resolution in terms of uh, a special resolution and so is one for the kilometer. A revision that is the temporary resolution that means at, after every 24 days we have a satellite data. What we used to have after 1971 that was surveyed by India, and we do not have any data. What all has been added, what all has changed. Now, now geospatial technologies give the advantage of geophysical, geophysical research, geophysical discipline that. Every, every 24 days we have data of particular say part of the world. If I am sitting on Delhi in Jamia, I can get the data every 24 days. Then there is four data which has a very good resolution, 5.9 meters, which has half of 23 uh, kilometers. 
and then 24 days. And every data, which has a fitness indicator, that was mainly for agents, mainly for students, and which has found that was for 4,740 you know, uh, uh, kilometers. And then again, temporal release it is 24 days. Then a portion set and then a counter set and all that has a one meter emission uh, studio mode. I'll have some. Uh, I'll show you some of the you know, output what we get it from this, uh, which has a black and white. And all these are having the four lines, three lines. These are nothing to get colorful data, half color data. But there we have the data set one and two, uh, which has a uh, black and white data. We do not uh, need the uh, separability of objects. We need to have only category applications. Now, if you go to uh, go to other uh, supply data, uh, that is uh, supply data, what we are land set series data. The land set series of data, if I tell you that the application and the availability of supply data was made available with the launch of land set supply and land set uh, that was way back in 1972 by the NASA USA, which has an 18 meter resolution and three line. There are two sensors, return beam radicon and multi spectral scanner. These are the two sensors in the technical end. Then we have the Landsat 2, Landsat 3, and the series of Landsat satellites. And the most recent supply data of what we are using is the Landsat 8, which was launched in February 2013, which has a, again uh, uh, a two sensor OLI and TIRS, thermal band also, which has an 11 band and 15 meter resolution and 30 meter, 15 meter and optical and 30 meter uh, thermal. Now, uh, there are other supply data, Alconos data, which was commercial supply data, which has a better resolution, say Alconos was launched in 1999, which has a two sensor pan and multi spectral, which has a resolution of 0.6 meter, 35 resolution and 4 meter. And these are the spectral bandwidth and the revisit. See, every, every third day we are having a data. Then Quickbird that was launched in 2001, which has again two, uh, two uh, camera sensor with sense. In, in what sensor with sense? But in, uh, in Topo Sheet, we have survey and the map. So, represent is 1 to 3.6 days. Then we have a much better data, about a 3 data, which is again commercial data that was launched in 2013 by Digital Group Low Company. World View 1 data that was launched in 2000 and World View 3, which has a 0.3 meter 8 by multi spectral energy that is time domain for the category application. So, by all these uh, techniques, this petition, what I'm trying to show you, what I'm trying to tell you is that. Uh, that uh, these are the data which has made available to the Jaffe school and that has changed the course of you know Jaffe uh, uh, study and uh, the, the understanding of Jaffe uh, you know, uh, disciplines be it uh, the physical, be it uh, human, be it uh, urban, be it uh, HIV. Now let us come to the bigger aspect. We know these are very simple you know, maps that, that we produce, uh, that is the urban studies, that we take the data and we take the data and we map. This is part of one of my students. This is the one of the students who has been taken over 1997. Then we have the 2009. Then what we can see, we can see what all changes taking place. We all know that organizations are taking place. Science coverage is decreasing, but where are all is changing? What, where are all and how much? So this is this is the yellow patches that show this is the vegetation in some design. But now all yellow patches show that this is the red patches that was green. Now it has changed. So, this is the output map what we can get. Now, again, as we go back to uh, Topo Sheet, we do not have uh, any information, especially from here. But using the temporal supply data, what we can go, what uh, we can get uh, all these details. Now, if you see the land surface temperature, this is a new field which is coming on the last 20 years. What we can see the land surface temperature, where all the temperature has changed. What is it? Uh, the thermal environment of our media. This is again a part of our school. See, see this side, we have the 2001 data. We have used thermal supply data and we have tried to see the land surface temperature that has been classified into 10 classes and see the area where it has changed. This is the low temperature, surface temperature where we have a high temperature and red patches. So these are the changes what we quantify. We see. So what is the state of environment that has changed 2001 to 2005 in four years? Now you can take the 2015 data to 2019 and see at what rate how the state of environment is changing. Now, if you see this another aspect, I'm just trying to show the potentiality and the, uh, the aspect of uh, what we can do, how the course of study, the, you know, the domain of understanding and research has changed uh, uh, in the geography. Now, if you see the delta density index, what we did is we use the supply data and we tried to calculate the delta density index from 1977 to 2003, 2003 to 2014, 1977 to 2014. 
So this one is built up density A, B is the urban expansion index, this B. How the city is there, has expanded, this is the NCR, how the city is there, and then she is under urban expansion index. Sorry. Now, if you go to a micro level, what I showed you that right, if you take the data of one meter or in two meter data, what we did is we tried to understand the open spaces and publishing density. How the open spaces is decreasing and what is the role of population density. And for this, this is a north east, you uh, know, uh, district of any. You see clearly this is the vegetation playground and this is the open spaces. And this is the population. What is the population density? You see 60,000 and more than 60,000. So, literally what we can do is we can do uh, this kind of analysis and mapping by using data. And then if you see GPS, I told you GPS, I'm showing just one slide. What did show that one of my students tried to study the garbage concentration, disposal and management. These are the hot, hot spots where we have a high concentration of garbage. So, by taking GPS, we can map the coordinates and then we can plot it by using GIS and see where is the state of environment uh, pathetic or poor in terms of soil regeneration information. Now, let us talk about the water resource study. If you see the water resource study, uh, uh, the supply data what we are mapping, we can do mapping the water, agriculture, forest. We can monitor also by using temporal data to see the uh, this uh, uh, blue patches is the uh, uh, water bodies. Uh, this is the data of eight, uh, uh, the October 2011, 2012, and 2012. This is the uh, two. The water body is removed. So, what we can do is we can beautifully uh, do the mapping, monitoring, whether it's urban or, or, or water body. Now, there's another data what I showed you, the, uh, uh, I mentioned the passive remote and active remote sending. This the active remote sending data, radar data. In the, by using the radar data, you see that this is one snapshot of radar data. What do you see? These are the tributaries and distributaries of some uh, no. So, if you take the optical data, which does not give you the clear data because of the cloud flow. So, for that, if you want to understand the flood plane and flood areas, how much area is being damaged by the flood, we need to take the radar data and see that this black, beautiful uh, little courses. These are courses of the river, which are not a distributed property. So, this is what uh, the, the potentiality, and this is how the course of uh, studies has changed. Course of action has changed for the uh, graphic students. Now, if you see the architecture uh, studies, what you see, this is a part of you know, one of the small part which I put it for architecture studies. This is a part of Saudi Arabia. Now, this is a street that is called Iris Valley. This street, you see the red patches, you know, it's practically in the creation. What we have, this is the red patches that show the vegetation power. Dark patches, there is hardly any vegetation. So, what we see, the vegetation assessment, you can do it on um, small level, you can do it on regional level by using the, you know, this data. So this is how beautiful we can quantify, we can map where this agriculture system is uh, good, where the agriculture production is good, where this is not good. So this is the what we can uh, no, uh, do. Now, if you see the vegetation assessment, this is another aspect of the study by using uh, supply data, geospatial data. As I said, geospatial data is a combination of supply data, GPS, and GIS, and even image processing uh, uh, software. What we have, the NDI is a very common term to study the vegetation part. Uh, one of my students studied uh, uh, NDI in Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, and Kolkata. Now, see, this is the vegetation NDI index. Higher the value shows the higher the vegetation power. So, you can take the temporary data and you can see what changes is taking place. This is a beautiful um, you know, uh, 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 demonstration and beautiful you know, uh, application of uh, supply data. And if you take the another time data and then you can get the you can generate the uh, quantification, you can get the attribute table that will show you what all has changed, uh, what all has taken place. Now, let us see some of the example of in one three. What we did is we took the ambient uh, noise pollution. These are the eyes which have uh, for which we have data from super pollution and the world. This is part of Hyderabad. Uh, so these eyes are what is the data. What we did, we interpolated. There are various interpolation techniques. IWD, mass distance, or the moving area. What we can see that where is the ambient noise pollution? High level is low. If you see the index, 60 is low, dark noise shows a low uh, noise pollution, whereas the lighter sh uh, shade shows the higher uh, noise pollution. Now, let us come to the global level. So, it is not only the city level, state level, at the global level, what we are doing, 
people are doing their imaging supply data and they are trying to understand the pollution that is there. Say, for example, another very important pollutant is carbon monoxide. This is 2012. So, if you see the dark patch, this is a scale. Part per billion by volume, zero and three hundred. The dark patch shows a high concentration of carbon monoxide. Similarly, aerosols. This is another very important pollutant. What we have at a higher altitude, where people are using the modest data. Again, see the high concentration of aerosols. Now, land surface temperature. I showed you for the, the local level, at the city level, at the state level. Now, for the global level, what we have the land surface temperature. This is minus. 25 degrees centigrade, this is plus 25 centigrade, where we have. So, this kind of analysis and, you know, uh, at least your supply data that you can do. Now, now, if we come to the, you know, uh, the another advanced study that is 4D studies, where we are using the, you know, uh, the, not only city growth and expansion, but the city is growing uh, in vertical direction. Uh, because we do not have a space, so, for that, for the uh, satellite data is the use actually what the satellite data is used for vertical growth of cities. Now, see, this is a one time data where you can see this building of this height. Uh, if you take another data of say, five years of information, you can see this is a vertical growth. So, the initial bodies of the measures, you know, is, is, uh, among the world. This one was. Hello? Uh, yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, this one? Okay. There are some noise, so I thought there is some. So, what we have, we can uh, use this for the GIS and then can do the uh, vertical, you uh, know, growth and uh, roof and house tax uh, suspend and pension and all. Uh, this is again uh, one uh, uh, beautiful example of Mirab data that is doing the So, this kind of 4D studies we are doing. Now, but again, Mirab data is being used for you know, uh, topographic mapping for geomorphology instruments. See, beautiful trail that shows even a you know, few meters of uh, change in elevation that can be mapped. Now, this topo sheet I put it, you know, that shows what we used to do is, but earlier we used to, you know, disguise these, you know, uh, lines, these are control lines. And then we used to get the height information like this or like this. Now, we are having a satellite data, SRTM data, which gives you the beautiful DEM. This is the uh, uh, beautiful data for uh, 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 Indonesia. So, this kind of, you know, beautiful analysis and, you know, mapping, landform uh, mapping, uh, that was never ever possible. By using the, you know, uh, the data or what you used to have as a base information uh, as a global sheet. Now, for the disaster studies, you must have seen this, uh, you know, uh, this is nothing, no analysis has been done, only the snapshot of this Indonesia. Uh, this is uh, the after tsunami, this was a before tsunami, this was still, and after tsunami, what has been seen, it is all washed away. So, if you take the data, say, I can also provide our body data, this kind of analysis uh, you can do. It. So, these are the fine examples of, you know, the uh, application of these special technologies for the study, uh, which I'm showing you. Uh, very new studies, uh, that is, uh, application of satellite data is coming up uh, for urban uh, growth, uh, growth of cities, uh, whether horizontal or population, in terms of population. What we used to have, we used to buy ground census data, which is or other master plans, maps. But now what we have, uh, the uh, satellite data that is a uh, DNS satellite data, different material satellite, that is optical line is, uh, sensor, OLS sensor, which used, uh, uh, which gives you the light uh, time. So the urban offers the remote things, but they are using this uh, light uh, as a indicator of urban growth and expansion. So this is a one scene of, say, uh, America, where you see the coastal towns, the brighter portion shows the more you know, uh, urbanized area. Uh, and the smaller shows are um, uh, less organized here. So, if you see the all coastal, eastern uh, coast or western coast of America or any area, uh, any country, that gives you the better, uh, uh, better understanding and quick understanding and more better understanding of organization of any part of the world. Uh, now, this uh, another data data that uh, shows uh, that is being used by the you know, forestry people. Okay, what kind of uh, you know, trees are there? 
thank you thank you professor atikur rahman and uh, very systematically your deliberation is very systematically presented and uh, in accordance with your topics what we have uh, mentioned earlier in the first part that is a geospatial technique in geography and that is really really uh, this is a, a core part of geography and where the geographers can dominate or can 
uh, sell their knowledge to the other disciplines and for the welfare being. Thank you. Uh, we are running a little uh, uh, late. That's why I am not giving much time to for interaction and all this. If uh, any questions later on, then anybody can interact with you over uh, mail or over phone. There. Now, it's a uh, last last speaker, that is Professor D.K. Nayak, Devendra Kumar Nayak. He is from Northeastern Hill University, and he will deliver on a beautiful topics. And I think that is very sensitive in that sense. That is the geography and opportunity lost. Okay, uh, we like to hear from him. Thank you, sir. Uh, Twenty minutes. Thank you. How much you like to take? Uh, we are ready to hear. From you, thank sir. you, thank you, oh, Malera. Uh, yeah. But tell me, I, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's Clearly great audible. because Clearly the audible. Uh, okay. audibility has been rather yeah, that, poor in most problem, cases. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But let okay. me uh, let me tell you that I'm delighted to be part of this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, a new word that we are hearing these days. All the time we talk about webinar these days. Uh, due to certain developments um, of the frightful corona virus uh, but i'm missing those good old days when we could sit and talk uh, on several issues i don't want to waste much time but let me thank uh, the one abdul ghani college and uh, friends from there to have organized this and i'm grateful that i'm part of this uh, very important event and very important issue that uh, has been picked up as a topic. Normally, uh, I, whenever I get a request to speak on this, always is on COVID-19. And uh, I got so much bored that I said that if it is COVID-19, please write me off. Um, but they said, no, it's not. Then I said, OK, take me in. So uh, I was reluctant, but then I accepted. Uh, and the one which I'm going to talk today is an opportunity lost. And that can sound highly pessimistic. I'm not a pessimist, but I'm a skeptic. And a skeptic is the one who continuously interrogates, continuously asks questions about, about not uh, on the subject or discipline, but also to oneself, to myself. Uh, a, a, a pure critic is the one who, who doesn't spare the critic himself. So uh, in this context, my uh, discussion should be viewed. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a skeptic because I have too many questions uh, for which I have no answer. The answer should be lying with most of you. Uh, very, very important persons who are present here today. I don't want to take names. It will take a long time. And uh, they have spoken very well on several aspects of the discipline. And uh, one may think that, well, the opportunities are too many, but the challenges are equally great. So let me uh, share, and if, uh, th that's my tension, if it is sharing or not. Um, we go to share file, and then, um, So just click on share content and then you have the pop up. I think the that then I have to go to the uh, file, no? No, 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 sir. Uh, there is an option of screen and there is a blue button of share. Just click on uh, that. So I did. And then the share file, isn't it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the screen will be share and you can present anything. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Um, click on share content and there is a screen sure. one option. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Just one. Uh -huh. No. So is it is it visible? Yeah, yes, yes sir. visible. 
properly right yeah. okay so that the, the one part of the problem is taken care um so this is geography and opportunity lost and i have told you that this is a critique uh, of how things are unfolding in geography and uh, but why is it not moving when i click just press enter sir nothing is happening mm. Sir, you may you may you may click on your screen which you are sharing. I I did. I am clicking it uh, ferociously, but it doesn't. It doesn't move. The go doesn't go to the next slide. Should I do it again? Yes, sir. Try it again. What is this happening then? Share file. I go to the file. But no, if I it stops there, the first page. Uh, sir, and first click on share content and then choose the first screen option, not file. Share content. Ah, there is an option in your. But how do I move away from this page? But share content is fine. But where is that share content coming? It says uh, optimize for text images. Share content. I'm really lost. And this page also. Uh, how to remove it? Okay, sir. Uh, I will remove it. Pardon? It's the first page which appears. Sir, now now click on share content and click on screen one. There is an option. But, but on the share content. There's no share content. When I go to share that share file, then the content appears only, but then it goes away. No, sir. There is an option after mute and video. Start my video after that. Yes. There is an option. Yes, there share. I do. A share content. Click on that and there is an option on top uh, screen, screen one. And there is a blue button on share. No. It just says share. Then just click on that. Look, uh, no, it then it goes to desktop or uh, library computer. Hello, sir. Hello. He has been disconnected. Yeah.
Uh, Professor Naik, is it possible to uh, deliver your lecture without this uh, PPT presentation? I think you can because this may be some uh, technological hassles. Hello, sir. Now try once more. Sir, try again. Sir, we can't hear you. Is unmute, unmute the speaker. Oh, it's already unmuted. No. Professor Naik, can you hear me? Sir, so there is issue with your headphones. <laughs> Professor Naik, can you hear me? <laughs> then we can uh, uh, ship this uh, uh, deliberation after lunch because we are running uh, Half an hour late. There are other sessions after lunch. Uh, may I talk to uh, Mohammed Ismail, Dr. Ismail? Is he here? Yes, yes sir, I am here. Yeah, yeah, Mohammed Ismail, uh, you see, uh, uh, let him try. Just we can spend five minutes more. Otherwise, oh, we are running half an hour late. No, your lunch oh, okay, is sir. there, okay. and yeah. after that, other sessions. And I'm requesting Professor Naik, yeah, without uh, PPT, if he's able to deliver or interact, hmm. then we can skip this lecture for the next part, next session. If you think so, you can. Just to wait for five minutes, you can see okay. for five okay, minutes sir. more. Just to wait for five uh, minutes. Uh, after that, no? Okay, sir. Uh, okay. You know, uh, Mohammed Ismail, uh, you see that uh, I have another uh, webinar. Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. From the uh, C15. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, then I am requesting Professor Naik. Professor Naik, can you uh, hear me? Actually, talking uh, with another person. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, just, because, two uh, minutes, uh, because, just we wait yes. for two minutes. Uh, uh, just for two minutes, because we are running uh, huh. almost one hour. No, my, my next, you know, uh, webinar of this Shuri uh, uh, life. And I, I have to go there because I'm also chair there and deliver lecture from 3.30. Before that, I get into in their webinar. 
and if after that he will start then it will continue for three i think you can request him that now he can deliver the lecture after lunch uh, if you if you say if you allow me then i can request him on okay, behalf okay, of okay, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, his micro he says microphone is a uh, mute no he cannot hear anything from our part yes sir his microphone uh -huh. Is uh, Naik sir, please <laughs> unmute Professor yourself, Naik. sir. Professor Naik. You just call over phone, no? I know that your phone, his phone number is with you. And you just request him to unmute uh, his uh, speaker as well as uh, you just request you and uh, from this uh, desk I will request him uh, uh, to shift your lecture from this session to the next uh, when he will deliver just after lunch no okay sir mm -hmm. you, you just you, over phone you just call him and just intimate him yes sir that's can good. request on uh, screen. Sir, Professor Naik, maybe now. Oh, 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 over, over cell phone, you can call him. And if he'll start now, it will continue for half an hour. Then it will up to three. Sir, it is better to uh, content content here. Main lectures to be delivered. Doctor Naik. Doctor Ismail, you just call him over phone, no? Otherwise, you cannot hear anything from our part. No need PPT, only content. That's all. Uh, Dr. Ismail, Dr. Ismail, Dr. Mohammed Ismail, hello, anybody is there from the organizing committee, hello, Hello, Dr. Dr. Mohammed Ismail. Yes, Malibabu. Uh, please. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, um, Dr. Ismail. No, no, PIC. Yes, the college. Uh, there, I think uh, the problem with your headphone or mic. Uh, okay, one that's thing, why one we thing, can't hear you. Yeah, because we are running one hour late. Uh, I have another webinar with another, you know, college. So I have to. Leave Devendra, sir, can you hear me? No, sir, your PPT is presenting. Yeah, 
हेलो सर हेलो हेलो सर सर मोहम्मद इस्माइल हेलो मे आई टॉक टू मोहम्मद इस्माइल सर आई एम ऑडिबल सर नो नो मोहम्मद इस्माइल यू सी दैट सर आई रिक्वेस्ट हिम बट ही ट्राई टू अगेन एंड अगेन आई टू टाइम रिक्वेस्ट बाय फोन no no you see you see that uh, i have another no from c15 i told you earlier so i have to leave and just i'm just summing this things and i request uh, hello okay sir okay sir okay sir okay sir then you just you just communicate over phone that other okay, it is very indecent if i leave now we are completing this okay sir okay sir just conclude the session sir conclude uh professor naik uh, can you hear me no it's okay now uh, with the with the permission of the organizing committee uh, this plenary session i am going to close because we are running almost one hour late and after that we have one lunch break and after that other sessions are waiting so in this plenary session uh, my coach here is a dr ajnarul islam i am really thankful to him and the Hello. moderator this dr shatarupa uh, shinarai and dr aniruddh maitra uh, i am really uh, thankful to uh, the dewan abdul gani college and and give me a chance to be a chairman of this plenary session the plenary session which is uh, content with uh, so many reputed and uh, you know so called this uh, uh, well, well known geographers there is professor ranjan basu professor giyasuddin siddiqui professor dalish choski nicolet and professor atikur rahman and unfortunately the professor dikil naik he uh, just started his lecture but uh, due to some technical problems he could not continue his lecture so we think that uh, he will deliver after getting uh, in touch with the technology and when he will overcome the problems then he can deliver the lecture after uh, lunch so uh, this is the uh, closing part of my uh, plenary session this session so i request uh, mohammad ismail dr mohammad ismail to conclude and uh, you know that uh, request the professor dikin i and conclude this uh, plenary session i am requesting dr mohammad ismail please okay because thank you sir i am declaring you just uh, communicate this message to the professor dikin no okay, okay um, sir uh, okay sir okay sir ah he is um, in line running uh, almost one hour uh, more late uh, so if, if i have a lot full uh, yeah pro provoking lectures uh, uh this is time uh, for next session and uh, yeah. we uh, go to next session and this is uh, the end of the session uh, on yeah, uh, from the side of uh, from the side of organizing committee uh, okay uh, thank you uh, all the speaker and participant we are uh, going to uh, the next session our next uh, technical session uh, started from now this session will chair by dr ashish kumar sen and co chair person dr tapos pal and amol chakraborty and the session will be moderated by dr partho das and rimpa saha please partho carry on the session
Partho. Thank you, Ismailda, uh, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I uh, welcome all of you, all the participants uh, in this technical session one of this international uh, webinar on geography as a discipline opportunities and challenges. For this session, the chairperson is Dr. Afish Kumar Sen. Uh, we have heard him uh, before. He was a, a former head of the Department of Geography at Aliyah University and he previously part in WPES, his National Education Service. He's, a eminent scholar, he's an eminent scholar, academician, and a great teacher. I have personally, I am a student of him. I have attended his classes in Presidency College. And so I feel very much privileged to introduce him here today. Uh, as co chairpersons, we have Dr. Taposh Pal. Uh, from Raigon University and Dr. Amul Chakraborty. Uh, he is also from Raigon University. Uh, as rapporteur, we have uh, Dr. Noni Gopal Kapashiya from Malda College, Department of Geography, and Dr. Jaitul Islam. He is uh, from Department of Geography, PRMS, Mohammed Dalai, Bakura. Uh, so I hand it over to uh, Rashid Kumar Shen uh, to, for further processing. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is the. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is the first technical section. Um, and, and my co chair person uh, is Dr. Tapos Pal and Dr. Amun Sakurti. And Rapport here, Dr. Noni Gopal, Tapasya, and Dr. Jaitul Islam. And moderator, as you all know, is Dr. Pakistan and Dr. Prasad. I think everyone are uh, present. And now, uh, there are, uh, let me, let me, let me uh, ask uh, how many of the uh, speakers are present here. Dr. Kumar, uh, Kumar, Kumar Das, are you present here? Suman Kumar Das. Yes, sir. I'm present. Suman Kumar Das will will uh, present uh, the yes, paper sir. I'm present. On the uh, topic international geography significance and relevance in present scenario. So I I, I request uh, Suman Kumar Das. Uh, to make a uh, precise uh, presentation because we are running late. So please uh, keep 10 minutes time minimum. So, tomorrow. Hello. I am grateful to of of It is not audible. One Babu, you are not audible properly. the coordinator of IWC team member and the speaker. It's present scenario. Sir, your internet connection is very slow, so nobody can hear you properly.
सुमन सर हेलो Hello. Yes, sir. Now, uh, now everybody can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. So, today I am presenting a paper. The title is "Geography, Significance, and Relevance in Present Scenario." Now, what is geography? Geography. is the explanation of the interrelationship of environment people and space according to eratish geography is the description of earth surface as a home of man various philosopher like richard hudson carl ritter alexander von humboldt gradgel gives their own idea about geography very beginning of the history of geographical evolution geography divided into two parts physical geography and human geography different sub branches are comes under these two main parts like geology geomorphology climatology social geography ideas are in the time and many thoughts like determinism possibilism radicalism positivism etc because of changing nature geography became more relevant in the present objective of my discussion is to provide the concept of geography as a branch of social science explain the significance of geography exploring the relevance of geography some proposals for maintaining or increase the relevance of geography among the society now one thing is important that what is the difference between significance and relevance significance is the extent to which something matters importance whereas relevance is the property or state being relevant now i discuss some significance of geography in brief location location is the place where a particular point or object exist location is an important term in geography and is usually considered more precise than place like mathematical location like uh, lati uh, language lati latitude and longitude of a place or relative location like site and situation of settlement distribution next important significance of geography is discussion of um, man environment relationship geography explain the interrelationship between man and environment there are two major concept deterministic concept where nature is considered dominate on human activities and possibilistic concept where man is considered more active geography deals with man and environment relationship as a complex mutual interrelation in a complete system concept of space space is the boundless three dimensional extent in which objects and events occur and have relative position and direction 
स्पेस में मे बी डिफरेंट टाइप्स लाइक एब्सोल्यूट स्पेस हुई कॉन्सिस्ट ऑफ नेचुरल फिनोमेना रिलेटिव साइट और सेटलमेंट और रिलेशनल हुई रिफर्स द इंटर रिलेशन एमंग डिफरेंट फिजिकल सोशल इकोनॉमिक और कल्चरल एलिमेंट लैंडस्केप ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट इन जियोग्राफी landscape is defined as the external visible surface of the earth it may be physical or cultural famous geographer william morris davis said landscape is function of structure process and stage in perspective of land from evolution whereas cultural gives the idea of cultural landscape like settlement transport network geography also deals with this matter geography deals with important aspect like discussion of human behavior which explain cultural geography human welfare like income employment health education environmental aspect like pollution hazard etc so it is clear that significance of geography cannot explain in few words or sentences now i discuss the relevance of geography in scenario david smith in the year of 1977 explain some indicators of human welfare i agree with his view and try to explain the relevance of the geography as a branch of social science first of all i will discuss economy nearly 90% of the workers in our country are forced to engage in the unorganized sector so per capita income is low approximately one third of the total workers of the india have of india uh, have become jobless in the last 5 months due to spread of corona virus therefore economic geography can play an important role in future to creating job opportunities in various sectors of economy housing proper housing is essential uh, in respect to growing population and it is very important for every people which can be learned in detail in the study of settlement geography normal growth and development of body and mind is the key of good health during the recent pandemic situation the physical and mental health both are deteriorated anxiety frustration depression noticed a large number of people throughout the country medical geography can play an important role to mitigate in this situation during the lockdown period educational institutions have been closed although the online education system was introduced but it did not reach most of the areas in the countries due to various obstacles environmental geography social geography may play a vital role to the learners for increasing awareness of society and environment recreation also important beside basic needs of life like food clothing and shelter recreation and peace of mind or satisfaction are also necessary tourism geography such as wellness tourism adventure tourism sports tourism pilgrimage tourism etc etc may be effective after the ongoing pandemic situation to motivate people for a better means of life before i conclude i would like to highlight some proposals by which relevance of geography may sustain or increase in upcoming future increasing geographical research for human welfare quantitative techniques used in geography but should be easily explained and comprehensible to all to framework a time oriented student friendly geography syllabus for need of the society or environment application of geography in daily life must be increased like weather updates information technology based transport system etc to emphasize 
for the development of new horizon of geographical aspects like as wellness of people tribal area development promotion of tourism mitigation of social and economic disparity creation of job opportunity poverty elevation etc i would like to say that i think if we take geography not only a discipline but also essential parameters of our daily life there is no doubt that geography will be more relevant in future to all of you once again Dr. Shen, we are not hearing your sound. Dr. Shen, we are not hearing your sound, please. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you very much for presenting a very relevant paper uh, in, the, in the context of the present day situation. And you have nicely dealt with uh, all the uh, important aspects, including the types of location, the concepts, and the uh, relevance. Including the uh, I cannot invite any questions right at this moment uh, because there are other speakers. So uh, I, 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 I should request all of you to contact um, contact uh, Simon Kumar Das, the Simon Kumar Das. In future, over the mail, over the uh, contact number, uh, for for any sort of query. So thank you very much. So next speaker is Anisha Call. Anisha Call. Yes, sir. Am I audible? So, yes, I can call. Uh, please present your paper. Thank yes, you. yes, Anisha, call. you are audible. Please Thank continue you. your presentation. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. My name is Anisha Kaur. I'm a master's in English literature student from Jamia Mumbai, Islamabad, New Delhi. Um, and with the permission of respected chair, Dr. Sen, I begin my presentation. I have a presentation to share. Can I start sharing my PPT? Is my presentation visible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Please continue. Yeah. So, the topic of my presentation today is geography in and around the shadow lines. In the course of the next 10 minutes, I will be covering the following points. I will introduce the idea or the theme of shifting geography. I will elaborate on the point characters from different generations, react, and interact with the idea. I will discuss about the token that comes in, which facilitate movement, thus proposing the notion of shadowy life. I will also deliberate upon the idea of locating form. And finally, I will conclude my presentation with some comments. So, to, to, uh, to begin with, geography as a discipline has had an overwhelming scope. It extends its horizon of knowledge to numerous other branches of learning. It promotes multiplicity of thought in a collaborative fashion. 
My aim in this paper is to uphold an interdisciplinary approach to trace the geographical politics in Amitav Ghosh's seminal novel, The Shadow Lines, published in 1998. So, the novel is structured as a series of alternate narratives in geography. The shifting perspectives are supported by equally altering geographical lines. On the wings of memory, account one explores uh, various locations, namely London, Dhaka, Calcutta, and elsewhere. So, with this shifting, uh, with the shifting locations or geography, we see how different generation of characters interact with the same. Thama, Pridid, Ila, and the narrator are in a dialogue to convey their understanding of time, border, belongingness, and life. Thama, who born in Dhaka, presently lives in Calcutta. Dhaka and her home have ha apparently fallen into the void of unfamiliarity and foreignness. The narrator, her grandson, emphasizes that, I quote, her Dhaka had long since vanished into the past, unused. While Pridid, the narrator's uncle, apparently serves as a site to bridge the gap between the narrator and the world beyond. He pours magnificent accounts of his visits into the narrator's young mind, Passed on his words, the narrator presently visits faraway places and later revisits them physically only to be in awe of Pridid's geographical and spatial correctness. On the other hand, we see how Ila longs for freedom from certitude of identity. She does not share the sentiment of belongingness to a land which Thama upholds. That is a different generation altogether. She is a soul of dynamic phase. Hence, reducing her to a particular geographical location is rather challenging. The character seems to evade, if not absolutely resist, such an approach. The narrator, on the other hand, aided with Pridib's travel recollection, gradually enhances his insight, even without having been there. He explicitly argues that his uncle has provided him, I quote, worlds to travel in, unquote, and, quote, eyes to see them with, unquote. So, you see how geographical locations gradually shift and how different characters react to them. And now it is important to sh uh, show you how certain character, certain uh, metaphors of uh, are put through in the narrative, which kind of facilitate a mobility of characters. So uh, in the narrative account, it is argued, it provides various metaphors, which facilitate the mobility of characters and their thought. So this, I quote, tattered old Bethlehem's atlas, unquote, familiarizes the untraveled narrator with removed temporal and geographical spaces. And similar function does Ella's yearbooks of the school also do. They act as a register to assimilate and the vivid locations on a singular plane. This exemplifies the flux that is inherent in her character. Nibedita Bakchi highlights, I quote, the clear work as a material representation of defined intersections between time and space. With their uh, space-time coordinates, validate or invalidate Ella's narratives. So, moreover, the cherished pictures of the past events and individuals also act as a window of nostalgia a nostalgia that they always keep in their hearts. The moments which have already passed by can only be revisited through these pictures. So this is how we problematize the concept of concrete life. That is, the moment that has already passed can be revisited, rethought of. And uh, thus we come to the idea of how these lines, these concrete, so-called concrete lines are fragile. And we come to the, uh, to the theme of shadowy lines. The transference, which is not always possible, is provided to the reader through a vivid narrative technique. A. N. Cole states that, I quote, to gauge all national and commun communal demarcations are shadow lines, arbitrary and unreal divisions, which can lead to terrible consequences, unquote. Gauche implies that he lived, that the lived experiences and memories cannot be simply separated by charting or political borders. The paper also examines how the permeability of uh, otherwise rigid geographical borders can be questioned. Subsequent demarcations on familiar geographical spaces cannot be separated. We cannot separate the historical parts with parts which individuals happen to share. These uh, true remembrances, one can always bridge the gap and cross borders without hassle. Moreover, the constructions uh, are less physical and more profoundly psychological. Kama naively inquires if I quote, she could be able to see the border between India and East Pakistan, unquote. 
she is still in that psychological realm wherein she thinks that the borders are actually tangible. She seeks the tangible line, which supposedly is drawn on land, but is actually in the psyche of the native. Thus questioning the fundamental argument of borders and rendering them shadowy. Moreover, Hama crosses the border once she is able to cross the border and visit Dhaka, uh, goes home to her elderly uncle, Jeta Moshai. And uh, what we see is that she decides to go to Dhaka is rather a problematic argument. The fact is that she does not return home to live with her uncle in the house of her childhood, but she decides to go back to retrieve and reclaim him from the clutches of a foreign land. So Dhaka, which was earlier home, is now foreign. She resorts to rescue, I quote, her uncle from the enemies and bringing him back where he belonged to, re to, the, to her reinvented country, unquote. What Thama fails to understand in her sentiments is that her uncle is actually at home. Dhaka has been and will remain his home and soul. He is unwilling to part with it and removing him from that geographical location Dhaka can be reconsidered as a as an act of uplifting him in his habitat. He is unable to complete that transition in the borders and unfortunately dies as a victim of street violence as, as a mobile as a mob violence. So uh, I in this uh, presentation I would like to point out that though all the characters have boarded on a journey, I submitted my paper that for some it is tangibly materialized, while for others like Pila, belong to the transition. With the borders turning permeable, questions of going and coming are faced by all. To fixate a direction where home lies is thus difficult. The, the want conclusively is to belong somewhere and even and somehow, even if that means to continue the journey perpetually. So that with that, I conclude my presentation. And uh, this brings us to the references which I have used in this presentation and the original research paper. You may have a look at them. So, thank you. I hope I have not exceeded my time. Thank you very much for presenting a very interesting, very interesting. Thank you, sir. Uh, I can't imagine that uh, we, the geographers, are thinking in terms of these uh, different aspects. And it's really um, the geography in and around the shadow line that is the right title of this paper. And uh, in, 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 uh, at depth, you have highlighted also the, the, the paradigm shift in geography, particularly when a person moves from one place to another uh, with uh, psychological uh, reaction and so on. So I request Dr. Tapos uh, Pal and Dr. Amol Chakraborty to uh, give their uh, views about this paper. Uh, very Dr. Tapos Pal, are you present here? Tapos Paul and Dr. Amol Chakraborty, they are my, uh, they are the co persons of this uh, session. Hello. Dr. Tapos Paul, can you make any comment? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shen. Thank you, Dr. Shen. Okay. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, okay. The, the, the paper presenter uh, who has given uh, his own view about the about the shallow line and related with geography. In this connection, I would like to share my own view. That is uh, a neo paradigm shift. A neo paradigm shift that is already <laughs> included with our geography, because right now geography is explaining not only with descriptive science but also we are using GIS remote sensing. And in most right. cases, the concept of well-being, the concept of well-being has been already included. So nowadays, 
geography is not only confided with, with in its own mother subject, mother co concept, but it has become like a multidisciplinary multidisciplinary geography. So a new branch, the, the digitalization in geography, the digitalization in geography has been included. So, so, uh, so a new paradigm concept and a new development concept has been added already. So this is my viewpoint. And I think uh, the, the paper of uh, Cole, uh, it's very much relevant and, a, and, and can make a new uh, avenue to think about our rethinking. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hope to have uh, for the such collaborations with you. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Shane, please uh, unmute your. Uh, Dr. Shane, unmute. Thank okay. Thank you. I'm requesting Nepali uh, Agarwal. Are you present here? Are you present your paper. I think I think uh, Dr. Tapos Pal, I think uh, she is not present. So should I uh, should I pass on to the next speaker? Yes, of course, sir. Of course. Hello. Hello. Okay, okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Dipali Agarwal. Uh, please start your paper. Time limit is ten minutes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, very much audible. Okay. So I'm sharing my content. Is it uh, visible on the screen? Uh, yes, it is visible. So your okay, paper is geographical imprints on various social and scientific studies. Yes, sir. OK, please, please uh, uh, start your presentation. Good afternoon to one and all. This is my privilege to present this topic in front of all the bestest dignitaries. The topic talks about imprints of geography of all the social on all the social sciences and natural sciences. I would like to quote the former president, Barack Obama, who said, the study of geography is about more than just mesmerizing places on the map. It's about understanding the complexity of the world, appreciating the diversity of cultures that exist across continents. And in the end, it's all about using that knowledge to help bridge the divide. These words truly inspire me. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Please continue. Am I yes. I'm, am I audible? And my screen yes, is yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes audible. Yes. Please continue. Hello, Vipali Agarwal. You yes, yes, have your presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, it is, it is visible, it is visible, and your voice is also audible. Please go on. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. The objectivity and the usability of our paper directly relates to the studying the need to understand and evaluate the importance 
of the study of geography to better understand natural sciences and social sciences geography is considered as a mother of all the sciences on this earth with specialized discipline like geodesy meteorology soil science plant ecology and regional science have emerged coming to our next slide explaining the term geography as defined by national geographic organization geography is the study of places and relationships between the people and the environment geography explores and eliminates both the physical environment with respect to human culture nature and its habitat and vice versa physical geography physical science or natural science is the study of environment with accurate ratio of the systematic nature it is a branch of natural science the natural living beings and according accordance to the non living the inanimate material of the earth on the other hand social science is the study of man's tradition culture behavior and all the political economical and social backgrounds in which he lives with its full priority to explain the importance of it with respect to other subjects like likewise like the dynamics of the geography are into pertaining to geography the physics and geography for example we study geomorphology in geography in which we mainly study the forces the tectonic movements with respect to time and space explaining the dynamics of earth with the ever changing and uh, unresting man and nature chemistry and geography as we study the climatology and oceanography we mainly study the changing nature of air water for example the chemical changes in the air and water due to industrialization on this earth in a similar manner we study many other subjects likewise the astrology so soil geography the pedology that we call in um, science itself remote sensing and gis which is the newest evolution of technology in which we are directly being informed of far off places sitting in a room or an office coming to the social sciences there are various branches which study the political geography economic geography population geography social geography or the changing culture of the man likewise if a person is surrounded with a land all over he has to maintain a good political or migration relations with other to maintain peace and tranquility whereas maintaining good international relations another example for it would be if an indian farmer is staying in the city of the great indian plain area he is naturally acquiring income from agriculture which is very profitable for the uh, agriculture department so it is really important that we understand the social sciences and the tot with total respect to geography to make our study easier and convenient in the last i would now uh, conclude by saying some words of michael pellin pellin that says that geography is a subject which holds the key of our future thank you so much for being such a good audience thank you thank you so hello variety of uh, all the wide variety of all the branches of
you have mentioned about the wide variety of all the branches of geography uh, and indicating thereby that geography is a dynamic subject. So uh, I would request Dr. Amol Chakravarti, if he is present, uh, to say something about uh, this paper. Amol Chakravarti, are you present here? Dr. Amul Chakrabarti is not present here, sir. So can you please make some uh, comments about this paper? Sir, not yet. Okay, should I pass on to the next uh, paper? The next paper? Yes, is sir. Uh, now, Devashish Agarwal, Mr. Devashish uh, Shorkar, Devashish Shorkar, are you present here? Hello. Yes, present here, sir. Hello. Please present here. Start your paper. Uh, um, at first, I uh, convey my um, convey my thanks to the organizing committee um, and to Abdul Goni College and and um, Gorbongo. Um, University. At, uh, I uh, discuss my topics on geography as a pedagogical approach uh, of teaching practices at secondary level. Uh, uh, geography as a multidisciplinary subject because uh, of its division of uh, different uh, subfields. Trad uh, traditional. Am I audible, sir? Hello. Am I audible? Yes. 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 Yes, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. Geography has uh, viewed uh, in the as the same as cartography and uh, pupil who study the place names. And this uh, paper investigate how geography maintains the pedagogical nature uh, in secondary level. Uh, this paper highlights how a discipline geography maintain its interdisciplinary nature and interdisciplinary intradisciplinary approach. And this paper deals for a for a shake of knowledge how geography construct a method subject in teaching practices at secondary level and um, also um, discuss from the very outset i discuss uh, pedagogical analysis and the combination of concept uh, learning outcomes activities and learning experiences and evolution practices um, uh, the objectives of um, uh, geography also um, several and comes from several disciplines. The thought of geography also comes from several disciplines. You, uh, so Jigar, Jigar in 1990 also postulated different terms like uh, geography, uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. Okay. So I discuss only for how geography maintain the uh, pedagogical approach in secondary uh, level or and another layer, another um, find the geography maintains the interdisciplinary nature with other subject in secondary level, and geography maintains the interdisciplinary nature um, in the subject of Jadu. Um, my hypothesis also note there was no significant uh, difference in the pedagogical nature in geography and other social science subject. Uh, there is uh, there is no significant difference in the inter interdisciplinary nature with other social science subject and hypothesis also there is no significant difference in interdisciplinary nature with other social science subject and my methodology of the present study is a descriptive survey method i uh, sample 400 teachers in secondary levels has been uh, selected by adopting the random sampling techniques as a present study the selected sample has been drawn from kolkata and howrah district at secondary level uh, teachers uh, variables different pedagogical approach on approach of the secondary level of Howrah districts are uh, Kolkata districts are considered as a dependent variable and independent variables also subject teachers attitudes subject teacher pedagogical attitudes and their the information their professional skills etc uh, as tools used uh, researcher used the tools of uh, measure pedagogical approach and knowledge prepared by OECD teaching learning uh, interactive survey uh, were used to uh, data analysis and after items three uh, 
uh, 30 items as selected. And the validity and reliability also estimated by applying test retest and uh, alpha. And so uh, last my uh, pedagogical approach to data analysis and interpretation, my pedagogical knowledge between geography and other, other subject also not same. Uh, on um, pedagogical approach on um, pedagogical approach uh, about pedagogical approach the teacher and uh, secondary teacher and um, uh, uh, all secondary teachers uh, there is lack of uh, pedagogical approach in nature uh, because uh, the p value of the uh, of the information of different uh, teacher and the, and their background knowledge their professional development their teachers appraisal feedback teaching practice belief attitude teachers and teaching in practice particular class in a school so all the information are below p value 0 0.01 so they are so not they are not enriched with pedagogical knowledge um, in secondary level um, subject in geography and and the other uh, hypothesis to interdisciplinary approach interdisciplinary approach um, um we also conclude that we also uh, summarize the t value uh, was found in the significant therefore corresponding null hypothesis was rejected it could be inferred that and uh, existed significant they are mean scores and disciplinary interdisciplinary approach of geography and other social science interdiscipline also the same thing t value also found the significant therefore in corresponding null hypothesis was rejected as as it could be inferred that exist a significant difference at the mean score of geography and social science and other subjects so um, now there is a lack of all knowledge uh, pedagogical knowledge interdisciplinary knowledge in geography and um, though uh, and uh, interdisciplinary all knowledge there is a there is not plentiful knowledge in geography as a subject mother as a subject uh, so and all teachers are um, um, all teachers are evaluated uh, through this statistical techniques. Um, uh, um, my conclusion is that um, uh, we know about geography uh, as a mother science uh, because we are the teacher of geography, we are the uh, expert of geography, we are the layman, we are the, um, uh, we are the um, endless person of geography. So uh, we also know about the pedagogical nature, the interdisciplinary nature, the intradiscipline nature also. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, all the dignitaries. Hello? Hello? From the pedagogical approach at secondary levels. Uh, and then uh, I'll I, I, uh, just ask one, one very, very short question that uh, your uh, presentation is based on statistical approaches and what kind of case you have done, just one or two. Can you mention it, please? Hello? Mr. Devashi Shoka, can you hear me? Should I pass on to the next speaker? Dr. Tapaspar, should I speak on to the pass on to the next speaker? Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. The next uh, speaker is Nojul Islam. Are you present, Nojul Islam? Mr. Nojul Islam? Mr. Nojul Islam, are you present, please? Nojul Islam, please. Are you here? Nojul Islam. 
Nadrul, Nadrul Islam, are you here, please? No, I think he's he's not present, sir. So next speaker uh, is Mohammad Asadullah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am present. Sir, what is that? Mr. Asadullah, are you present? Yes, sir. I am present. Are you audible? Yes, present. I am. descriptions of on the earth. Geography is the systematic and scientific study of lands, feature, plant, animal, inhabitant, and phenomena of the earth. <clears throat> geography is defined as the bridge between the human and physical geography. Human geography deals with the study of the people and their cultures, communities, and interaction with their environment through starting their relation with place. And physical geography is defined as the study of the process and pattern in the natural environment. Geography is the most closely related to other disciplines such as sociology, psychology, education, philosophy, political science, political science, history, economics, environmental science, etc. Geography compared, uh, compared to the other disciplines such as education, such as education and sociology cycle. Edu <coughs> education Education is the education is the most valuable tool. Most, val most valuable tool. Education gives us knowledge of all around us. And geographer, many geographers investigate the place, environment, and space which make up our world. Geography plays most significant role to create the school curriculum, which helps to teach the students an essential knowledge about. <coughs> About, about the description of the art. And sociology deals with the human social behavior, society, pattern of social relationships, and social interaction in the daily life. Another side, psychology is the scientific study of human mind and behavior. Psychological knowledge is used to assess and their treat and mental health problem and many aspects of human activities. Objectives of the study to know the concept of geography. To know the analysis and interpretation of geography, to find out the relationship between geography and other disciplines, to find out the comparison between geography and other disciplines, to highlight the relationship among geography, sociology, psychology, and education. Overall discussion of these studies, competition geography as compared to other disciplines, such as education, sociology, psychology, is the most valuable topic in the present era. Geography and other disciplines are closely related to each other. Without any one discipline, it is not possible to expose their real value. I would like to show an effective comparison in the study. Comparison between geography and edu education. The way people learned about this different approach to geography, developed the skill to conduct geographical investigations, embarrassed the values associated with this approach and practicized them in their lives become familiar as geographical education. This relationship between geography and geographical education has varied over time. For example, in the late 19th century, in the context of British, the issue was the relationship between geographical content, educational process, and social issues, etc. They used the quantitative revolutions of the 1960s as a basis of developing geographical tools that could be used in school to implement this form of geographical education. The balance between geography and geographical education was exposed by the movement out of geographical education by many academic geographers in the UK in the 1970s and 1980s. Thereafter, various geographical education modulated up to the 1990s, despite a stronger alliance between the geographer and geographical educator. Only modest success was achieved in the having geography recognized as a main subject in the school curriculum. 
and geography also offer the main educational medium through which people learn to understand and communicate special information in map and graphic forms. In the case of geography, the formal education curriculum subject is normally included the curricular in different level of formal education because they are believed by policy makers to be relevant to the goals of particular society. Another side, the range of themes covered in formal geographic studies assist students in their problem solving roles in later life. And also, non formal education is much more complex than its role in formal education in the place of geography. The component of geographical education is taking a lead from geographer and geographical educator in the U.S. In the study of geography in his education, in this relevance may be demonstrated through understanding how geography contributes to the development of key life roles, how the knowledge, skill and values developed in the geography can, can be used to enhance the human occupation of our world. How social and environment action can be enhanced through the geographical education. Another comparison between geography and sociology. <clears throat> this in many ways depends on the sociology and how people and as societies build up, as these people and societies will have a large cultural impact within and outside their society. Cultural geography studies how this cultural difference impacts the movement and scattering of people. Sociology studies why and how these types of social structure form in the first place, and this knowledge can effectively predict what cultural geography is studying in future. Sociology can also affect physical geography as knowledge of how culture and society is formed and the way human interact socially can explain how and why human have altered the landscape. Studying human society can explain and predict how human will migrate, function and alter the earth, which is also studied as geography. If we want to study the variable character of its social phenomena on the Earth's surface, we need to assimilate sociology uh, with geography. However, the introduction of the location theory into the sociology has further a great tie with geography and vice versa. Social geography is the logical appearance of the inference between sociology and geography as it studies social phenomena in the special context. Other comparison between the geography and psychology. Psychology is the scientific study of human mind and behavior. It deals with the study of the conscious and unconscious phenomena as well as feelings and thought. Feeling and thought. Both geographer and psychologist have been investigating learn and acquire, acquire geographic knowledge. How this knowledge is framed within the mind, in what forms, and how it is accessed and used for guiding behavior. According to Kitsi, 1996, report that a number of theories have existed concerning this factor. For example, there have been various theories concerning cognitive map development proposed by both psychologists and geographers, such as Piaget, Helder, Werner, Seisel, and White. And also, a specific thought referred to how we think about geographic space and the surrounding daily environment, like according to living. Every task and understanding how we arrive at such decisions are vital for fantastic future behavior, change for policymaker and planners. Both psychologists and geographers have conceptualized the residential site selection method, so they have covered the way for the development of identical models of residential site selection. At last, conclude, after the discussions, we can come to the conclusion that competitions in geography as compared to the other disciplines other dispute is the most valuable topic in the present era. Geography and other disciplines is closely related to each other. Without any one discipline, it is not possible to expose their real value. I would like to show as effective relations and or compare in this study. So in this study, it is most beneficial or useful in the present education system in India and world. This type of study is most essential for us and next generation too. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, thank you, thank you very much for Mohammad uh, Asad for presenting uh, a big part uh, which indicates uh, the competition uh, in geography as compared to other disciplines, sociology, psychology, education. So, once again, you have also pointed out that 
geography and interdisciplinary subject and yes. there are a lot of uh, rules of these uh, social sciences to play with so uh, it's a very interesting paper i want to uh, do some uh, comments from dr tapos pal can you please make some comments okay thank you thank you sir uh this session actually this session was very uh, very relevant in present concept of geography why because uh, the, the candidate who has present the pedagogical aspect uh, i would like to uh, give i would like to add one thing that is right now the e pedagogy is adding with our geography because geography is explaining with youtube uh, online teaching whatsapp google meet zoom webex So these all are digital uh, concepts added. So, so right now we are we are um, knocking the door of e-pedagogy, which has already been entered within geographical aspects and geographical analysis. Uh, I am requesting to uh, Professor Dr. Nayak uh, if he uh, explain or give your his uh, valuable comment to conclude this session. Dr. Nayak. <laughs> I have uh, listened to some of the papers. I couldn't listen to all of them, but it has been very enlightening and uh, quite enriching. Um, the young scholars have uh, have, have taken enough um, pain to uh, to present uh, on important aspects of geography, and I'm, I'm really glad that uh, we are listening to very enlightening papers. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Your order, Kali. Thank you. Then, then, please conclude. Professor Sen, please unmute yourself. Uh, my thanks to Dr. Noni Gopal Kapasia and Dr. Joy to the Islam for uh, the report here and moderator being Dr. Pantas and Mr. Uh, Pasha. So we are uh, active cooperation with taking uh, this and uh, completed. So once again, thank you all and let me close this session. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, now we are going to start the next technical session. That is technical session three. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, so we are going to uh, yes. start the next technical session, and uh, we have. Uh, I hope all the uh, chairperson and uh, uh, co-chairpersons are present. already present here uh, we have um, uh, dr swadesh pal from gorbongo college uh, we have uh, abdul hanan dr abdul hanan uh, from sikkim university uh, as a chairperson please i welcome uh, both of you as our uh, the chairperson of this session uh, next we have uh, co chairperson biswajit roy choudhury from vidyasagar college and uh, we also have we also have uh, reporter subrato guha and tosip ahmed uh, please sir swadesh sir and abdul hanan please um, uh, start the technical session hello हेलो स्वदेश सर अनंत सर इज देयर अनंत सर हम क्या करेंगे
Hello. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Hamnan and uh, Shadesh Pal not present here. Please uh, carry the session. Uh, Vishwajit Roy Chaudhary and Dr. Tapos Pal from Raigon University. Please, sir, carry the session. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you, Dr. Samuel, for uh, carrying the microphone to us and for organizing such a wonderful session, wonderful webinar session on the geography as it is. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes. first of all, I would like to congratulate and welcome the, all the participants and congratulate the organizing team, organizing institutions on behalf of uh, me. And uh, right now, without wasting any time, I would go for our next uh, session. And hopefully, Dr. Tapospal is with me to conduct this session. Thank you, sir. So right now we are uh, going to start our session with Sreyashi Nondi. She will present her paper on geography, meets holistic nature and learning challenges. Uh, 10 minutes for you, Ms. Nandi. Are you present here? Sreyashi Nondi, are you present? Okay, uh, ma'am, please um, continue, please. Am I audible? Yes, yes, absolutely. Please continue. May I share my PPT? Yeah, you, you have 10 minutes to present your paper. Okay? Ma'am, please wait one second to share PPT. Okay. Yes, ma'am, now you can share your PPT. My slide visible? Hello? Yes, it's fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon to all members of organizing committee of Dewan Abdul Ghani College and all other members and all the participants. Myself, Shreyoshi Nondi. Today, I am presenting a paper in your two days international e-conference. And the topic name of my paper is Geography, its holistic nature and learning challenges. First of all, I gave a short introduction about geography. As we all know, the term geography comes to us from the ancient Greeks who needed a word to describe the writings and maps that were helping them make sense of the world in which we live. Geography consider as a mother of all science. In very short, geography is a study of places and the relationship between people and their environment. From ancient period, the field of geography divided into physical and human part. Geographers explore both the physical properties of earth surface and the human societies spread across it. Physical geography relates to the study of earth surface, climatic condition, soil structure, etc. And human geography refers to the study of distribution of network people and cultures on the earth surface. The nature of this paper is mainly descriptive type. Then we come to the objective of my paper. 
the main objective of this paper is to describe the holistic nature of geography and how geography expands its circle of discussion from the holistic view and the another objective is highlight the challenges related to learning process of geography and how to overcome the challenges next we come the main discussion part of this paper the term holistic coined by john smarts the approach refers to thoroughly analyze a subject to shed light on or explain everything related to it the core concept of geography is space geographers try to explain everything based on space and take holistic approach means they consider both the physical and human phenomena that are appropriate to understanding the characteristics of the earth here the three main questions are where why and how where refers the location of any elements like address etc why refers the condition and connection and how refers the importance and consequences for example how over use of resources affect the environment and these all are relates to geography and make the nature of this subject holistic then we come to the challenge of learning of geography first of all the number of students increasing day by day and for this reason clear discussion of every topic to each student doesn't possible secondly because of this holistic nature of this subject different new papers are include but there are not enough time to complete all papers precisely and for this reason students are being forced to do exam centric learning next the infrastructural facilities are not equal in every colleges and student face difficulties for this reason then because of this holistic nature the core concept of this subject has lost its importance sometime to understand the every part of this subject field survey is so important but there is not enough time to arrange much field surveys then come to the suggestion part according to me some suggestions or proposals are adjust the syllabus keeping in view the time so that the students can learn in the right way arrange short and budget friendly field surveys establish necessary infrastructure in all colleges according to the syllabus of geography we should represent the subject matter towards the students in a interesting way and discuss the matters from interdisciplinary view last as a conclusion i must say the holistic nature of geography enrich the scope of this subject and we hope that it will not create so much barrier but it will increase the excellence of the subject and last thank you once again so over to you sir Uh, thank you, Devashi. Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Tapos Pal to say something. Dr. Tapos Pal, are you here? Anyway, thank you, Sreyoshi, for your extensive presentation. Are you here? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, very intrinsic presentation on the geography, its holistic nature, overall. You have provided an overall view on the subject domain. 
thank you. Due to short timing, we are going to have to go to our next speaker, Dr. Indira Haldar. Ma'am, are you here? Dr. Indira Haldar? Are you here? Please respond. Most probably she is not here. Next, uh, Shandeep Mandal. Mr. Shandeep Mandal. Mr. Shandeep Mandal. Paramita Shatra. Paramita Shatra. Paramita. Are you here? Okay. Yes, sir. I am here. I present, okay, sir. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So, can I share my presentation, sir? Present you may start your presentation on the topic uh, scope and significance of the geography in the present context. Paramita, over to you, please. Mm. Sir, I uh, cannot uh, present my uh, cannot share my presentation, so I uh, only like speak. Share, uh, would you like to share your screen? Sir, I did not. Uh, I cannot uh, eat it. Uh, Doctor, now try, please. Please, okay. So, sir, I only. Pay. No, ma'am, you can. Ma'am, you, you can. can. You can present your share. Share your presentation. Uh, can I visible my PPT? Yes, yes, yes. If visible, you may start. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Parumita Shatra. I am a BS student from Bijay Krishna Girls College, Howrah. Today, I will discuss uh, the topic, uh, the scope and significance of the geography in the present context. Uh, these are the key points which are discussed today. Uh, let me start with introduction part. We all are know the concept of geography. I am also just uh, highlight the point. First, I will say the geography is a special science. It is discuss, uh, discuss about the phenomenon over the earth surface. It is not only a special science, it is a holistic study. It is combined this discussion uh, of physical aspect as well as social aspect. It's also a systematic subject. Law making, modeling, field study or also include this subject. Uh, geography interact uh, to other discipline. Uh, geography continuously evolving. It's so many paradigm. Uh, environmental determinism, possibilism, uh, uh, behavioralism, humanism, modernism, postmodernism, all of the perspective actually indicate that ongoing progress of the subject. <laughs> Uh, object the objective this study i have selected two objects uh, to fulfill my work first uh, i discuss the scope and theme of geography and next uh, mention the significance of geography in the present context now uh, now we uh, we look upon the fulfill my work and i scope uh, the scope of geography is much wider because geography studies relate to the art descriptions in geography two main branch uh, these are physical geography and human geography and physical geography under the physical geography have various uh, sub branch geomorphology uh, climatology hydrology etc physical geography is uh, uh, deals and discuss discuss the physical process patterns earth surface evolution of the um, earth surface and uh, similarly climatology deals the physical uh, some physical concept such as climatic condition climatic characters and climatic changes uh, to the past and uh, 
and the most fundamental um, branches is environment geography it deals the uh, how human action modified the physical environment and how physical system affect uh, human system and on the other branch human geography is deals the uh, the characteristics uh, distribution and migrations of uh, human population on the earth surface through the population geography and and also similarly cultural geography is deals the cultural complexity and landscape and cultural convergence uh, convergence etc and uh, and also economic geography uh, is deals the economic growth factors and industrial development and uh, settlement geography is uh, discuss about the uh, process pattern function uh, of human settlement and etc uh, now um, now i discuss uh, some uh, theme of geography and in geography have various theme uh, uh, such as uh, spatial distribution landscape regional inequality man environment relationship temporal discussion radical content so uh, special distribution uh, uh, special distribution is about reviewing uh the distribution of place it emphasizes the discussion of regional interaction between one region and another and next is landscape is <laughs> review um, is review um, the reaction of human and natural element and it's also review is to understood how landscape it's gradually transform into a cultural land of human interaction and next in explaining the uh, relationship of nature and Uh, uh, human and from this theme, man and woman relations theme. Uh, from this theme, arise, uh, arise two concepts. One is possibilism, and second is determinism. Determinism is, uh, um, is where nature uh, is seen as the regulator of man his function, and on the other opposite uh, approach is possibilism, um, where people uh, are through be much more active, and. next is uh, where every geog and that the, the most of geography all over the team are most important but most fundamental theme is geography temporal discussion where every geographical subject or event brings and how the events has progressed to present stage and these discussions are considered is uh, very uh, important in geography and they all done in temporal discussions and lastly i uh, and and lastly i uh, this uh, discuss a radical content theme and this content is focus on welfare of women in society and anti gender and anti war and movement and next and next is i discuss the uh, what are the significance of geography in the present context and uh, in geography provide uh, through uh, geography through uh, Uh, provide various uh, skill for student because uh, students uh, uh, geography studies through gain certain knowledge such as critical uh, skill and explanatory thinking skill computer and digital skill etc and um, at present new branch uh, new branch added uh, in geography these are um, is remote sensing gis and remote, uh, remote sensing gis so uh, uh, geographer students are now improve the computer and digital skill and next is career opportunity and uh, geographer can easily fit any job because geography also uh, relate to uh, interdisciplinary subject and uh, uh, geography is uh, provide such uh, such job just uh, like uh, teaching uh, research uh, like uh, admin administrative center metro uh, metro town planner urban planner and water um, land use architecture it's uh, many jobs are uh, opportunities uh, 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 opportunities here and geography uh, uh, and one of the fundamental significance is geography is the environmental uh, development and geography gives uh, of advance uh, geography helps the globalization uh, and geography gives <laughs> some ideas advanced technology good transportation and also of uh, to and cities were established in certain location and why some have flourish more than other geography helps also disaster management uh, disaster are being detected in advance through various, various satellite image uh, uh, satellite indication and image uh, image and geography provide uh, so, uh, pro, pro also provide uh, some population um, population uh, information um, 
geography provides some guideline the population policy and also over popular over population in any region and mortality and fertility rate of any region and de depending population of any country and region so uh, and lastly i uh, discuss the economic uh, rate economic growth geography informs uh, uh, us to how the sustainability utilize the resource that are available as well as and uh, give uh, as well uh, as well as give a lot information about industrial sector agriculture sector and uh, and resource distribution of any region and also uh, the, um, also very um, very helps the regional disparity of resources and lastly i conclude uh, my presentation and uh, so geography subject uh, need to be made more modern through the attachment of new concept and through various research studies and the practical uh, application in research need to be further enhanced and with the increase in the number of ge geographical studies and efforts should, should be made the further improve geographers through the formation of geography these are the reference my uh, study and thank you again over the here sir thank you paramita uh, for sharing your views regarding the geography and this is the approach of geography also so right dr tapushpal are you here yes uh, sir kindly comment hello hello dr pal kindly comment on the topic of forum your voice is breaking your voice is giving hello dr tapushpal your voice is not clear So, shall we uh, wait our another uh, speaker? Uh, your voice is uh, audio is not. Hello. Tapos sir, please check your internet connection. It is actually uh, voice is breaking. Uh, Tapos, uh, Tapos sir, kindly please join once again. Yeah, your internet uh, due to some connectivity issues, your voice is not audible from clearly. No, sir, your voice is not clear. Okay, uh, okay, Dr. Abdul Hanan, sir, are you present here? Dr. Abdul Hanan, sir, or Dr. Shadesh Pal, sir. Okay, um, we should go for our next presenter, Hitesh Kumar. Hitesh Kumar, are you here? 
मिस्टर नितेश कुमार नितेश कुमार आर यू हियर If you are if you are present, please respond, Nitesh Kumar. I think no. So, oh, Dr. Sh uh, Mr. Sanjeev Mahata, are you here? Mr. Sanjeev Mahata. संजीव महता महतो सॉरी डॉक्टर तापोषपल अरिव हियर डॉक्टर तापोषपल Uh, Ismail, are you here? Dr. Ismail? Dr. Ismail, are you present here? Uh, once again, I would like to request the organizers. Uh, is Dr. Indira, Dr. Indira Haldar, Sandeep Mondol, Nitesh Kumar, Sanjeev Mahato? Is there anybody present? Sir, Sandeep Mondol. Sandeep? Sir, Sandeep Mondol. Sandeep Mondol. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sandeep, your paper is Future Barriers to Students' Research in Geography yes, of the Present Time in India. Okay. Sir? Sir, is you, sir? You may start your presentation. Yeah, yeah. You may start yes, you can share your screen. Ah, sir. सर शेरी स्क्रीन है सर your screen is audible and is visible but uh, your presentation share screen i would like to request all the audience except sandeep pandol kindly mute your sir ha sir sir share ta to uh moderator kindly look up the matter your screen is is on shared mode you need to share your ppt is there is is there in microsoft ppt yes yeah, sir microsoft is coming just click on microsoft ppt and it will be shown सर पीपीटी तो शेयर आर्सिंग 
Chandmondo, if you want to share PPT, you need a high speed internet connection. Otherwise, it not. Okay, sir. It's sir. Audible and share about. Okay, sir. Sir, topic name: Future barriers to student in geography at the present time in West Bengal. Presented by Mr. Swandip Mondal, PhD research scholar of Dr. C. B. Raman University, Department Geography. So position in India education, Indian education. India's higher education system is the world the largest in terms of students, next to China and United States. India has the advantage of English. Being the primary language of higher education and research, although there have been challenges to higher education in the past. Position of West Bengal higher education in the case of the our state West Bengal education is provided by both the public sector as well as the private sector. The modern education system was developed by the British missionaries and the Indian social reformist. West Bengal has many reputed higher education institutes. Number of colleges in West Bengal has already existed to 260 colleges and is still growing in number and university of West Bengal offer undergraduate, postgraduate, MPhil, PhD, other diploma and certificate programs. Objective of study to analyze the present status of the higher education system in West Bengal to highlight the challenges faced by higher education of research scholar, student, and assistant teacher of school in West Bengal. The study is unique in the sense that brings about better understanding of present scenario in the higher education. <coughs> Assistant teachers are the main problem in getting job in the colleges or university or higher education, MPhil, PhD, or other diploma programs. Many of us come from shoot school, take higher education. Problem in getting no objection certificate from school authority or district inspector of school, not found in most of the uh, another cases. Not getting leave from school authority, no cooperation from colleagues and headmaster, a lot of time from research center not getting cooperation. Recent year twice recruitment and assistant professor by WBCSC. Year of vacancies shown by WBCS of West Bengal College Service Commission 2004 from 2015. 157 total number of vacancies, total number of interviewers of geography subject, 2800 approximately, recruitment of percentage 5.6%. 2018, WBCS or West Bengal College Service Commission shown by vacancies of year, 75 total number of vacancies. Total number of interviews for geography subject 3000 um, approximately, 2.5 percent is report now. So student work, uh, next slide, student or research scholar are in getting jobs in the college or university or higher education. According to WBCSC, West Bengal uh, College Service Commission and uh, West Bengal Public Service Commission notification vacancies are shown very rarely. Not everyone get the chance to do research if, if they need and set qualify. Point three: a lot of money is the research which is difficult for a student. Four point: various journal books, research paper, papers are published in English. Yeah. Hindi, but uh, since most of college and university in our state are taught in Bengali, there is a lot of difficulty in the research. Present obstacle or challenging of college or university students. Admission of understanding student 
evil practice of uh, collecting capitation fee for admission, money based opportunities of teachers recruitment, poor quality teaching system method, the evolution system is qualitatively poor even and crop conduct of examination has become too costly while hazard, hazardous and dangerous political inference in the automatic autonomy of higher education poor leadership at higher levels of administration both college and university suggestion next, next slide parents administrator politician reformers planners and educationalists should be fully involved in the development of education at all levels, enhancing the quality of teaching, learning, and evolution method, encouraging involve in innovation in practical teaching, enhancing the productivity of teacher, focus the continuous development of faculty. Present role of teacher can be encouraged thinking, the information provider, the role model, teacher as a facilitator, facilitator, teacher as a participant in the learnership works. Teacher to find his own teaching style, recognize himself as a professional, be sensitive to needs and problems. Thank you, sir. Such a I skin share not be allowed. So uh, very sad, sir. Sir, hello, hello. Thank you yes. for presenting your. Sir, very sad. Ji, sir, is ki nahi ho ho ase. You can share your skin with a higher internet speed. There yes, is an option in share content below. Show you show you in in your skin. Just click on that share content. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Sir, Just click on share content. I fit about the Sir. Yes, just click on share content and then then it will appear a pop-up and there is an option on share screen one. There is a blue button share. Just click on that. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Boom. So, just click on blue share button and it will share your screen. Yes, your skin are now sharing. Yes, sir. Now click on start button and go to your PPT. Now please open your PPT in your computer. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Now just click on PPT.
just think your screen is we are seeing your your so do whatever you want to show sujita please uh, carry on the session uh, our next hello sujita yes 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 i think uh, carry on the session and uh, so uh, anyway sandeep next time we will definitely it will be possible for us to give your presentation no issue and uh, once again i would like to request i would like to call nitesh kumar are you present nitesh kumar or sachit mahato okay uh, dr tapos pal are you here dr tapos pal Vishwajit Roy Choudhury, please conclude the session. Uh, actually, they are not available. So, okay, fine. So, thank you, participants, for <laughs> your valuable papers on uh, the different discipline and issues of geography. On behalf of the organizers, as a chairperson right now, I would like to thank to all of you and uh, hope your future endeavors will be right. So, right now, I would like to. Conclude the session, technical session, and hand over this microphone to the first mile. The first mile, please. Ismail, are you here? Geography at teaching level and other discipline. Am I audible to you all? hello yes sir yes, yes. yes sir yeah thank you all okay. uh, thank you vishwajit roy choudhury and other chairperson and uh, presenter uh, our next session is panel discussions the panel discussion will be chaired by professor vp sati and co chaired by rita jawahar and moderator in this session dr k rajendra i hand over the microphone to k rajendra please handle the session and carry on dr rajendra Practitioner of geography will going to talk about the global demand of geography at teaching level and other discipline. Since we have, uh, I am going to read out the name of the presenter so that they will ready for the presentation. And we have a very enriching session with Dr. Mustakim, Dr. Priyank P Patel, Dr. Tapas P Pal, Dr. Anjarul Islam, Dr. Mujaffil Haq, Dr. Mukund Misra, Dr. Atul Islam. At Atul Islam, Dr. Rukhsana, and Dr. Sandeepan Ghosh, and this chair is uh, this session is uh, chaired by Professor V.P. Sati, co-chaired by Ritika Jawardar, and uh, I, 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 along with the Dr. Sunil Saha, going to moderate this session. So, uh, since it is a very long session and uh, number of presenters is quite high, so I will request all the presenter to uh, have the six-minute session. So we try to finish up your point in six minutes. I know it is very it is very difficult for you all to maintain a time uh, schedule, but it is also a challenge for you to complete your and uh, communicate completely. I mean, with the maximum efficiency to your audience. So before uh, we start the session, I would like to invite the chairperson and co-chairperson to uh, have some uh, um, uh, introductory remarks and uh, their view about uh, this. Uh, the subject that is the global demand of geography at teaching level and other disciplines so over to uh, our, over to our chair uh, professor vp sati uh, first unmute yourself sir yes, i got it i got yeah. it. i got it okay yeah yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay okay mm, okay okay so uh, very good evening all of you uh 
this is an opportunity to me to be the chair of this academic session and uh, first of all i would like to thank to the organizers for giving me this opportunity uh, mainly uh, dr ismail mohammed ismail who contacted me and gave me this opportunity uh, i would not take much of your time because as the moderator already uh, explain that time is very limited and we have a very huge and very good panelist panel of the panelist and they have to deliver whatever they have the thought about this as you know that uh, this uh, international conference is on geography as a discipline opportunities and challenges and uh, the theme of this uh, panel discussion is global demand of geography at teaching level and other discipline so uh, i would like to say uh, a brief on this actually uh, geography is a father of all the disciplines from the beginning from the ancient classical period when there was uh, the development of geography in greek and roman empire and they shifted from greek roman and then there was uh, the middle period that dark period and then there was new classical period and then many many things are there this is actually the uh, history of geographical thought we all know about this my point of view is that most of the disciplines they are now very burning and very comprehensive at this point of time like geology like remote sensing and uh, this uh, gi this uh, gis science they all come out from carved out from of geography all and now where we are we stand because geography is uh, actually a multidisciplinary uh, uh, subject in nature so we are now uh, in many ways we are uh, the we are uh, uh, the master of all but jack for none that is our dilemma actually but on the other hand if you see at international level geography is actually getting importance in very scientific institutions all over the world but the thing is that we have to more uh, this kind of this we have to be uh, technical because as we know that this remote sensing and gis science is a domain field of geography but where we stand on this many botanists many other ge geologists they have all grabbed this and geology also was a geology is a small part of geography earlier it was uh, within the geography but now it has becoming a very 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 prominent subject so in this way this conference will definitely will think about that where what we can do on geography and do for geography and what how the geography will be very very relevant in future uh, in terms of it, it it's because the employment employ employability is very important because geography people when you see that if you go to the survey of india suppose i will give you an example survey of india and if there are any post vacant geography is not there and survey of india the mapping and all these toposite construction of toposites and maps they all are the domain field of geography in such a way we have to see we have to see the possibility and probability of the geography where we can take this so this conference is very timely and very uh, also very uh, good at this point of time and i hope that i will not take much of time because uh, a coach here has to say something and then moderator will do actually yeah i was in um, thought in my mind that moderator will moderate this it is better sir uh, our moderator is this k rajendra sir you have to continue this and i have some problem of networking here so maybe sometimes i may not be here anyway thank you very much all of you and uh, uh, thank you for the organizers i hand over to dr k rajendra yeah yeah thank you thank you very much for your introductory remark and citing some historical context how the geography come into being and now is spread across the different inter interdisciplinary domain and there is also some issues and challenges that you are facing not only for the geography but all relates all the space related subjects where the, we are more concerned about the spatial and temporal contexts so
so india the issue is little bit different and the many speaker will going to bring this issue in detail so now i this is time to invite uh, our co chair uh, uh, dr ikita jawardar ma'am to have uh, her vision on this context and the topic that chosen for this panel discussion so over to uh, uh, rik rikta jawardar ma'am good evening i am audible yes 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 ma'am you can continue yes firstly i am very honored to co chair this session and i am thankful to the organizers of this uh, international webinar uh, the uh, theme of the this panel discussion global demand of geography at teaching level and other discipline is very timely as uh, uh, here is an exciting uh, truth for us the geography and geographers are in greater demand now than at any time in recent history and we better to understand this planet wide realities than a geography actually ge geography graduates are very employable employable and uh, with the skills knowledge and understanding gained during a geography degree are held in high regard so uh, this session is very uh, enriching and our uh, speakers are uh, all are enlightened persons and enlightened geographers and i am very keen to hear uh, from them uh, so i am not taking much time and uh, i hand over to moderator to carry on the session thank you please on your microphone Uh, I would like to uh, uh, request my co-moderator, Dr. Sunil Saha, to be on the dais so that everyone can see him. Uh, he is there, Dr. Sunil Saha. Okay. So in mean, we will we will catch him um, um, during the panel. So uh, now there is an announcement from the organizer that they have. Uh, fortunately agree to extend the time of deliberation for the each of the panelist and now instead of 6 minute we have liberty to extend up to 10 or 12 minute maximum so it is it, i am pretty sure that this is going to be very interesting session in context because uh, the name i can see they all are the mid career practitioner of geography so they are going to uh, bring a very relevant perspective at this juncture juncture because this is time where all the special subjects are in demand not only in the context of the science and technology point of view but also the social con social uh, social contextualization where the i mean the where where the quest is uh, the sustainable development and in the pandemic the necessity of this discussion on this topic is also paramount of, of paramount importance so uh by following the uh, the uh, sequence has given to me uh, i would like to invite dr priyank p patel for uh, his deliberation so over to uh, dr priyank p patel uh good afternoon everybody uh, this is priyank from presidency university i'll just start uh, i hope uh, i uh, you can listen to me yes yeah you are audible thank you sir so i'll just uh, take uh, the seven or eight minutes given to me and i'll just share a small presentation that i have prepared for this so yank we uh, have 10 minutes you have 10 to 12 minutes so okay. please okay so i'll just share a small presentation uh, that is there uh, can the presentation be seen yes sir. you can upload share your presentation there is option okay. share your presentation it is a share content the third from le le left yes, the third was, option third box yeah sure so i am doing that so can it be the, I, yes. i think it can be seen right mm. yes now it is visible 
now now it is visible right okay sir thank you yeah. Yeah. so the panel discussion topic that has been given to us is global demands of geography right at teaching scale and other disciplines now uh, as a teacher uh, uh, i have two jobs one is teaching and one is research right as a faculty member now my main focus is always going to be teaching because that in many ways is a greater duty that we owe to our students going ahead and uh, you know i don't want to i don't want my students to say that uh, you didn't teach us well once we pass out so uh, i made a list of 11 points that going ahead that we need to do for our students and we need to make this a kind of a, a pro forma or a manifesto taking ahead so these are the 11 points that i jotted down quickly the first one is that uh, we need to teach older textbooks as well as the newer textbooks together now many of us have brought have been brought up on the older textbooks in geography and my subject geomorphology but today there are a lot of newer textbooks that have come to the market and for example i'm showing you some textbooks these are all published after the year 2000 now it is very heartening that in the new syllabuses that have been made by various universities under the cbcs a lot of new textbooks have come up which were not there earlier but even more there are uh, there are even further newer textbooks that are there which are available and which i feel that uh, can be seen and which can be uh, you know uh, given out to the students which can be accessed by the students and they can learn a lot from them out of these textbooks i would like to highlight one particular which is uh, the geomorphology the mechanics and chemistry of landscapes which talks about how much science a student needs to know maths and physics a student needs to know to do geomorphology then something called science philosophy and physical geography whenever we usually teach geographical thought usually what happens is we just make thought a quite boring series of biographies of old geographers who have passed away but thought is much more dynamic and it lies at the heart of geography because it is the interface between both the human side and the physical side so there are specialist uh, books on thought for human geography specialist books on thought for physical geography which we can give to the students and they can learn then today we are in the realm of the anthropocene uh, the geological age so there are books in geomorphology especially on the anthropocene so my submission is that we need to and there are just because i'm showing you books in geomorphology does not mean that there are no other books in human geography or economic geography there are a lot of newer books for example a student can question that we are studying urban geography but we are reading the same old theories of Burgess and hoyt and Ullman, which are 70 80 you know uh, years old what are the newer urban theories where are those textbooks are there no textbooks written in the last 20 years that we should be up to date with so this is one point of submission that i had the next point of submission was that uh, while we are teaching uh, the newer things we should also discuss some very recent research papers for example if i'm teaching a topic on slope development or if i'm teaching a topic on urban planning so what are the two or three main recent papers that are there uh, published in the last two years that are relevant to my topic and which I should you know, inform my class about. They may not be able to understand the entire research paper. I will take them through a reading phase by phase of the paper, show them the main paragraphs, show them the main equations, the main points of discussion. So what, will it, what it will do to a class, both BSc and MSc, is that it will teach them how to you know, recognize a research paper, what are the components of a research paper, how research is written and carried out, and also how to read a research paper, judge the quality of a research paper. That is very, very important. Then the other thing that we need to do is many a time the geography that we teach in our classrooms is dissociated from the wider world. Uh, our students have to imagine a landform or our students have to imagine a social situation, right? Because the, the words are just dry letters on a textbook. We are not really connecting with them in such manner. So why don't we take every day in a, each class or once a week some of the latest news stories that are there in the newspapers and try and find out the geographical angles of those news because all news is related to a region or an issue and all issues are related to the geography of that particular region or that particular social group or that area so i'm sure within each news component uh, we can find out some aspect of political geography resource geography geomorphology right and if we can discuss the newspapers with our students the recent news that is going on current affairs not only will it increase their general knowledge, not only will it make them better for the competitive exams going ahead, but also it will teach them to look at newspapers, take up newspapers in a different way, and that will improve their reading habits in any language, be it Bengali, Hindi, English, any language, right? And then something fun, because today we are in a COVID situation, we are looking at uh, possibly the next semester, even two semesters, which we have to be which we have to teach online. 
So why not along with the dry learning techniques, dry uh, your uh, uh, textbooks, why don't we give them some fun things to do? For example, why don't we give them some fun novels to read? For example, Amitabh Ghosh, I'm talking about English, but you will find lots of examples in Hindi. Uh, you will find lots of examples in Bangla. For example, Amitabh Ghosh's novel, Hungry Tide, that talks about the sea level rise. Or James Lovelock, Maya Hypothesis, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. So we can, these books can be given as a class assignment. You can have students in groups. You can have them discuss these uh, various uh, uh, books, write a short report on these groups. I'll show you some more books. For example, The Great Deluge, which is the flooding of the Mississippi and how it changed U.S. policy towards river geomorphology, leading to the development of the you know, main irrigation canal systems. Then Dirt, which is the importance of soil. Then Long Summer, that is the importance of climate change in human history. Right. Or even say there is a book called Darjeeling. For example, Darjeeling talks about how the tea plantations in the Darjeeling area change the social geography and economic geography of that landscape. So these are the kind of books that, you know, these are fun books. These are not heavy textbooks. Our students, and these are quite short, maybe 100 pages, 150 pages. Our students can go over certain chapters, look at certain chapters, and they will, they will experience much more fun with the concepts that we are teaching, the issues that we are teaching. Also, documentaries, movies. What if we give certain documentaries to our students and tell them to analyze it from a geographic perspective? There are a lot of documentaries that are available online uh, regarding global warming, sea level rise, interior of the earth, then plastic impacts on the oceans. And then we can also make them see some popular films. Uh, for example, you can give them a film like The Gods Must Be Crazy and ask them to interpret the Kalahari or desert geomorphological landscape. You will get a lot of such films which show Himalayan landscapes, which show uh, Chotonapur uh, plateau landscapes. Uh, is suppose in Bengali Chader Pahar, right? What an amazing savanna landscape story. So there are a lot of films that we can discuss with our students. And basically the whole idea is to draw them more into geography, to uh, think of geography, to make them think of geography wherever they look at, whatever they look at. So they grow to like the subject even more. And so that helps their studies because they take to it much more naturally, right? So apart from this, now, again, since we are looking at a digital domain teaching for the next, uh, say, six months or one year, there are a lot of things that we can do in terms of digital assignments. For example, I'll show you some examples. Uh, there are a lot of digital assignments like SimCity. SimCity is basically a 3D city building software. It's a game. But this is also a game that is used by the School of Planning and Architecture in Bhopal and New Delhi, where they give their students this game. And they tell their students, why don't you go ahead and play this game? Design a city for us. If you can design the city well, that means you have learned the urban geography principles that we have taught you in class. So similarly, we can give a software, a game software to our students. There are a lot of MOOCs available, massive open online courses. Then there are websites that are there, for example, BSG, British Society for Geomorphology, NPTEL, which is made by the IITs. So there are a lot of MOOCs that are available for monitoring climate change looking at the ge geography of world cultures. And this is the geography, this is the SimCity or City Skyline softwares where a student can you know, design a city. And if the city works well, that means they have followed all the urban principles. So you don't really have to think after teaching him or her that did, did he or she grasp the policies of urban planning? Did he, or she, did, did he or she understand the various outlines of urban geography? Because if they have been able to design a city in the software domain, that means they have been able to understand the urban geography principles. So not only are they learning the theory, not only are they not only are they understanding it, but they're also playing it out, modeling it, and under, you know, uh, creating something by their own hands. And there are a lot of NPTEL videos that are available by the IIT group. There is the British Society for Geomorphology. If you go to their website, you'll find a lot of teaching learning resources. And there are a lot of MOOCs available. All of them are free by various universities around the world. If you give these links to your students and you tell them that, you know, take one month, and I will give you a quiz at the end of the month and we will see how you have done on such a move. And I'm sure you know, through learning interactively, they will enjoy the learning process. And uh, not only will you teach things from your syllabus, you will teach them things outside your little bits of your syllabus and that will help grow their general knowledge because general knowledge basically comes from geography, right? And her whole idea about teaching them geography is not to keep them within the strict confines of the subject or syllabus uh, domains, right? Then the another, other things that I wanted to say is that 10 years ago, we got a big revolution in this country, 10, 15 years ago, that we have to bring RS and GIS. The GIS and RS domains are coming up, jobs are coming up, our students have to be pushed into that. And that is a good thing. But today, there is a next challenge, Python, R, right, for statistics, machine learning. 
CQDAS, that is the uh, qualitative data analysis uh, softwares, not just, not just quantitative analysis, but qualitative data analysis, text mining, documentary mining, and FOSS, that is free and open source software applications. We must find space in our syllabus to put in some bits of Python learning, R learning. There are some universities in West Bengal that are already doing this as part of their undergraduate and postgraduate course. If we want to go ahead, in, if we want to go into app development, small geographic app development, greater applications of GIS, we must start uh, teaching our students and also learn ourselves Python, little bit of machine learning, qualitative data analysis, text mining. These things must go into the practical components of our syllabus. Next is have regular class discussions on the next step. Many a time a student comes into BSc and master's course, but they don't really know where they are going next. So what if once a month we have a profiling of a, a next step that is, OK, you are passing out bachelor's course. Uh, next week, we will discuss about three other institutions that you can go for learning. For example, example, say in India, School of Planning and Architecture, a Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Or we can talk about uh, a CPT uh, that is planning university in Ahmedabad. So if we keep uh, one period a month where we will talk about the attributes of different institutes that students can go to after their BSc and MSc courses, that will really help them. They can tailor their learning in that way. They can aim for those ideas. Then the big uh, you know mistake that we make usually, we make very nice syllabuses, right? We make very good syllabi. But do we really interact with people from the government? Do we really interact with people from the government or the from the corporate industry and say that what are the kind of people you want to employ? Tell me the skills you want. I will put those skills into my syllabus so that when I uh, certify a student is passing out, he or she goes and shows you the certificate. You know that they have learned exactly those skills that you want and directly employable to the industry. We talk a lot about how, you know, uh, geographers can get employment in so many areas. But like Sir was saying, Survey of India has very, very less geographers. The GIS domain has very, very less geographers, which is very sad. Why? Because our courses are not tailor made as per the demands of those companies, as per the demands of those government policies. And unless we do that, and unless we bring those government officials into our classrooms, allow them to give a lecture, make them take a class, they will also not know that geography pursues these things. They will think of geography either only as a social science or mainly as a humanities realm, and they will restrict our entry into the other uh, sciences or other geosciences, earth sciences area where we can really go and contribute. Into. So we must have this government and industry interface, call people from those areas to give lectures in our classes, and then ask them what are, let, let us keep 20% of our syllabus, you know, uh, for them to input that let them make one small module so that we can directly address their employment concerns and skills. And so our students get a higher chance of employment in those areas. So these are some of the careers that are applicable, right? So why don't we call some of them? The other issue that I wanted to say is that, you know, the other uh, flaw that we geographers have, the last, the last two that I want to say, I'll take two more minutes. The last two that we have is, we must make space for internships today. Uh, Dr. Priyanka, we can take we can take five five six minutes more. No issue. We okay, can sir, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, today, uh, today, lot of companies, lot of IITs, ICERs, they are providing internships, right? For example, my university has a two month break in the summer when students can go for internships outside. So they look at the websites of IIT, ICER, NIO, Goa, and these areas. What are the adver advertised internships? And if a student goes for an internship, the university gives them that uh, attendance. The university gives because they are doing some academic course. So what happens? A student goes for an internship in these areas. They make some new contacts. They come back, finish their bachelor's or master's course. Then they can go for another internship. Or because they have made some prior contacts, then they can go for a PhD or higher learning or some uh, project related job in those particular areas. So we must start to create a two month uh, gap during our uh, teaching courses. And we have this ability with our semester system that our students can go and hunt for internships. Every department should create a database of internships. What are the internships available in different organizations in, uh, in and around India? What are the grants available for doing this? Because many a time a student would be paid to do this, paid to go for internships, right? So if you can list these internships, if you can uh, make our students go for these internships, it, it increases their domain. It increases their outlook into geography and they don't don't think of geography just as go to a class, read a textbook and that's it. They're exposed to the wider world. The last point, point that I want to say is that, you know, geographers are at times very inward looking. We don't really interact with people from public policy. We don't interact with geologists or ecologists 
or people from the other social science so, uh, social sciences like sociology and economic and uh, you know political science we need to bring them into our classrooms and we need to go to their classrooms because only through proper interaction with them can we have such you know multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary both research as well as careers for our students our students must know for example the geography students must know that how does he or she measure up versus a geology student so then they will be able to understand what are the extra things that they need to develop our students need to know that if they are doing human geography and even a sociology student is doing human geography what are the difference in learning that they have so that you know they can develop themselves right so these were the points of submission that i had uh, because uh, the time is limited. but uh, these are the 11 points that i wanted to put in front of everybody to uh, better our abilities to better the facilities that we give to our students right? thank you so much uh, if there are any queries i'll answer them thank you yes uh, so uh, 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 there is a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm you have created to your presentation uh, anybody from our panel have any queries to uh, dr patel if not that i have some to share something for you uh the main problem with our syllabi not only in geography but the many discipline that we try to include the global perspective into it but we generally miss out the what is regional consideration or regional context like in geography whether many many things we find and that that is uh, totally mismatch with, with the uh, uh, regional context in into a syllabi like suppose you are talking about the the business model so we may bring business model of the united states or some very high fi but we forget how our rural people in uh, self sustaining uh, a village is self sustaining in that context so the very relevant point that we bring out that, that there is there is a need of contextualizing the syllabi uh, particularly the geography so if you have any experience in that and second second one is second one is the uh, the role of the field trip like the field survey we used to go so you can find the gradation of field trip is there in the first year hardly for a one day and the third year it is a week long kind of and in many places there is no scope of the field trip as well so it is not necessary to go long distance for the full trip go to the himalaya but better we can arrange even in the vicinity because the geography is the subject where the nature is laboratory where you just open your window and there lot of material is there to make your student so there is also need to incorporate a robust field trip based syllabi Uh, into geography so uh, what you are say priyank you you have to unmute yourself Pri priyank unmute yourself uh, right i agree yeah, with yeah. you fully on i agree with you fully on the field trip aspect because field can be field can be around the college also around the college also right and uh, we can we can do a lot of good work in that way what i want to say about the regional aspect is uh, there are now we have because we are going to a four year possibly bachelor's new education policy so we have uh, greater chance of putting in more regional geography or regional aspect papers so our students are both aware of the local area issues as well as the national issues right but field is very very important to geography i agree my concern is the macro level like we are talking about the uh, meandering of the river and we right. take example from the colorado river why not to take example the river that is going in vicinity of our uh, our uh, we should and, and, we, and we do that and that and that is why that is why we need so, to show the recent recent research papers that have come out from our area the mississippi river river project colorado river project but we don't have there is a lot of dam in this harkand in the bihar in the uh, in vicinity of your your location so that that context i want to yes, bring into should, that we should we should so, keep both the examples right so it's really a very wonderful i mean the, if chair has to say something uh, on the on our on his presentation
ओके सो देर इज सेइंग दैट मॉन सेंस सुकृति लक्षण मींस योर प्रेजेंटेशन हैज बीन अप्रूव्ड विद अ वेरी हाई रिगार्ड सो थैंक यू मिस्टर पटेल फॉर योर वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड कॉन्टेक्सुअलाइजिंग द थिंग्स नाउ आवर द वी हैव द नेक्स्ट स्पीकर डॉक्टर तापस पाल डॉक्टर पाल इज हियर डॉक्टर तापस पाल यस वंडरफुल सो एनी टेक्निकल डिफिकल्टी एट योर इन just unmute okay. yourself and, uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, and ha- ha- yes I- now the dice dice uh, is in your hand so welcome am i audible sir yes yes you are am i audible sir okay okay yes, thank you, you sir great welcome uh, in this discussion i would like to share my uh, some some uh, uh, concepts that uh, that have been already added in paradigm of geography Uh, uh the khun's paradigm yes all you know the khun's paradigm that is the uh, paradigm of geographical thought but i think uh, that was developed uh, around 1980 decade but we have already passed uh, more than 30 40 years so in this phase what type of paradigm has been developed in geographical studies so there are lot of concepts have been added in our geographical studies that is Uh, uh the application of geography the uh, the innovation of digital geography and uh, recently all we are going towards the sustainable geography sustainable concepts united nations has already uh, discussed and pointed the, our target that is un 2013 target that we have to achieve sustainable development before 2030 so all and most of the geographers are doing uh, their work on on sustainable development and their research uh, in phd or postdoc they are they are connecting their concept and research with sustainable develop, development and the sustainability of our earth so the term sustainable is very much important uh, right now so most of the research are doing uh, doing in uh, to to our to our sustainability concept so at first uh, number 1 uh, i have not prepared any uh, uh, slide show because sir i would like to share my view point because uh, this is a platform in this way we can enrich our knowledge at first we have to get our at first we have to up, up, uh, enrich our knowledge then we can apply this all all we want we are not discussing the point that how we can get the sustainable development my point uh, concept my point of view that is that sustainable if you want to get sustainable development then at first your thinking should be sustainable you have to practice a sustainable thinking in your daily life then you can get the sustainable development goals that means the 17 different goals of sustainable development so number one number one point is sustainable thinking is important to achieve sustainable development this is my this is this is one of the points of my discussion number 2 right now all we are going towards the digitalization and digitalization in geography we are using gis we are using uh, remote sensing techniques we are using satellite imagery aerial photographs gps etc blah blah drone etc okay all are good we are digitizing our subject that means geography so right now a digital geography or the emerging of digital geography has been added in our geography so the e pedagogy has been started for learning teaching learning process this is number 3 e pedagogy concept because all we are using youtube online teaching and whatsapp google uh, meet zoom webex and e patshala swam prabha mooks these all are the part of our e pedagogy so number 3 is e pedagogy is an emerging part of our geography number 4 that means uh, the sustainable geography i have introduced this term that is sustainable geography why i, I am introducing this term that is sustainable geography because right now most of the research and the discussion at the part and the phd thesis and postdoc mphil all of the dissertation most of them are going towards are they are trying to adding the sustainable development concept in their research so our our uh, in another case our teaching and learning all are go, all are uh, being attached with sustainable development concept number 4 uh, i have introduced another another thinking in uh, 
well being geography all we all we know that well being geography yes it is very popular term right now because uh, most of the researchers and all we are want the well being uh, approach to introduce more in our geographical studies so in this way we are applying digital I think there is some net technical issue at uh, Dr. Sorry, yes, networking problem. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, yeah, please, no issue. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry, sir, for networking problem. Sir. Sorry, sir. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, another thing that is the new uh, point number five that, that I would like to share with this uh, online digital platform new development. All we know that development and growth both are not same, but now development has been converted into neo development. Why I have added this neo the term neo because now the human resource is being used through digital platform, and for this the human resource is being using in form of e human resource because now. If you are you are accessing your internet, if you have the ability to access your internet, if you have the ability to access your uh, laptop, computer, or digital world, then you can you can use your digital knowledge to nourish and further the geographical studies. So, neo development concept has been already generated. And most important thing, geography is being considered as a holistic geography and the multidisciplinary geography geography is considering is considering being a being a uh, multidisciplinary geography because uh, national education policy all you know about the national education policy yes yes are you hearing my sound sir am i audible sir am i audible okay okay thank you sir all we know about the national education policy 2020 the draft of the national education policy so according to national education policy anybody can do their research uh, in any discipline and uh, one thing ha uh, uh, has been already added that is idc idc the the part of idc has, has been already added in our curriculum so geography is going towards multidisciplinary geography more Though we know that geography is uh, related with different subjects, but in recent time, geographers, the geography and geographers are not mainly confined into geomorphological or geological or climatological studies. But now, geography is being treated as multidisciplinary geography. That means multidisciplinary in geography and geography in interdisciplinary. This type of uh, approaching has been already started. And this all uh, another thing uh, I would like to share that is I have introduced another thinking in my uh, abstract on the paper that is e feelings. All we are accessing, all we are uh, using WhatsApp, Facebook, chatting, Messenger, uh, LinkedIn, etc. That means the uh, uh, digital platform. So uh, once uh, you, uh, different type of uh, celebration can be arranged to, uh, on the basis of the face to face human interaction. But right now, all type of interactions are through digital platform. You are sharing your uh, emotion through and using different emoji. Right? So your feelings, the feeling which is, which is directly connected with the population geography, human resource, human and population culture. So feeling has been converted into e feeling. This all because. We are we are passing through e society or e civilization. M mostly, it is related with the pandemic situation and the after pandemic situation. The concept of e feelings and the e society or e civilization are are are, are, are coming in our society, our virtual society. So this all can be the uh, new the, the, the platform to do new research in geography and geographical study. These all are my uh, approach that I have already shared. Thank you to all. Thank you to chairman, co-chairman, rapporteur, and moderators, and also the uh, the college 
authority and dr smile also thank you so thank you dr pal you bring lot of new terminology and very that is very catchy also so there is always a very critical importance of the acronyms and the new new terminology in academics but now it is also widely applicable widely used in our public discourse so certainly it is going to help us and you brought uh, one thing that um, uh, every thesis every dissertation whatever topic you choose people incorporate sustainability so i would like to uh, add something that it is these are not the this the knowledge domain geography is not a subject now it is more than that it is methodology for the survival it is methodology whatever you do if you don't have the sense of the nature if you are not courteous to other nature we do not understand the natural flow and dynamics whatever you do you are not going to survive at all so it is like the if you don't know computer we are not going to survive in this knowledge era similarly if you are not i mean the nature oriented if you do not understand the natural dynamics whatever business you do we are not going to survive so very rightly very rightly you pointed out this issue so any any yeah. input from uh, panel or whoever there yes uh, we have uh, uh, ashish kumar sen sir please bring your so, point uh, actually actually i have been tempted to say something uh, from Great, the, sir. Uh, uh, discussions uh, 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 and panel and and, and also Uh, sir, we have just now mentioned about ecology. Actually, uh, the issue with the geography is that uh, two pronged uh, attack to our own subject. The one part is that of uh, to eliminate uh, a lot of popular misconceptions remaining among the geography still yet, and the other thing is that what should be the uh, best methodological uh, uh, model is that we should take to solve any problem because you know that there are a lot of software for example in case of multivariate analysis where we find sps asx stat and so on and so forth but one thing is that uh, uh, there is no such mentioning about when uh we should apply the centroid method of factor analysis when we should apply the principal component analysis when we should apply the maximum likelihood analysis and so on so that will have to be decided by the geographers themselves otherwise the results will not come uh, in the two cents second thing is that again uh, pointing out one thing that there are very simple uh, statistical analysis of say z test t test and so on and so forth but you know that when we are uh, inserting all the uh, data in the computer and with the help of spss or excel stat or any other software we can quickly find out the results but that may give some very wrong uh, result with respect to the proper application so what i mean to say that along with the uh, development of sustainability concept along with the development of professor pian patel has rightly pointed out about the reading of right. uh, so many books new books old books research papers etc etc um, uh, we should also uh, aim at uh, deciding the real uh, methods that should be uh, ideal for getting the uh, true result otherwise it will not give you because we cannot right now uh, apply factor analysis for any kind of data we we should not apply principal component for uh, so, all system data uh, very very, very very relevant observation sir and about the statistics there is a saying that there is a lie and there is a statistic so it depend upon who if without i mean the interdisciplinary understanding if anybody uh, treat with the data then the result might be very I mean, astonishing 
So thank you very much for your input. Now uh, this is time to invite uh, Dr. Ajnarul Islam. Uh, mm, I hope I pronounce it correctly. Doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Please. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, I take this opportunity first to uh, thank you, the organizing committee, especially Dr. M. D. Smile. Please, sir. Visible. Hello. No, no visible. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, <clears throat> I take this opportunity to thank uh, the organizing committee, especially Dr. M. D. Smile, uh, Abdul Dewan Goni College. Uh, they have organized such a nice program, uh, geography as a discipline, opportunities and challenges. And since early morning, uh, I have uh, attended several lectures and I uh, <laughs> co-chaired a session with Professor Mukhopadhyay, Mola Mukhopadhyay. And uh, I heard, uh, I had the opportunity to attend some lectures uh, uh, given by uh, Professor Ranjan Basu. Uh, he discussed about the uh, um, geographical uh, problems, uh, scope, opportunities, especially uh, uh, in the context of the new uh, education policy uh, uh, adopted by government of India. And uh, Professor Gyashuddin Siddiqui, he has uh, rightly pointed out regarding uh, the uh, problems, geographical problems in the uh, context of the evolution of geographical thought. So many problems geography has encountered. And uh, basically, uh, geography has suffered from uh, different problems like the identity crisis problem. Uh, so many people say geography has nothing of its own. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the uh, different types of the dichotomies and uh, dualisms uh, have been there in geography. And uh, ultimately, uh, geography has been uh, established as a uh, farm discipline and uh, that has so many areas to focus, that has so many areas to nurture, that has so many areas for the students, for the researchers and the, for the uh, planners and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the common uh, people uh, after all. Uh, Professor Siddiqui has pointed out uh, the uh, scope of uh, uh, the geography uh, to protect the environment and uh, the forest, land, all those resources, how can we manage? So the role of geography uh, is very crucial, he has rightly pointed out. Similarly, <clears throat> Uh, Professor uh, Atikur Rahman in his uh, lecture, how the geospatial science uh, can be a, a very uh, good tool uh, to the study of uh, geographical uh, research and understanding. He has rightly pointed out the different types of the remote sensing data and uh, the, uh, different types of remote sensing, optical, uh, microwave, and how they can be uh, uh, usefully employed uh, to explore the resources uh, like the water resources, land resources, forest resources. He has very um, uh, 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 fine, uh, uh, explicitly explored all those issues. And uh, uh, ultimately, I was hoping that uh, Professor D.K. Nayak would be uh, talking on a, such a nice topic, geography and opportunity lost. But uh, ultimately, I waited a long and I was uh, co-chairing that session. But due to the technical reasons, I could not uh, hear uh, that lecture. I don't know that whether that lecture has been uh, or not. Uh, but really, it's a very, very touchy topic, geography and opportunity lost. Uh, I would uh, say uh, something. I don't know uh, whether the tune would be matching with Professor D.K. Nyx or not. Uh, but I will be uh, surely saying about that. So many opportunities, so many scopes are there in geography, not only in India, but also abroad. Uh, different types of the positions, different types of the jobs geographers can, uh, can have, uh, basically, uh, due to their uh, specialized uh, trainings and due to their different skills, like the analytical skill. If we, if we give any kind of the data, or the Maps, uh, being a geographer, uh, we can interpret very easily compared to the other disciplines people. Similarly, the critical thinking, whenever uh, even uh, at the uh, graduation level, even in the BSc or BA level, uh, the students of the geography often ask you to prepare a, a questionnaire and we have to visit a field work. So whenever uh, we have to prepare a questionnaire, we have to have some critical thinking in our mind so that we can set some uh, 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 questions or, and a good questionnaire. So this actually uh, 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 confers on, uh, upon us a critical mind and the critical thinking on it. 
similarly uh, being a geographer everyone has to uh, maybe during this pandemic situations we are uh, adept with the uh, systems uh, uh, arising out of this uh, uh, covid-19 pandemic uh, we are using the laptop we are using the mobile we are using the computers so easily right now but uh, geographers since the very beginning um, before even before the uh, this uh, pandemic situation uh, they were um, very much uh, familiar with the gis and bar and cartography surveying and all those actually re uh, requires the computer skill so uh, being a geography student uh, they are very much adept uh, with the basics of computer at least similarly geographers geographers uh, have other two uh, special qualities like the writing skill because they have to write a dissertation a term paper whatever so writing skill are also developed uh, being a geography student maybe the other disciplines people have all these qualities uh, but geography people have this kind of the speciality they have the uh, some kind of the training or some kind of the experiences to have all those qualities uh, like uh, their analytical skill critical thinking computer skill writing and the communication skill because uh, geography students have to uh, face different types of the viva voci practical examination viva voci whatever so acquiring all those skills uh, geographers have so many uh, so, so, so many career options so many career options uh, so often the people uh, those who are not geographer or those who are not uh, pursuing their career in geography they often joke that uh, geography means coloring in coloring in means uh, so many uh, characters geographers actually acquire, acquire or so many uh, qualities they have those, those so many qualities they possess that uh, in different competitive examinations in india as well as in abroad they crack very easily uh, in teaching opportunities um, in uh, administration in research in india and abroad they have the ample scope even iit nit iisc isr csr lab upsc civil services many of the students um, though uh, they do not belong to geography background they also uh, take the geography as their uh, career or the profession so geography actually gives us so many thing as a disciplines but uh, 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 one thing I, I will I will surely sh uh, say about it that geography uh, has uh, uh, so many career options in abroad. Like uh, we can get the cartography position, cartographer, uh, climate change analysis, climatologist, geomorphologist, emergency management specialist, GIS specialist, hydrologist, location analyst, meteorologist, pollution analyst, remote sensing analyst, soil conservist, uh, conservationist, uh, surveyor, town planner, water uh, uh, conservation officer. Uh, these actually uh, are very uh, purely from uh, the geographic learning and the geographic nurturing. However, in the allied disciplines to geography, like the environment and development, we can also have some uh, um, uh, positions, uh, some positions like landscape architect, because we being uh, the um, uh, persons who can under, uh, who can perceive the physical landscape as well as the social landscape very well, so we can be a good uh, landscape architect, because holistic landscape concept takes the consideration both the physical aspect and the social aspect. Similarly, we can be also uh, ha having uh, uh, can some uh, program like uh, the water quality scientist, uh, uh, waste manager officer. We can this type of the positions. We can also uh, uh, can can get this. Similarly, the society and the settlement regarding this particular aspect, we can have some uh, uh, also have some uh, uh, opportunities, career opportunities like the environmental consul uh, consultant, even human resource manager, transport planner, whatever. So uh, 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 apart from that, geography has also something to do culture and uh, uh, one of the popular um, uh, professions uh, tour guide a tour guide uh, though um, here i mean uh, in indian context uh, not from geography background essentially other people also do but in the, the anglo american traditions uh, uh, the tour guide being a geographer they have much more opportunity by dint of all those qualities which i have mentioned because geographers acquire all those qualities so the uh, tour guide or the exhibition organizer exhibition leader and they can do all those things very easily uh, but one uh, thing i will say what professor dk naik uh, intended most probably intended to say uh, uh, geographers uh, uh, opportunity loss geographers opportunity loss so why we being the geographer we have so many opportunities but we are facing the challenges day by day i would like to point out the three major challenges in the geographic domain the first is the 
I am restricting restricting the term not to all, but some people, some geography learner or the some geography teachers that pretending to be a master of all contents. That means jack of all trades, good for nothing. But this is this is the trend uh, which is being adopted by a segment of the teachers or the learners or whatever that I know everything. But this is not possible to know everything. I would be knowing because of the very basic nature of the subject. I will be having knowledge in physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology. On the contrary, uh, in from the social science discipline, I know sociology. I know economics, I know political science, I know uh, the uh, government planning, whatever. So being an individual acquiring knowledges in there in all the disciplines is quite impossible. It's not at all possible. So I should be very much specialized on a particular aspect. Maybe I don't know. I don't know uh, the new uh, education policy uh, the government has proposed uh, for four-year uh, UG program. I don't know whether uh, there, there, there will be uh, some kind of the specialized aspect. Even after having the four-year program, there would be a one-year PG uh, degree. Maybe that one-year PG degree, I don't know whether it would be a specialized aspect of geography. That means simultaneously after a certain limit, we have to be either physical geographer, we have to be either uh, or uh, human geographer. I know everything if you have to specialize and if you have to have the jobs in the Anglo-European tradition at least, you have to be specialized in some modules in some areas of your expertise. Otherwise, what would be a general character? Uh, then the general character uh, would be definitely of some help in some areas, but majority of the areas need some specialized training and the skills. So, for example, if you wish to be a physical geographer, you must uh, be knowing uh, of basics of the mathematics, uh, programming languages, uh, 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 modeling, etc., statistical tools, etc. On the other hand, if you wish to be a human geographer in the Anglo-American Anglo traditions, at least uh, that you should be having some proper knowledge in the human behavior, understanding and human behavior modeling. So all those uh, things uh, are uh, very much required. Uh, I really afraid when uh, Dr. Ismail called me uh, that um, uh, we are going to organize a webinar, national webinar. Uh, then I, I, I told him that uh, don't do on COVID-19 uh, related. If it is COVID-19 related, I will not be there. Because so many things have been explored uh, by geographic people, non-geography people on COVID-19 and especially I do feel that being a geographer, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe uh, several people have uh, 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 some uh, that kind of qualities uh, that uh, COVID-19, maybe, maybe because they are concerned with the biogeography, they are concerned with the uh, ecology, uh, ecological perspective of the geography, they may have the training of their area. But uh, the uh, common layman, they will be speaking on the COVID-19 uh, and uh, COVID-19 is uh, uh, increasing in such a rate, but the rate of increase of the organizing the uh, webinar uh, is surpassing the COVID-19 growth rate. So that is really, uh, uh, and uh, on the one hand, I will be carrying out uh, research work on COVID-19 by a geographer without basic knowledge in uh, medical sciences or uh, 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 similar issues. On the other hand, I will be exploring the social and the economic problems without the basic knowledge of the sociological or the economic theories. So it is really uh, impossible for an individual to grasp all the knowledges of a particular disciplines. So what we need, what would, what is required uh, after a certain height, after a certain elevation, we have to be uh, segregated into the human geography and the physical geography. Otherwise, uh, the, this kind of the notion that geography is a holistic discipline or the synthetic discipline. Sometimes people take this term uh, and uh, they often interpret that uh, as we are geographer, we have to know everything. Yes, we have to know everything at a certain level but you have to be specialized after that yeah let's say for example if you wish to be a geomorphologist you have you should have some uh, different kind of the training from that of a, a food security manager or, or from that of a sociology uh, sociological uh, uh, um, um, behavioral analysis so that is the perspective that uh, we should not make a mess of all of it
and we should be specialized so this is one of the major challenges and the one of the major trends that is if, if it is the if it is the trend i will call it as a trend in the developing nations especially like the india the, where we have a tendency to learn uh, all those things all together this is not impossible this is not possible though the anglo american tradition geography people one of uh, some of my students though who have the a career in, in the anglo european uh, traditions in the university of leeds in the university of manchester and the kansas state, state university uh, whenever they uh, visit all those countries uh, they first impart them training on programming languages because we have some limitations we have some limitations but actually what do we do uh, there are some uh, already uh, programs are fixed and we run as it is but there are some uh, options if we know the programming language i can change the options and i can uh, make it more uh, use it uh, in a more the uh, challenges uh, which is often encountered by a geographer that is the lack of employability lack of employability means uh, basically we are uh, more theoretically uh, focused than its practical application uh, just a uh, few time a uh, few, few minutes back you and uh, priyanga were telling about the field orientation of the subject really it's a very good uh, thing that everything and i do know that priyanga most probably uh, at the weekend uh, or at least twice a month he took the students uh, to visit the field whatever he has learned he, he has taught the uh, students he took the students and go to the field and he uh, he just explained these are the theoretical knowledge which we have acquired from the text from the lectures and you just try to apply all those things to explain how they exist and what are the processes happening over there that is very fantastic so otherwise this this can enhance the um, uh, enhance the application uh, orientation of a geographer this can enhance the employability of a geographer because we have to be employable and if we wish to be employable obviously what is required that is the application of the theoretical knowledge into the practical field and that the, and if we, and you will be see, seeing that geography being a geographer we often see uh, at least this is a trend in west bengal i am looking for west bengal school service commission job and then unless the west bengal school service commission advertisement come we are sitting we are sitting similarly the, the, the this specific type of the job uh, west bengal school service commission or public service commission job the, we should not be like that we should be getting our training and we should be applying our training in different fields and nowadays the world is going to be privatized maybe at 20 years later or so on there will be no government jobs in india also so what we have to do we have to do we have to get the training we have to get the skill instead of getting the theoretical perspective only because the company or the uh, the industry they will they will they will uh, assess your uh, skill instead of your certificate uh, uh, that means hands on training which is much more required and uh, other other uh, other challenge of, of, her, uh, of a geographer that is having a non mathematical background this is one of the major challenges sometimes uh, we provide the students ba degree bsc degree ma degree msc degree uh, and uh, and it has a major correlation with the mathematics uh, whether he or she has studied uh, mathematics at 12th standard or not or uh, like like that some, some of the universities uh, they do they are mo more lenient while uh, delivering their degrees still mathematical background mathematics is very uh, much required uh, to be a uh, geographer because whether you wish to be a uh, uh, human geographer or physical geographer whatever the basic mathematics which is much required otherwise we will not be able to simulate we will not be able to model we will not be able to go for quantification because the character of the subject which has been transformed from a mere descriptive character to quantitative character again after, after the quantitative revelations especially so the basic mathematics in my in in, in my university alia university geography department one of my phd scholar he didn't have the uh, mathematics at 12 standard but he uh, learned calculus 
differential integral, Fuji, AHP, all those methodologies he has uh, 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 learned from the YouTube module and he has applied in his PhD thesis. So what I'm trying to say, uh, if we don't have the mathematics at real standard level, uh, need not to be sorry or uh, need not to be hopeless, need not to be distressed, just try to learn the mathematics because certificate will say something, but your work experience, just like the uh, um, um, uh, movie, uh, three years movie, uh, uh, Amir Khan, the, he has um, he had the, uh, given that degree to uh, Rancho. He, he didn't have the degree, uh, but he had uh, so many patents, uh, so many uh, um, uh, scientific inventions uh, with him. So that is the thing. You you, you need a degree, but beyond that what you need a training what you need a skill because the uh, world requires uh, more you to be a uh, practically oriented you have to have some skill and so that's why you need some mathematics if you don't uh, have the uh, basic mathematics knowledge in your grip so uh, the opportunities which i have mentioned uh, it would not be possible to explore in its fullest ex extent because in some uh, areas the people often say geography has so many areas yes i do agree with those people that geography has so many areas to do but the problem is that geographers can do in civil engineering geographers can do in biology geographers can do in environmental planning, uh, planning and management but one thing which is required he or she needs some kind of training and obviously and he or she needs some kind of the uh, basic two things one is the mathematic language another is the english language english language means if you wish to be in abroad you have some uh, you need some you require some skills in english because a majority of the papers often we see especially in the anglo uh, in the indian context that our first language is not english so that the problem is that uh, the open paper got rejected on the basis of the language because any standard journal they often seek good quality english even in the job market you need some uh, english uh, uh, certificate uh, courses like the TOEFL, gre uh, ILETS, or whatever uh, so uh, if we uh, wish to be uh, or if we if you wish to explore all those careers or if we wish to grab all those jobs which i have mentioned and the career of a geographer may be expanded by imbibing all those qualities thank you thank you yeah that's great uh, it is a really very relevant discussion i mean you bring out very touchy and the critical points related to the geography, what geography is facing today Certainly, there is no doubt that um, uh, discipline play a major role. I mean, the disciplinary boundary must be fixed. That is the current understanding of anything. And we we have you shown you, you suggested that uh, there must there must not be missing of the different things in that. Certainly, we are agree with you. There is no doubt about it. But uh, to think about all these aspects, we have to think about the problem. Why you are studying geography? Then you are solving the problem, and then yes. our problem is a discipline oriented. Yes, so, yes. So, such as if you bring a, a, a topic of debate, I mean, whether it should be the disciplinary boundary is fixed or whether it should be diluted, and what are the context of this dilution, at what extent it should be uh, form or it should be open. So, certainly, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Ajnarul Islam. Uh, for your uh, wonderful um, uh, um, contextualizing the contemporary problem what the geography is facing. So, uh, my, uh, any, uh, among the panel, if uh, any point is there, so we can have a uh, discussion now. Yeah, now. I, I would like to say one thing. Uh, sure. Here. I, I really agree with what Ajnarul said, that uh, it does not matter whether a student comes with all mathematical skills. If they are able to develop it, then, then they can really do good work. And that is something that is very much required. He made a very, very good point. And the same thing goes about English, right? We must be able to, through five years, they must be able to pick up the English writing and learning skills also. So he made a very, very good point. Basically, these two things are not only required in geography. For anything, quantitative understanding is very much relevant, even humanity. 
if you were in the because it it is provide the logic mathematics is nothing i mean it is not the calculus it is not the differential it is not the statistics but it gives you the argument the logic and the inference what you are going to bring it out so it is relevant for every discipline particularly geography it is more so thank you very much uh, now uh, 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 i am going to invite uh, uh, our speaker dr sandeepan ghosh dr ghosh can you hear me dr sandeepan ghosh there is a complete silence so better to uh, invite uh, dr rukshana dr sandeepan ghosh dr rukshana no they are tempting us to discuss among ours all the four presentation are really wonderful so we can discuss a lot on that topic but uh, i i have certain limitation i have to invite all dr misra dr mukund misra no uh uh dr ataul islam hello uh, am i audible yeah yeah sure 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 okay. thank you very much that you join <laughs> okay. great thank you so yeah. much uh, uh, i would like to thank uh, the organizers and uh, especially dr ismail uh, first of all uh, i'm a very uh, wrong guy in this conference because geography is not my field although i am here and i listening the all panelists and it is excellent and excellently explain the what is the demand uh, uh, of the geography so i am basically from the different field like uh, i am basically computational chemist so actually i was exploring little bit the how can actually this uh, geography can be applied in the health sciences huh? because i am not much aware about this your all these thing so actually uh, as, as you know that is because the every subject huh, the subject should not be like uh, uh, that is gain the knowledge it should be the practical hmm. should be apply in the real life every subject should be for the betterment of the human being that is the actual purpose so how can a geography can be applied in the health sciences actually so as as i as i told you that is i am a computational chemist i actually dealing with some uh, discovery of the uh, uh, drugs or molecules so actually the you know that the drugs or molecules actually the region specific the activity of that molecules are region specific so here the geography can actually play important role to study how which area and which region is suitable for what type of molecules because a lot of molecules are there uh, some molecules are effective some are not effective so data are there so that data can be actually used uh, and region wise because the, i think the geographer is you know uh, know the uh, the utmost of the region regionality of the world Uh, i think uh, nobody can understand uh, like a geographer so this is one of the platform and also i find a recent uh, actually uh, study uh, one of the panelists said that is uh, the 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 webinar should not be you know covid 19 but i i little bit uh, with respect i do respect i actually disagree on that because geography geographer also can actually give very very crucial input on to control the covid 19 recently i found one paper the example very good paper and they actually studied the italy why the italy actually hit it maximally first after the china china it is originally china but after that it is actually maximally hit the italy why italy actually favorite for the corona Uh, initially then after that they studied uh, all over the world uh, so they studied they use the different geographical concept to actually find out what are the reason behind to spread the corona in italy so this kind of discussion uh, uh, so this is the one pandemic uh, we don't know what will the next pandemic so we should be ready uh, this pandemic actually listen us actually uh, actually taught us that is any time anything can be happen uh, and that we have to actually prepare for that so i think 
in my very small knowledge geography understanding that is geographer can actually use in a huge walk in the pandemic or the health science level to this sort of I, i'd like to thanks again all of you and thank you so much so uh, uh, thank you dr islam for very brief but very relevant point particularly in the time of pandemic where i mean and uh, and the, the, this is not new idea to integrate uh, health into geography because there is a separate i mean branch in not i i never heard the medical geography but it is medical geology is there where we talk about what are the geological consideration of a spread of many diseases across the continent and similarly i mean the geography uh, the expert may, may have i mean the idea about because it is geography is a space science so Definitely. and if you are dealing with the public health so now it become very relevant your your points is really very i mean the uh, need of time uh to explore out i mean the people are a lot of um, uh, people are working on the data set what you receive from the different region of the globe uh, their recovery rate their mortality rate their morbidity rate and their impact uh, their their uh, their like correlation with the different uh, locations different continent different climatic zones i mean the several theory has brought up broken up during the initial phase of the pandemic that uh, colder region has the more impact than compared to the tropical region but the long run these all theories have been vanished because there is no uh, data based validity so uh, i really looking for my one of my co moderator uh, uh, dr sunil saha i don't know so it is in fair um, uh, injustice not to engage him for this discussion dr sunil saha no so now i would like to invite dr sk mafizul haq i'm sorry if my pronunciation is not at par uh, dr sk mafizul haq okay so now i call all the panelists i again going to repeat the, the all the panelists dr sandeepan ghosh can i hear hear you Dr. Sandeepan Ghosh, Dr. Rukshana, Dr. Rukshana, no, Dr. Mukund Mishra, so. Uh, i think the, there there may be some technical issue at their end so we can have discuss we have time 10 minute more for the further discussion if you have any question a panelist have any discussion any point they can raise uh, uh, i would like to invite the chair first to have some then uh, co chair then ashish kumar sen sir is there so uh, 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 chair sir for you professor sati uh, please unmute yourself yes okay thank you very much and uh, actually my internet is almost exhausted so i wrote one message also but now it is okay. over uh, thanks all the presenters actually this all discussion by the panelist was actually very very uh, inciting and uh, it is all kind of this multidisciplinary actually so different ways they are talking because the geography is a multidisciplinary subject uh, definitely it has lots of scope in terms of the employment or in terms of the research teaching and all aspect but we have to see actually uh, the way yeah some 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 i think priyank told about the python or some other i don't know who talk about this python or machine learning this may not be so much suitable for a student of geography because we have or we have to we have to go to that way i don't know how much it is relevant for us. even we do not use the statistical tools completely for our research and we are also not able to use this uh, gis science for our research so that way and gis if you see the syllabi of uh, most of the universities and colleges in india 
it is it may be there but it is as a token no, general knowledge like this some some primary uh, things are there <coughs> the deep knowledge we don't have like this so my point of view is that i know that all these presenters the four presenters they have very good presentations they have very diverse uh, knowledge and diverse uh, this contents they have uh, printed for us but at the same time i don't know how you are going to shift a uh, paradigm shift for your uh, this traditional uh, syllabus to the new syllabus one of our uh, panelists also talk about that we have to go together from the old and with with collaboration from the old and the new together also i don't know how much it is going to be done and uh, um, uh, it is also very big task but in terms of the job also employment employability also in, in the field of research geography have lots of scope though there are many drawbacks also where we are stand as i told at the beginning where we are standing is also very, very difficult to say but internationally tomorrow i am going to present my one of the one one my my presentation on mountain geography and if you see mountain geography now there are more than 20 institutes they are on they are focused on mountain studies and mountain is geography is very fit for that so because geography is now there is also paradigm shift it changing from the traditional to new but at the same time we need to develop our syllabus in the, in that way and because it is now everything is coming from the delhi or at the national level and they are claiming that we are adopting this uh, we I, i hope that this will be also in the next or maybe in another discuss in another session we will discuss this how we can develop the curriculum or we can we can go for more employability in geography discipline at, at present yes yeah, though the geography is uh, a very important subject for civil services most of the students they take geography as a subject for appearing civil services a lot of scope here but at the same time at the same time we are lacking in the college system geography syllabus and geography institute teaching also teaching is one of the most important thing but i don't know how much the students learning now the, the books uh, the the textbooks or reference book they are very the relevant one the big big books nobody going to teach we have very short short is very short short uh, syllabus books or we have now different types of books coming for and we are getting only degree so we are not doing anything we are not in not all cases some 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 universities they are doing well and some students also getting well national international level but as a whole if you see the geography situation in india it is very critical and i hope that we will uh, think about this and i thank you here i thank you because my internet is almost exhausted i am taking leave and i i i leave from the moderator and also the um, uh, organizers and thank you very much unmute unmute sir okay, unmute okay yeah. sure sir so there is a challenge that how we are going to shift from the con conventional pedagogy to uh, modern pedagogy how to teach the geography and uh, we, our the first speaker has very i mean the successfully provide the platform of the, their different i mean the agendas how we can achieve the modern pedagogy problem is there but we have to under, uh, realize the uh, the need of the change then certainly we can achieve it so one of the speaker has bring out a very uh, contemporary uh, problem of geography that whether it should be uh, pocketed into the discipline or it should be messed up so and thank god to the different technology like the remote sensing and the gis the, it is really i mean the bring a very wonderful change that it is it is uh, the the people from the humanities or human geography are not less than using that what the uh, physical geographer used to so there is a wide spread use of the gis and remote sensing even in the human geography context so these are bridging the gap similarly the it tools uh, like the uh, cloud platform like the google earth engine 
I mean, it is a wonderful platform that whoever, I mean, the, whether it is from the human geography, whether they are people working on population, they are working on the flood migration, they are working on the uh, tsunami displacement, whoever, and, or uh, from the geomorphology, they are, they are using like anything and bringing out a very wonderful result. So uh, I can say the era, the modern era is the graveyard of the discipline. You are not, you have not only to get uh, interdisciplinary, but we have to inculcate the training and skill of the contradisciplinary aspect. You have to learn, think of the opposite, that, that you just take a problem and you will find that it is not a domain specific problem. Like the problem of flood, do you think it is a problem of uh, geomorphology? Of course it is, but it is also a problem of the human habitation. It is also a problem of the policy. So that's why there is a need to integrate or mess up the interdisciplinary or counterdisciplinary approach into then only we'll able to provide solution in the long term context. Now I can see Priyank uh, for uh, his uh, uh, point to be uh, discussed here. Please, Priyank. Yes, well, mobile the cable is going to be Yes, yes, you can. We can. I mean, the no, the points that have been made are fine. Uh, as regards uh, the putting the old and the new syllabus together, we are continuously redoing our syllabus. And some of the 11 points that I showed, my university has adopted because we make space for internships for students and uh, so that they can go outside and interact with people in both government panels and in uh, corporate industries. So if all colleges and industries, uh, universities can have internship slots two months every year, which can have gap between the semesters, that is one way. Also, we are we seek to provide additional classes in maths and English to students who feel they are weak. So uh, they can take that during the bachelor's and master's courses if required. So that skill is built up. And uh, my department also, what we did is on the weekends, for those students who are interested, we asked a computer science uh, person to come and demonstrate some computer language learning techniques. So students, uh, those who wish, they can take up that skill also. So, so uh, geography faculty members cannot do everything, but if we can take the help of our allied disciplines and we can create our job is to make a space in the routine and encourage our students, um, even if 20% of them go ahead with it, then that is a lot of gain. Thank you, uh, Dr. Patel. Uh, now I can see uh, Ashish Kumar Sen, sir, for some. Yes. So kindly, very brief, sir. This is because now I'm, I'm getting call from the organizer to uh, wind up the session. So please have your, I mean, the word okay. of wisdom. Uh, I, I want to uh, include one uh, area uh, where geographers should make thorough research. That is uh, my um, concept is that of ge geography beyond the art. It seems a very paradoxical statement, geography beyond the art. That doesn't mean that we, are, we should be beyond the art because we know with the development of planetary geomorphology, we can get a lot of information about the art. And you know that because of the very thin layer of atmosphere, uh, um, uh, we can, uh, of Mars, we can get a very clear group uh, Im imageries uh, of uh, the Mars. And from there, we can draw some very valuable uh, inferences and conclusions. Because you know that as early as 1974, uh, uh, Leno Platter took a rod, Conrad rod experiment and uh, uh, started uh, deducing the internal structure of the art. But instead, now uh, we are exposed to this uh, universe and we, we are getting very, very good pictures and images, and that will give us in the right track of. Uh, drawing inference about the art, which is very uh, where we can contribute to, where we the geographers can contribute uh, to a good uh, extent. Thank you. I, Thank you very much, sir. Uh, since you bring the uh, beyond the geographical understanding beyond the planet Earth. 
certainly sir because the the subject has evolved in, in the historical perspective not only the looking for the earth surface feature but also to add the uh, sky and different kind of uh, constellation planets so certainly now one, one thing with very interesting that uh, the planetary geography geomorphology is emerging like anything based upon the data that we received yes. from the remote sensing we are going to analyze by the help of your knowledge of the chemistry to so see the interdisciplinary nature so if you have the chemical understanding you know the what kind of metal configuration it is then you are going to deduce the origin of the that planet so here you, i again repeat that we not only have to be interdisciplinary approach but the contradisciplinary approach is very much essential otherwise it, it, it is not going to solve your problem what happened in mid 13 there is a, everything has been modeled and quantified quantitative revolution bring out but the problem is got they are very much specialized a town planner is only specialized for the town planner so whatever model he or she suggested is never work in the 21st century so as long as you are going to merge out your dilute your the disciplinary boundary solution is there because the problem is not domain specific problem is contra disciplinary problem is multidisciplinary problem is interdisciplinary so with all uh, if anybody is there for their comment so otherwise um, this is time to say goodbye anybody else uh, uh, i would like to invite the uh, islam for the uh, final say if anything you would like to say hi it's me anything you would like to uh, uh, conclude or you like to say something uh it's fine uh so i think uh, this is a wonderful uh, discussion and uh, i would like to actually add one thing so uh, uh, i know that is uh, now the globalization is there so the people are actually collaborating with the uh, abroad uh with the good universities and institute so that i think uh, especially from the uh institute from the west bengal or india if they actually try to collaborate now 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 the, in the in this situation uh, we know that is we are in the digital india digital platform so it is not always that you have to go visit the uh, 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 university or like that so that will be uh, added advantage according to me so thank you so much once again okay uh thank you uh i just uh, updated that medical geography is a very established uh, domain so okay. sorry for my my uh, uh, less understanding of that area of the geography okay okay so i mentioned that whether it is geography medical geography is there but it is very much there it is very well established subject and in the same line the, there is a medical geology is there so so this is all for today um, uh, on the feedback from the organizer I, I, I this is time to conclude the session so i would like to thank extend my very hearty thankful to uh, organizer college administration and all the participant including the keynote speakers and all the dignitaries uh, student and everyone so i i personally thankful to uh, uh, organizer for giving this platform to conduct uh, this session earlier i thought how are going to con- uh, manage the 9 or 10 speaker in a very tight pack session but uh, due to some technical uh, issue many of our speaker unable to turn up so it will give opportunity to give opportunity for us to have the very uh, cond- conducive discussion in very packed manner i mean the only four five discussions discussant were there so this is really wonderful experience thank you very much thank you all So it is time to say goodbye. I am signing off now. Thank you. Hello, sir. I am the technician. So may I end yeah. the meeting? Yeah. Yes. 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 You can. Thank you, sir. Thank you goodbye. very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh-huh.